who are you? Episode 1. No. No interviews, especially about my patients. Yes. Have a nice day. Goodbye. A beautiful psychiatrist that drove three patients to suicide. A psychotherapist, smartasses. Hello? Yes, I'll be there in in 15 minutes. Who's the first one? Good morning, Inga. It's good I've reached you. I wanted to tell you there is no need to hurry. What do you mean? Overchenko cancelled. He has an emergency at work. Fine. So, who's next? Erwin and his wife were the next ones. Were? They're not coming either? Great. Do we have anybody left for today? Nobody. Inga, looks like we have a day off today. May I go home? Yes, of course. You may. Thank you, Inga. I guess you need to look for a new job, girl. Yup. Inga, aren't you going to work today? Morning, Auntie Clava. Morning? Oh, excuse me, yes, hello, Victor. Inga, did you recognize me? It's Samashko speaking. Yes, of course I did. If you want to cancel the appointment, then I... We need to meet. It's urgent. Do you know my restaurant? Of course I do. Everybody knows it. See you soon then. On my way. Thanks. Have a nice day. Psychiatrist. I'm a psychotherapist. And as a psychotherapist, I suggest you speak more with your son. It will do you good. Hello? Are you Inga? Yes. Victor is waiting for you. Thanks. Victor? No way. Hello, Captain Misjinko. Morning, sir. Directorate General of the Police. What do we have here? Well, a guy fell down. The guards say it's their boss. From the sky? From the balcony. Inga. It's fine, princess. 
I'm here for you. Did you study at Princeton and got your degree in the US to pick the local psycho's brains? Uncle Andre. Don't you, uncle, me. One year later, it was stupid of me to think that a year stateside would help you. Uncle Andre, but. Tell me, why did you come back? You could easily get a job at the FBI with your degree in. What is it? Profiling. What are your prospects with the local police? You're silent. That's right, because you know there's nothing for you here. I want to be useful here and now. I'm asking you to hire me as a consultant for two months. If it won't work, I'll quit. You know me. I know you well, my dear. You're stubborn as an ox. I wonder who you got it from. No, I'm totally against it. Get some rest in the meantime. I'll come when I am free. Okay, bye. Good afternoon, sir. And a good one to you, Oleg. There was a decision to reinforce your unit, Major. Your detectives are good, but a professional psychologist can come in handy. Meet your new colleague. This is Inga Stephen, a criminal profiler straight from the FBI Academy. Really? You're freelance consultant for three months. And this is Major Olbysenko, head of the Homicide Desk, well, the Grave Crimes Unit. I hope you'll get along. Nice to meet you. We've met. Really? Yes, Captain Me. No, Major. Major, right. He investigated the death of my last patient, Victor Samashko. He had problems with business, right? Yes. Well, it's good that you know each other. Morning. Morning. Morning, Major General, sir. I can see you're working hard. Head of the unit, introduce your new employee to our colleagues. Then, come to my office. Yes, sir. I need to see your boss. Get it. Miss, Major General doesn't receive visitors. What do you want from him? I'm not a visitor. I'm Mara Dest. Got it. I need to see your general at once. Stop. Let me in. Are you really from the FBI? Wow, that's some luck. Why did they do this to you? Did you get in a serious mess to deserve such an exile? It's much simpler. I graduated and came back home. Tell me, a profiler, is it something like a fortune teller? Well, you look at a person and can tell their past, present, and future. Something like that, yeah. For example, you often got detentions at school for the lack of discipline. You were a mediocre student. Recently, you had psychological trauma connected with a serious risk, and you haven't recovered from it yet. There are still aftershocks. Inga. Yeah? Can I have a minute with you? Sure. Where can I get coffee here? What did you want? I'm begging you. Hello. Hello. The head of the directorate is at the ministry. I'm Major Miskenko, a head of the desk. Let's go to my office. Please come in. Make yourself comfortable. Have a seat. Thanks. So, what can our venerable police do for our star? By the way, since your cover is blown, you can take the sunglasses off. Thanks. But I feel better this way. I require protection. Is somebody threatening you? Yes, I mean, no, but I am being stopped. A car has been following me for the last four days. Are you sure it's the same car? Of course I'm sure. I'm not an idiot. It's a blue Chevrolet, and it follows me everywhere, to the restaurant, 
It comes even to the set. It was there today, too. Well, you're a famous actress who's got a lot of fans. Maybe it's one of them. No, no, my fans don't behave like this. They either want a selfie or simply come up to me. But this one never gets out of the car. And I'm scared. You probably can't describe the driver or tell me the plate number. Of course not. I have better things to do. I came to the police for you to provide me security. You see, we need more serious reasons for that. There are hundreds of cars like this in the city, and you might see 20 of them in a week. Do you think I'm making this up? I wonder. What do I have to do for you to believe me? Do I need to get attacked? Or killed? What kind of people are you bastards? Are you even human? Don't you see how scared I am? Mara. Yes? Please take the sunglasses off. I think our unit needs a specialist like her. If we take the global forensic science... Lieutenant, don't tell us about global forensic science. Better admit that you like her. She's pretty, I totally agree with you on that. Legs for days. Captain, our new employee's appearance won't influence my attitude towards her. Yeah, right. Stepanik, what do you think? What can you say about this gift out of the blue? I think this is bullshit. All these psychological profiles and behavior patterns. Why did the general bring this chick here himself? Miss Dest, calm down. We'll check it out. Did you tell anyone about it? Guards at the set, your friends. Hi. Hello. Excuse me, what's going on? Did you forget you're needed on set? I'm Igor Kovetsky, Mara Dest's agent. Good. Miss Dest was just telling us about a stalker. I see. Let's go to the set. Just a second, Mr. Kavesky. Wait in the car. Did she really tell you that someone was following her? Mara has been going through a rough time lately. Problems at the set. That's why she is so wound up. Do you think she made all of this up? Definitely. I'm with her nearly all the time. Do you think I wouldn't notice? Why would she make all this up? I don't know. Maybe she wants attention. Okay. Thanks. Goodbye. Have a nice day. Goodbye. What was that about? I mean her sunglasses. Did you hypnotize her? No, I just chose the right moment. Why? It's nothing. You know what I mean. Major. Let's skip the foreplay, okay? Sure, sure. What are you going to do? About what? Mara Dest. Oh, Mara Dest. Nothing. What do you mean nothing? What if she's really being followed, not by a fan but by a dangerous stalker? Her agent would have raised how long before. She's a drama queen, don't you see? But she really is scared. Did you notice the way she talks? Her hands, her eyes. She takes both sedatives and adds. That's what I'm talking about. She needs treatment, not bodyguards. That's it. You know, a year ago I formed a correct opinion about you. You don't care about people, about the victims. You choose the easy way out. Oh yeah. And you don't have good cop instincts. What do you mean? You know what I mean. You wouldn't listen to me then and wrote it off as a suicide. Because it was easier, simpler. A woman is in danger, and you tell her off. But this time I'll interfere. I won't just let it slide. Is that clear? Huh. Do whatever you want. You won't be here for long anyway. Have fun while you can. We'll see. No. He couldn't have killed himself. Why did he ask me to meet him then? For me to find his body. Maybe he was courting you and felt rejected. He decided to be a little dramatic. Invited you and overdid it a bit.
He was not a depressed teenager. He was a grown, mature man without any suicidal dispositions. I'm saying this as his doctor. Inga. This is your fourth dead patient without any dispositions. Do you suspect me? No. Why would I? You have no motive. Let's stop here. Do you still think it was a suicide? Yes. I see. Please. You know, I... I always thought that good cops had intuition. But not you. It happens. It sure does. Major, I was looking for you. I have some news about our miss at BI. She turned out to be Strizik's wife's niece. You're kidding. Looks like we've got a warden, not a consultant. So be careful what you say around her. Got it. Thanks for the warning. Hi. You should be careful, too. And get this mess sorted out. I will tell you dick ever again. Hi. Hi. Corvallo. Did you tell her everything? Don't you know your aunt? She'd make a great interrogator. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Let's skip the drama part and get down to the facts. Yes, I finished my profiling course. Yes, at the FBI. And yes, I'm back to work as a profiler. So please, let's not waste our time fighting. I won't change my mind. Fine. Have a seat, daughter. We can talk over dinner. Of course. I understand everything. Girl has an American education, American job. Who cares if she hasn't seen her parents for years? And oh, why don't overreact? Okay. I'm back. Everything's fine. It's okay. What's fine? Huh? Lena, she didn't come here because she missed us. She came here to risk her life catching the maniacs. What would your Jerry say? He'd say... Jerry died two years ago. But if you want to talk about it, fine. Jerry was a smart man, and he'd understand me. Too bad you can't. Okay, it was nice to see you guys. I'll call you, okay. Inga, wait, eat something at least. Oh, by the way, using Jerry's name to manipulate me was low. Hello, family. And there's the surprise. Yeah, I guess she brought this surprise from the States when she flew in yesterday. Meet my Jerry. Hi. This is my dad. Hello. Yevgen. Nice to meet you. I'm Jerry. This is my uncle, Andrei. Hi. Hello. This is my mom, Elena. And this is my Aunt Alia. Jerry. Nice to meet you. Well, hello? Jerry and me are getting married. Why so suddenly? Let me explain. Well, Inga and I have been together for a long time. We just kept it a secret. Why so? Are you a deadbeat dad? Or maybe an ex-con? I told you about Aunt Alia. Let's skip the interrogations and scandals. Let's just have a good family time. Dad, is the kebab done? Five minutes. I'll go help them. Okay. How are you? Set the timer. Do you have kebabs in the States, huh? You are an American, right? That's right, General, sir. 
We don't have actual kebabs. We have barbecue. I guess it's pretty much the same. You could have told us. Mom, you'd start worrying, preparing and stuff. We decided to make it a surprise, and it turned out great. Oh, yeah. You've became a shrink to our misfortune. Okay, let's go, or the ladies will eat your bride alive. As you can see, General Strizik isn't the scariest member of our family. Come on. Well, spread the love, as they say. So, when are you planning to get married? Sometime in October, when I am done with my business here. Jerry, what kind of business do you have here? I hope you're a diplomat. No, I am a historian. A historian? Yes. I am writing a book about the Second World War, and I really to visit the catacombs, yeah? It really was an important part of the war. The resistance movement. Jerry's grandpa was a resistance fighter. Jerry teaches history in Princeton. We met there, actually. Jerry also writes great history books, right? I will definitely give you my book. With an autograph. With an autograph. Inga, wait. Inga. Don't be mad at us, okay? We're just very worried about you, after Jerry's death and those suicides. Mom, I understand. And Alia didn't lose her grip. She's like a pit bull. What's this? Oh, this is a present, I guess. It was delivered a week ago, on your birthday. Who is it from? I thought you knew. The courier said it didn't have a return address. Weird. Only you folks knew I'd be home for my birthday. Okay, I'll deal with it. Thanks, mommy. I really have to go. I'm starting tomorrow, and I haven't unpacked yet. Mara Dest, Fate and Destiny. A candid interview with a new star. Rocket Science. Another scandal with Mara Dest. Star fever or alcohol abuse. Mara Dest sabotages the shoot again. The director is furious. No wonder. That was quick. That was quick. Or how would our miss at B.I. put it? No, she was really scared. Good morning. Good morning. You don't need to, Inga. Go ahead. Major General isn't here yet. You can wait for him at the reception. I am a consultant for the Grave Crimes Unit. Is Mischenko in? Mischenko and his guys went to a murder scene an hour ago. A murder, huh? Give me the address. Hi, any comments on Mara Des's death? Is it a murder or a suicide? Well, you make a statement. Premiere, Mara Des's new comedy, Inga. Inga Stefan.
Please tell us what happened. And what is this display? It doesn't work. Burned out, I guess. Morning, senior lieutenant. Morning. Can you bring me up to speed? You know, the major's upstairs. Better ask him. Thanks. Take the elevator. Also, a courier came to the Seminovs. But that was in the afternoon. Yeah, then two came in the evening. One was her agent, Igor. I never saw the other one before. A weird guy. Pretty squirmy. Like that, huh? Hello there? She needs treatment, not bodyguards, right, Major? However, none of the this will help here, right, doggy? Come on, doggy, let's think what we should do with you. Hello everyone, I'm Inga Stefan, the new Homicide Desk Consultant. Okay, I'm Darina, I mean Darina Berzana, Forensic Expert. And you are that FBI psychologist, right? Yes, the psychologist. And the general's niece. I guess you already know that by now. For sure. Spock has told everybody, but don't mind him. He's nosy like that. Oh. Hello, Inga. Hello. How did you find us? Likely through profiling. Your look today reminds me of The Lady with the Dog by Turgenev. Okay, Stephanie, bye. Thanks. Thanks for the speed. Over and out. Okay, Captain Spock, please go downstairs and find out what Terran got from the cameras. And take this with you. Let it stay at the guard's room. Yeah, but it was Chekhov, Captain Spock. Read the classics. And the dog needs water. Some genius left it in the dark without a drop of water. Would you like to be treated like that? I don't think so. Did you hear me, Captain Spock? Inga. Yes. I know what you want to tell me. But it's not the right time to sort things out. Let's do it like that. I've decided not to disturb you so early. And now we're just working. Deal. Thanks. So? Estimated time of death from 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. Looks like the cause of death is a blow to the back of her head. I'll tell you more after the autopsy. And there's blood under her nails on the right hand. And yet, was she hit on the back of her head or her face? The back of her head. Probably with a golf club. This one, I suppose? I see. It's a driver. What's up? Not much. We're trying to watch a movie, but the projectionist can't find the button. Why did you bring the dog here? Well, the Major wanted you to have it. Me? You. He wanted you to take it from under our feet. It's already a mess as is. Is that what he said? More or less. Take the dog, Smartess. Don't forget to make a copy of the video. Listen, why don't you play the KK9 cop? Here you go, and I'll deal with this. Did you calm down? Can you answer my questions? Yesterday I came to pick Mara up early at 7 a.m. Mara was needed on set. 
I came in and she. Did you have the keys? Is the apartment yours? It just doesn't look like a woman's place. It's Mara's apartment, but I do have the keys. There's a lot of work, and Mara needs constant control. Needed. Because of her problems with alcohol? Yes. She hadn't been drinking lately, but I often spend nights here just in case. That's why my things are here. Is the alleged murder weapon one of them? Oh, yes, the driver is from my set. A driver is. I know what a driver is. Well, tell us about yesterday. You picked Mara at the directorate, and? And I drove her back to the set. I spent a lot of time getting her to go on with the filming. Finally, I succeeded. After the shoot, she went home. She called me later. I came over and she told me about that Alexei. Who's Alexei? Alexei Talko, her friend from the past life, they were at the boarding school together. Who would have thought? A mysterious woman. Don't worry. We won't tell anyone that. Alani Kaneva. Born in 94, also known as Mara Dest. Mara Dest. Studied at the boarding school. Here, look, right at 9 p.m. That's when she got home. Last night, this Alexei was waiting for her at the door. Mara was taken aback. We never thought someone would recognize her after all these years in surgeries. This guy used to be madly in love with her. Then she left him. We started working together. And she forgot all about him. And now he popped up. I didn't believe her. Such a fool. I thought she was just stressed out. Who knew it would end up like this? Do you believe it now? Then I left. I had a date in the restaurant at 11. Did your date come? Yes, I was late, but not by much. Great. It means you have an alibi. You're free to go now. Don't leave town. If you suddenly remember something important, please give me a call. Thank you. I'd like to have a look at the apartment. Of course you can. Just don't touch anything. It's a crime scene, after all. May I? We were taught criminalistics as a part of the profiling course, Major. Really? Can you believe it? Excuse me. Were you Mara's lover? No. You asked whether we were lovers. We were at the beginning. Then we decided we'd rather be just friends and colleagues. It'd be better for her public image. I see. You weren't too tidy, Mara.
Here you are. Alanae Kaneva. Born in 94, I'm having a look. What are you doing? Fine, Major, sir. She's having a look. I told you not to touch anything. Let's get back to base. We have a suspect. Whatever you say, Major. The Butterfly Net. Audition Scenes. I'll read this. Care to explain, Major? Explain what? You didn't call me to the crime scene either because you didn't know how to work with the profilers or because of some personal reasons. Fine, but do you realize that this woman's death is your fault? My fault? If you listen to her, or me at least, she'd be alive now. Listen, Inga. If you want to work in my unit, you must know that I decide what to do, how and why. Is that clear? I can't read lips. Inga, what do you say? What did he say to her? And this note, what's in it? I think that's a phone number and a name, so that Mara could contact him. Makes sense. As for what he said, he probably called her by her name. I mean her real name. She turned back. Judging from her reaction, she recognized him too. Why did she run away? Then, she got scared. Of course she got scared. Who knows what he had on her. Besides, she needed some advice. That's why she called Kavetsky. Kavetsky came soon after. Then he left. Taco came back, and this time Mara let him in. Stepanik, listen, find out the details about this date. Who, when, and why? Major, sir. Are you sending Michaela to the restaurant? Maybe I should go. Why? Do you think he'll get drunk? He hasn't been drinking at work for a long time. Don't worry about it. That's it. The end of the movie, Kovetsky called the ambulance and the local police, and they called us. Well, bring this Mr. Taco to the interrogation room, and you go to my office. We need to talk. I mean, our office. I got it. Hello, Major General, sir. Good day to you, too, Sergeant. At ease. You question the major suspect right at the crime scene. The witness. The witness. The driver. The murder weapon. Allegedly. Alleged murder weapon belongs to Kovetsky. And Kovetsky was a major figure in the victim's life. Besides, he's lying. What is he lying about? Well, he said that he often spent nights at Mara's. It's a lie. It's obvious he used to spend most of his time there. Besides, the apartment doesn't look like it belonged to a girl. It's a home of a successful businessman with fine taste. And the bar. Did you see the bar in the living room? I didn't think the crime scene examination was your personal. Why keep all this booze at the alcoholic's home? She quit. And she was treated with antabuse, as far as I know. There are no ex-alcoholics. Really? Yes. And he kept provoking her. A candy with cognac could kill her. Even if it's so, it's not a crime. It just shows that he's a selfish bastard. That's it. No, he's not just selfish. He's a classic example of a narcissistic dominant. He had been destroying this woman's personality for years, oppressed her, molded her to his liking. Kovetsky can feel people like her at an instinctive level. People like her? Malleable ones. Remember, I asked her to take off her sunglasses. So? All it took was to use the right tone. These are the basics of verbal domination. What domination? Verbal. 
She obviously was subjected to it for years. That's an interesting psychological insight, Inga. But, how do I put it? It doesn't bring us any closer to catching the killer. Kavetsky gains nothing from Mara's death. She was his main source of income. That's the first. Uh -huh. And second. Yeah. Oleg, I checked the love nest out. Our smartest definitely was here yesterday. I checked the reservations. There was a table for two booked for 11p. M. Anna Nina. Okay. We need to know everything about this Nina. I've already talked to her, sir. She confirmed that he was here, but he was late though. They stayed there long past midnight. Later, they called a cab. How long exactly past midnight? Exactly at 054 a.m. A white cab came to get them. Plate number 4308 KNU. Great job, Stephanie. Thanks. Bye. See you. You can't drink at work, can you? Mind your own business. Kavetsky has an ironclad alibi. Checkmate. Yes. Oleg, I've got the autopsy results. Great, Dasha. Thanks. The first on my way. I'll go with you. Where? To the morgue? Yes. As you wish. Thanks. Thank you. It's his car. And there he is. Poor guy is hungry. Listen here, Lieutenant. We'll come up to him and talk politely. I'll do the talking. You watch and learn. As you say, Captain, sir, I'll cover you from behind anyway. Fine. Hello there. Lyosha. Got him knit. Episode 2. As I thought, the cause of death is a blow with a golf club on the back of her head. Between 11 p.m. and midnight. Guys, I must say that this is the first time I see sports equipment used in this unusual way. Thank God we have an unusual weapons expert now, right, Inga? Why it's unusual all of a sudden? It's quite typical. Third place after a chainsaw and an ice epic. Really? Let's get on with it. A chainsaw. Back to business. The wounds on her face are posthumous, inflicted in anger, with a great force, probably by a male. Traces of Haide's Pam in her blood. The blood under her nails belongs to a male, but his DNA isn't in the database. Did she have sex before she died? Yes, thank God. I mean, yes, but there's no DNA since they used a condom. Looks like it wasn't. A rape. Definitely not. I say it wasn't something passionate either. As they say, just for health's sake. I see. Somehow I thought so too. You're done. Yes. Only if Inga doesn't have something else to tell us. Do you have something to tell us? I'm good, thank you. Well, Alexei, will you tell everything yourself or will you keep wasting my time? I didn't kill her. I loved her. Sure you did. And then you killed her. 
I've seen so many cases like this. What's that on Captain's chest? Blood? No, ma'am. Ketchup. The suspect was shooting with a hot dog during arrest. So, you started stalking Mara Dest. Why? Did you hope to catch her alone? I, I wasn't stalking her. I was trying to understand. Aha. Uh -huh. You see. I was on a call at this property last Tuesday. I'm a technician at a net. A technician at a net. Where? It's an internet provider. I drove into the yard. I got it. And they were shooting a movie there. I saw Mara there. She was talking to someone during a break. She reminded me of my Lena. Not out of the blue. So, the whole country saw her in the movies and on TV, right? Do you live in a cave? A night of pliers and cables, yeah? And then out of the blue. It's my Lena, my girlfriend from the boarding school. I, I saw her in the movies. She was different on the screen. She was Mara Dest on screen. And there I saw the real her. He should be an actor himself. He's not acting. We'll see about that soon. Shpak knows what he's doing. He's the head of our drama club. Listen, go get the report on fingerprints from the lab. And grab Darina's report on your way back. First she was talking, then she laughed, then threw her head back and started playing with her hair. Only Lena does this. And the laugh. It was her laugh. Also, I thought I saw a silver ring on her thumb. Lena told me once she had got it from her mom. She never listened. She never gave it to anyone and never took it off. I wanted to come closer to make sure, but the guards wouldn't let me. Of course, if they let all stalkers approach stars, they would be extinct. Go on. You started following her. Yes, I started following her. Not all the time, of course, but wherever, wherever I could. When I didn't have work. Listen, I really wanted to know whether it was her or not. It was important to me. I, I couldn't make myself approach her. Look at me and at her. I see. Yesterday, I made up my mind. Lena, wait. Lena, it's me, Lasha Talco. Lena. What's wrong? I just want to talk. Go on. You realized your sweetheart was golden. What then? Did you leave her a note or a phone number? What? I left her a note with my number. What for? As I said, I wanted to talk. About your humble beginnings, fine. Go on. How did you get into Mara Dest's apartment? She called me and said I could come if I swore nobody would ever find out about our conversation. I suppose it was an interesting conversation. Do you think we can't prove the blood under her nails is yours? You won't need to. It's mine. And the Oscar for the best male lead goes to... Well, Mr. Taco. Are you ready to confess to the murder of Alana Kanova, also known as Mara Dest? Listen, I... I didn't kill her, I swear. I loved her a lot. I insulted her that night. Badly. She said that, that everything that happened between us six years ago, she put it into a chest and threw the key out. It hurt me so much. It was the purest and happiest thing we ever had. And she threw it away. She threw me away. I said horrible things. So she slept me in and kicked me out. Is that all? Yes. Looks like you forgot the most important part. Your conversation. Which conversation? Which one? When she said, get out.
and you hit her with a club at the back of her head. What club? A golf club. You see, looks like your Lena was a nice person. She trusted people. She wasn't afraid to turn her back to you. Where were you between the time she kicked you out and midnight? I was driving around in my car. I needed to think. You should have thought earlier. Who can confirm your alibi? Did you give someone a ride? Did you have a drink with someone? No, nobody. I went home to sleep and came back in the morning to apologize. But she was dead. What could I do? I just found her, and she died. He didn't kill her. Is it a hunch? He doesn't fit the type. He's an obvious melancholic that's prone to depression. People like him don't kill. Only if they are cornered, or by accident. But in that case, he would have confessed already. Don't say that. Taco was really mad at Mara. His most cherished feelings were hurt. It's a weak motive. But it's a motive. Man up. Tell me one thing. Did you break her nose before or after you killed her? Was she hit in the face? I promise you. I'll find whoever did it and kill him. And I'll come to you voluntarily, got it? And then you can put me away. We've already found him, and we'll put him away, got it. I gather there is no need to talk about a confession. You understand it yourself. It would commute your sentence a bit. Well, your Lena was a bitch, love hurts. Heat of passion, right? We don't need your confession. We have evidence through the roof. A motive, the video. Well, as a man, I can understand you. Some women can drive anyone crazy. Right? You can think it over, but not for too long. I offer the best option to you, man to man. I'll go get some coffee. Can you gather everybody in the office? I want to share some of my insights. L.Y., I don't recognize you. You're usually so nosy. I'm nosy? Fine. You're actively participating in everything, and you can't influence your own husband. What do you mean? Literally, he should fire Inga from the directorate. Do you know why she got a job there? Of course I do. To mess with us and prove that she is a big girl. To catch her maniac. What maniac? The one that killed her patients? We only managed to send her to the USA because she got an opportunity to become a criminal profiler. Do you remember how badly she didn't want to go after Jerry's death? Well, what did they say? They said that the chances are minimal. That they don't know who he was there with, alone or not. Maybe he died, they won't search the catacombs because it's physically impossible. Besides, the bastard also joked that maybe he didn't want to marry and escaped. A bastard indeed. What are you going to do, honey? I'll wait. What about your job in the States? I'll find a job here, mom. Honey, they will find Cherry. He's alive. Everything will be fine. Do you hear me? I got really scared then. Then this opportunity to study appeared. Thank God, she left. I didn't know she would come back and get into it all over again. I talked to Andre. I beg you. You know, it yourself. He hired her on probation. Even if I shout and stomp my feet, he won't change his decision. I'm sorry, sister. Looks like we don't have a confession. I get it. His fingerprints aren't on the club. He wiped them off. There are a lot of prints. But all of them belong to one person. The owner of the club, probably. That makes sense. Kavetsky, right? It doesn't fit. Maybe he had gloves on. That's why it doesn't fit.
Darina said that she had sex. Who Darina? Mara. Oh. Did you find the condom? No. That's right. You won't. You won't find the gloves either. Inga, I know that. You've decided from the beginning that Mr. Kavetsky is the murderer. And you're trying to persuade all of us. But let me remind you, colleagues, Kavetsky has an alibi. Maybe he doesn't. Well, I checked it out. It takes 15 to 20 minutes to get from that restaurant to Mara's place. I can't say precisely. Besides, when I was checking Kavetsky's alibi, the night guard had already gone home. Why are y'all so mean to him? He didn't have the motive to kill Mara. He did not. Still, Stepanik, go back to the restaurant and find that guard. Maybe he'll remember something. Yes, sir. Can I have another look at the report? Sure. I thought you already knew all of it. I'm not a know-it-all. Darina, I'm sorry. It says here that Mara had a child. Yes. I know it's not connected to the case, but... No, it is. Mara has a child that nobody knows about. Mara Dest doesn't have kids, and everybody knows it. She did give birth, but it doesn't mean that she has a child. Besides, it doesn't even mean she ever had one. It could have been a stillbirth, for example. That's exactly what we need. Thank you. What's going on in your head? They were inside all the time. He was very late, as far as I understand. Big time. Because she went out for a smoke twice. Then he came and gave her a bunch of flowers. They went in after. After that, she went out for a cigarette at least three times. He didn't go with her, did he? He did. He just didn't smoke. Did he go outside without her? Not for his smoke. But he went to talk on his phone. Did you hear what they were talking about? No, he left right after that. Where did he go? That way. But then he came back. How long was he absent? Well, around 20 minutes. He was panting when he came back. Yeah. Got it. I'll call you back later. I said I'd call you back later. Okay, bye. Bye. Sir, CCTV cameras, they don't care about psychological profiling. An alibi and no motive, that's it. Oh, hey. Hello. Hello? Oh, I'm sorry, but is Oleg... He's not here. He's not in, yes. Yes. Fine. I'll call him now. Oh, sure. Fine. Yes. Um, yeah. Major, I was thinking about the surveillance cameras. I was trying to figure out what's wrong. I think there's a blind spot. Well, I'd like to go there and check it out. Inga would like to come along. Inga. With you? Fine. Just stick together. Bye. That was daring. Oh, here they come.
It's been a while. Miss Das. Be careful. Aha. Uh -huh. We need to talk. We have an intercom. A stranger can't come in. I can see everybody who's at the door. You saw it this morning. Is that your guy? Yes. Stepanate. 721. Kovetsky left the restaurant for 20 minutes. 15 minutes for the trip. 5 minutes to do it. So in theory, he had an opportunity. Let's see if he did on practice. Could you watch it through the monitor? Yeah, sure. Paul, lying is bad, Lena. You haven't thrown away the key to your past. You couldn't? Of course, definitely, she did have a baby. Oh, and here's the daddy. Why were you hiding your daughter? So, Kovetsky has no alibi. I figured it out. Get him here, quick. I thought this Kovetsky was fishy from the beginning. Yeah, our Miss FBI also thought he was a suspect. Listen, I completely forgot about her. I'll call her. Go to the office. Mr. Kovetsky. Where have you been? Who said you could enter a sealed off apartment on your own? Yes, Major, sir. Major, sir, wait, you said I could go with Senior Lieutenant. Senior Lieutenant is already here. He and Stepanik completely blew up Kavitsky's alibi. They're already bringing him in for interrogation. Oh, they're bringing him in. Wonderful. Don't forget to ask him a personal question from the profiler, who allegedly doesn't do anything. Let Kavetsky tell you about the daughter he had with Mara. Check. And mate. So, Mr. Kavetsky, you were absent from the restaurant for 20 minutes. That was enough for you to commit a premeditated murder. I got a call. Aha. Uh -huh. There was a problem I needed to solve quick. And the problem was that the goose laying golden eggs had gone out of control. Hi, everyone. Don't stand up. Listen, you don't understand the nature of my relationship with Mara. Of course. How would we? If you didn't tell us about your daughter. Nastia, if I'm not mistaken, don't stand up too. How did you? How did we? How did we? Let's get to the point, Mr. Kavesky. You have no alibi. But you have a motive. A motive? I'm sorry, I should say a big S motive. Look what we have here. After Mara's death all her, well, considerable savings plus her royalties go to you. Igor. What do you need to do to get it all? Prove your paternity, which won't be hard to do for you. What else did you lie to us about? Round and round we go. I didn't kill her. I see this is going to be a blockbuster in our interrogation room. Listen. Yes, Mara and I were very close. I picked her up when she failed to get into the acting school. I have connections. I created her. She is my creation. She's my masterpiece. How would I kill her? With a golf club. From behind. With a hit on the head.
What? Are you hungry? Here you go. Police brutality is a myth. I didn't want that baby. But I let her have it only if she gave it up for adoption. Unofficially. Her career, the rise of the new star was much more important. For the both of us. Both of you are just you. I convinced her. I always was able to do that. Yesterday, it wasn't her first escapade. You didn't mention any escapades. It's nice to deal with a police officer who knows what an escapade is. Yes, I convinced her to talk with Taco. He knew about her past and could spill the beans. She just needed to convince him not to talk. Instead, she started melting down over this Lyosha. You see, she was in love with him then. So what? She loved him then dumped him. With your help. Yes, I was looking for raw material then. An inexperienced girl, talented and beautiful. I have an eye for them. Everybody knows Zana now. You mean Zana Sotnik? I know how to make a star out of a country fool. Even if I have to break them for this. A year later, a new star rose in the cinema sky. A woman with no past, the mysterious Mara Dest. Believe me, it took a lot of work to create her. Then she told me she was pregnant with my baby. Oh, how could you be so careless? You know what? Nobody's perfect. I couldn't believe it at first. I did the test without telling Mara. But it's true, Nasty is my daughter. Even though, it wasn't supposed to happen. I said to Mara she wouldn't see Nasty unless she gets an Oscar first. Or never. I made an arrangement with the nice family. Nasty is happy with them. She doesn't know who her mother is. Was Mara upset? Did she miss her daughter? Mara. Mara dove into the glamorous life head first. Her first triumph happened just then. Remember Polina and the Spectre? Then came her first failure. You mean her problems with alcohol? You can't even imagine what it costs me to get her out of it. I had to promise her she could have her daughter back if she quit. It didn't work though. So you chose the Antabuse, yes? Yes, big time. 20 grams of any alcohol meant death for her. A heart failure. Keep looking. Keep looking. You talk well. You do. Almost. Chekhov. There is one problem, though. It's just your word. You're still without an alibi. I have an alibi? Nestia's foster parents called me that night. She had a strong fever. They had to call an ambulance. In the end, she was going to be fine, but I had to send them money. The closest ADM was in Planeta on Gogol Street. It's easy to check. Igor, you'll have to stay in the cell until we do. Sorry. It's the rule. Nothing personal. Come in. You! Olenay Kaneva, Alexei Talko, Pavlo Volkov. Who is that? Who are you, Pavlo Volkov? Wow. Well, shit.
Yeah. Inga, I hope, I hope you're already at the base. You are so active in the investigation. I'm surprised, how could you miss the interrogation of the prime suspect? His new alibi was confirmed. The bank registered a transaction from an ADM at the Planet Mall at 47 Gogol Street. Hello, Pasha. Inga, get the hell out of there. Do you hear me? Follow me. Move it, you two. How you know my name? I figured it out. I'm smart. We need an ambulance and a patrol car at the 12 Spetlov Street. Hallie, follow me. I see you've installed a hidden camera, yes. Yes, during the remodeling. Well, great. So you're the one I was looking for. Because you know everything about Mara. About Lena. I don't care about Mara. Do you want me to tell you a story? A very interesting story. About Lena Kaniva that became Mara Dest. Now she is in our morgue and nobody can claim her body because everybody who knew her in any way is detained at the directorate do you like watching pavlo no of course not you did it so that you could always come to her rescue you prepared for any idiot she's provoking him can we talk won't they hear us? You've noticed the club in the closet a while ago. Come on, Stephanie. I pressed the button. We can hear them, but not vice versa. And it came in handy. It only takes one second, and that's it. I thought Kovetsky killed Mara. Fool, you kill her right now. Bite your tongue. You know everything about everyone, lady. Are you some kind of psychic? Sort of. I just read it in your mind that you came here to kill me. But let's play a game. Before you do it. I don't play games. I'm keeping score. Score of what? What do you know? You're not a psychic, just a stupid cop wearing a skirt. Shh, calm down. I want to help you. Can you dissolve this jam, Halleck? No, I can't. Then put up the lights and go on the incoming. There is an accident down the road. Lights, siren. Only flying would be faster, Major. To hell with it. I know this area. It's seven minutes walk from the restaurant. Lead the way, then. Easy, easy. You studied together with Lena at the boarding school number 13. You were a loner, not very talkative, if I may. Not very friendly. Lyosha Talco was different. Strong, manly, determined decisive he wasn't afraid to confess his feelings to lena and she the prettiest girl in your class chose him of course right that's not true she didn't choose anyone she didn't need anyone she wanted to be an actress exactly it was her passion but she didn't dance with you at the prom pasha but with taco is that right? Why did you put up with Kavetsky in her life? Why do you care? I had to put up with him, so I did. As far as I know, Mara wanted a luxurious lifestyle. She sought it in any way possible, and you couldn't give it to her. I understand you. She's not Mara. She's not Mara. Her name was Lena. Lena, do you understand? Lena. Now she's really done. I hope we'll catch him with the body. Save your breath. Her name was Lena. It was Mara. Who slept with Kavetsky. And you made love with Lena. But when you saw her worried after talking to Taco, you understandably got mad. You couldn't bear it anymore. What do we have here? Lena is still in love with Lyosha. You're Lena, not Mara.
Hey, did you call the electrician? By the way, the stairs are full of cops. Freeze! But, are you okay? Yes, I'm fine. Can you walk? Where is he? Who? The electrician. If not for the electrician, I wouldn't be here now. What damn electrician? I asked you, what electrician? Give it to me. Let's go. He was here. Come on, pal, you're done. What is it, buddy? Come on. What was that? Is that what they teach you at the FBI? Going to the scene, collecting evidence without permission. You contaminated the scene. Who do you think I am? I had the gloves on. Oh, the gloves. How nice of you. If we didn't get there on time, you'd be wearing a casket. You know what? After what you've done, we should kick your butt straight to America. Oleg, I understand. You don't need to explain a hundred times. I'm sorry for the caused inconvenience. It's just, what can I say? You're right. I'll quit myself. Take care. Inga! Wait. Don't mind him. He didn't mean it. He was very scared for you. That's why he was yelling at you. Did you hear it, too? Yeah. The benefit of working in the morgue is that you don't hear what's going on here. Whenever I enter the world of the living, they start telling me about their news. It was your first case, right? Yeah. I guess you don't work like this in America. In America, they'd suspend me for what I've just done, sent me for an evaluation and then rehabilitation. Major fired me anyway, though. I understand that I made a mistake. It's only fair. Major can go ballistic sometimes, but he doesn't hold grudges. He'll change his mind. Do you think so? It would be nice to work with you again. I liked it. We will. You'll see. Thank you. Bye. A double espresso without sugar, please. Coming right up. You forgot this. Thanks. I'm sorry I yelled at you. It's okay, you were absolutely right. You didn't figure out the killer, too. Why? I did. It's just that everything went wrong. Kovetsky did plan to kill Mara Dest. He planted the non-existent script, a suicide note. Thanks. Here's what I don't get. He's such a cunning guy. Why not keep making money on her? He was tired of her. She became a burden for him, and Kovetsky doesn't like complications. Yeah, by the way, I've talked with Nastya's foster parents. They are cool, nice people. They have secretly applied for adoption. It sure is. Wow, this is good news. I just hope Kovetsky won't try to stop them. He won't do it. Mr. Kovetsky will have time only for himself in the nearest future. He'll try to save his reputation, but it won't work. What's wrong with his reputation? On the contrary, it's publicity. The media will start tearing him into pieces. It will be the end of his career and his reputation, as I said before. You're right. The reporters will dig up his story. 
Reporters are really cunning now, right? Sure. That's true. You're a dangerous woman, Inga. Me? Not at all. I just think that freaks should be taught a lesson and punished. I think the same way. Do you think we can find common ground? What do you mean? You're not kicking me out. No, thanks. I don't want to get into trouble again. No, it's just, your firing is indefinitely postponed. Next time you need to pour your feelings out, find a more willing pair of ears. Like mine. I'd prefer to go to a psychologist. By the way, what made you think Sergei had problems at school? Because he shows clear signs of ADHD, attention deficit, hyperactivity disorder. It usually manifests quite early. These kids are often restless, and teachers send them to detention. And the recent psychological trauma. I know that many homicide desk cops have a permission to carry weapons outside work. Sergei was at his workplace with his colleagues, and he was the only one with a holstered gun. Besides, remember how I told him about a dog that was left in the dark without water? His reaction? He probably was held hostage or something. He barely survived. There's my dear. Don't worry about the dog. I left it in the car for five minutes, just to apologize to you. That's it. I didn't get to the shelter yet, so it will stay with me. In your car? Oleg, you don't need to hide your love for the animals. Have a nice day. See you tomorrow. Later. What? What is it? Is your nose cold? Is it? Is it? Taco, get out. Another interrogation? We're getting your stuff. You're being released. They found your actress murder. Go. I'll find you when you come out, Pasha. Just you wait. Understood, Lyosha. See you. Move. Yes. I knew you could do it, princess. You're a smart girl. A few losers deserve to die for the sake of your success. Who are you? Call me Yen. I said I'll always take care of you. Don't worry. I promise we'll get to know each other. Just don't be as reckless as you were today, princess. If not for my intervention, the gallant major could have been too late. I saved you, princess. Episode 3 After Jerry's mysterious disappearance, another four of her patients died under mysterious circumstances over the course of two months. Auntie Clava, Auntie Zena, good morning. Inga, you are doing so well. You have just come back, but you're already a star. So yeah, you didn't see how they were wiping the sidewalk with our Miss FBI. I sent a link to your email. You'll appreciate it. 
I have received it. Thanks. Bye. Angel of Death is back. Now as an FBI agent. Okay. Damn it. I'm so dumb. I forgot that it's 1.30 a.m. Over there. Damn it. Good morning. You're so friendly this morning. Good morning. Hello, Inga. Yes, Dan, hello. Sorry, I completely forgot about the time difference. Stop babbling. Tell me, what do you have? I'll call you back, okay. Pasha, hello. I have something. Yeah. Who are you calling, mister? There is no Pasha here. What's up, spider? Good morning, Herr Major. What is it? Can you check somebody out for me? So, his name is Dan Morgan. He's about 30-35, 100% American. Start from the FBI Academy. When? Yesterday. And you're only calling me now? Fine. Yes, I got it. I'll call you when I have some news. Don't start, okay? That's it. It's time. It's time. Well, my parents received a present for my birthday, a photo portrait. I sent it to your email. Check it out. I see it. Yeah, but I don't know who sent it. There is neither a business card nor a postcard, and the place where it was taken looks familiar. I recognize it as well. It's the terrace of that cafe a block from the academy. Right, right. We had lunch there right before my flight. Looks like it. Come on, Inga, stop playing me. I'm not playing you. My flight is in two weeks. When are you planning to come back? Depends on the circumstances. I'll see how it goes. Inga, what is this childishness? You're a great pro. Do you know that the Central Bureau was asking around about you? What did you forget back home? I just want to be of use to my country. You may consider it childish. And what about us, Inga? What's gonna happen to us? You've set the format of our relationship yourself. Remember what you said, no obligations. Maybe it was like that at the beginning, but not now. I love you, and you know it. And don't lie that you don't feel anything towards me. I'm not lying to you. I don't want to lie to you. I love you too. You're my best friend. 
We were good. Besides, you're my mentor. You'll definitely come back to me. I'll wait for a couple of months. And then, I'll come and take you away. But, I don't remember anybody taking our pictures there. Do you remember this? Oh, wait. Dan, did you arrange it all? Did you make a surprise for me? Right? No, it's not from me. My surprise is on the way. But that's not the case. I also don't remember any photographer working by the cafe either. But don't worry, I'll find out who it could have been. It's not that important, though. No, it's important. And weird. Oh, are you jealous? You want to be the first to know whether I have a secret admirer here. Yeah. No, I'm worried. I want to be sure that it's not a stalker. And you're worried as well. I can hear that, Steppy. Don't call me that. It's such a childish nickname, like in a kindergarten. Don't try to change the topic, okay? This is not all. What happened? Quantico, state of Virginia. So, what about that Morgan? Eh, nothing special. He surfaced under unexpected circumstances. It happens. Something happens here all the time. I'm a new girl, so everybody tries to prank me. What do you mean? Well, some joker called yesterday and said that my car was stolen. All right, Dan, I have to go. I'll call you later, okay? Yes. I miss you. I love you. I miss you too. Bye. Bye. Kisses. Good night. Major Miss Jinko. Thanks, I'll tell her. Inga. Major General summons you. Right now. All right. Many remember the famous Inga Stefan, or the Angel of Death, as she is widely called. Written by Arthur Radishny. Isn't that the guy who was on your tail last year? The one writing articles every other day. Major General, Sir Uncle Andre. Why did you call me here? To show me this filth. I think we should review the issue of your work here. What do you mean, review it? Cancel it. Unacceptable. Yeah. Hello again, Herr Major. Are you ready to listen? Yeah. I'm ready. Okay. His name is Dan Morgan, citizen of the United States, 34. Has been at the FBI since 06. He became a special agent in 2010. And in 2016 he became martial arts instructor at the FBI Academy. He met our miss there. He wasn't her teacher but... Damn. Come on, speak already. But he was her boyfriend. For the last six months for sure. I got it, thanks. Wait, Herr Major. Shall I dig some more or not? No need to. Okay, later. Don't be stubborn, understand it. The journalists won't stop slandering you until you leave the police. It's the first time they got so excited. Of course, it's big news for now. A subject of an old scandal came back. They'll find a new victim to dissect by tomorrow. By the way, 
I did help in the Mara death case. That's why you could have been killed yesterday. Well, I'm sorry. I promise that it won't happen again. Do I look suicidal? I think that your appearance at the directorate attracts excessive attention of the press to us. My boys are already working under constant attention from them. That's it. Are you scared of the journalists? Uncle Andre? are you serious? Family legends say that once you were not scared of arguing with the city's party committee, and now you've seen some yellow press and you're done. Okay, this is it. You may be free, Inga. Go back to work. Fine. <laughs> ah, well done, she knew how to get me. A brilliant scientist, world-renowned writer Jerry Ashward came to our country with his bride Inga Stefan. The beauty convinced her beloved. Oh, Inga. That in her homeland, you'll be able to collect unique materials for his new book about the Second World War. That was how Jerry ended up in our famous catacombs. However, this young and undoubtedly talented man didn't return from there. The search was in vain. Meanwhile, his inconsolable bride became a star of the capital's socialite parties. She even started to see patients as a psychotherapist. Inga's main clientele are successful and rich males who fly to the beauty's healing couch like moths to a fire. Inga is not in a hurry to go back to the States. What is she waiting for? Is she hoping that Jerry will come back? Or is she waiting for his death to be officially confirmed? Because the groom insured his life in her favor. However, Inga will get the money only if the groom's body is found. Major, sir? Yes. Somebody of your subordinates is feeding the press. I trust my people. Do you trust your American friends, Inga? I mean the inner circle. Maybe it's not somebody from the unit, but it's somebody from the directorate. It all happens so fast. That's not what you should be thinking about. What are you going to do? What am I going to do? Yes. I'm going to work. You should leave. It will be better for everyone, both for you and for us, and for Andre too. Don't try to insult me because of my familial ties with General Strizik. Fine. You want to continue your PR at our expense, don't you? Great. Brilliant. Let's see how long this circus will go on. Change your tone. I'll leave you for some time. You definitely need to cool down. I didn't even warm up. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Just call me Inga. I fell out of habit of using formalities in the States. Whatever you say, Ma, Inga. Yes. I'm going to get some coffee, too. Great. Tell me, can a person hear by a device that recognizes a distorted voice from the recording? You can get anything here if you have the money. Yeah. I thought so. Can you imagine? Somebody pranked me yesterday. I was called and told me in a weird voice that my car was stolen. Yeah. Of course, I have a guess who it might have been so witty. But still, I want to check it. I'm sorry. Inga, what about coffee? Let's do it tomorrow. Or some other time.
Yeah, I'm listening. I have information about Jerry Ashward. Are you interested? Who are you? If you're interested, get out right now. I won't go to the police. Just go to the crossing and wait for me near the curb. I'll come from the right side and switch the hazard lights on. Where are you? I can't see you. You'll see me now. Are you mad? Usually not. Damn it. I'm just interested. What's going on with you? What's going on with me? What is going on with you? I wanted to ask you the same thing. What is going on with you? Somebody has just tried to kill you. Kill me? Yes. I was just standing too close to the curb, and a car was speeding. That was it. Do you think that will all idiots here? First, you urgently needed to talk with your FBI friend. Then, you were asking weird questions to senior lieutenant. Then, a car sped up at you trying to run you over. Maybe it was one of your ex-patients. The dead ones. I have nothing to tell you, besides that you have a lush imagination. And one more thing, thanks for dragging me through the mud and ruining my suit, Oleg. Inga, if not for me, they'll be scraping you off the road. That's it. That's it. No, it's not. Damn protector. Do you have something? Not so fast, Major. I'm indeed a wizard. But give me a few minutes, okay? Okay. It's a dark green Mini Cooper. Last numbers are 455. Five. Five. five matches in the city. Okay, prepare a full dossier for each of them. I'll call you back when I check those five. Aha, listen, where's the fire? You're not worried for nothing. Pasha, if I knew where the fire was, I'd put it out long ago. Scout's honor. A socialite. A beautiful psychologist is accused of her fiance's death. I'm a psychotherapist, damn it. Widow of businessman Samashko, my husband died because of his psychotherapist. Study well. Good luck. Thanks. Yes, I am already in the airport. Yes, Slava. I am going to the Maldives. I want to change the surroundings. I'll cry for my video while nobody sees me. I'll call you back. What a meeting, where you off to? Richmond, USA. You've made a mess and decided to scram. People, do you know who that is? A psychotherapist. She killed my husband. Security to the cafe. And a couple of other men. Two. And now, she is going to the States. You're not going there. You need to be in jail, and you'll get there. I'll make sure that you do. 
Lady, calm down. Why are you grabbing me? Calm down. You need to arrest her. Will you calm down? Don't get happy too early. You'll pay for everything that you've done. Herr Major, here are the files. I decided to give you the printout myself. Can you introduce us? Inga Stefan. Our profiling consultant. Nice too. Pavlik Yaramenko, our freelance consultant. IT consultant. Inga. That's a beautiful name. Nice to meet you. Call me Spider. If you ever need to find something out, check out the data or hack something. Let me know. Thanks. I'll keep that in mind, Spider. Yes. No. Have you gotten acquainted? Let's get down to business. Oh, sure. This is everything you asked for, Herr Major. The info on all five cars. Good job. Don't let me keep you. I'm not in a hurry. You know how to spoil the fun, Herr Major. Yup. Well, I hope to see you soon. You have a nice night, Inga. You too. Goodbye. Inga. Pavlik brought me data about the Cooper owners. The car that nearly ran you over. Major, sir, this is enough. Nobody was going to kill me. That's it. Five people. Five. I'd start from this one. Have you heard of a Yablonski? Yablonski. Yablonski. Like the artist. Like the pole. A fashionable gallery owner from the capital. Do you know him? Well, his face seems familiar. I think I visited some exhibition at his gallery. Did you talk? No. I was just told that he owns the gallery, and that was it. What? Nothing. We'll have to meet him. Hello, Valentin Yablonsky. I'm Major Miskanko, Grave Crimes Unit. Mr. Major, what is the problem? Do you own an old Mini Cooper? Dark green license plate of 4455AA. Hey, yes, but I don't drive it. Can we meet? We believe that a crime was committed with your car. Of course. Yeah, mister. Major, but I can't leave right now. Can you come to the gallery? It's at... I know where it is. I'll be there in 40 minutes. Major, sir. Stepanik, not now. Major, sir. Later. Oleg, just a minute. Stepanik, later. Stepanik doesn't usually drink at work. He didn't drink before. Who got killed? The firefighters found a body after putting the fire out. It's somebody important. They are calling us. Call the unit. I'm out now.
<laughs> I'm listening. The address. Okay. Captain, sir, it's an urgent call. Good evening. Or did you lose the boss? I think that you lost him. He has gone to a meeting. It's just the two of us then. The three of us will go. I don't drive the Mini. I bought it. I bought it just for my collection. It's cool. Me and Mini. I drive a Ferrari. Oh. A couple of days ago, I lent it to Galia Yakovleva. Is Galia Yakovleva your... My friend. Your friend? Yeah, well... We were lovers. Once. Now we're just good mates. What happened to her old car? <laughs> she told me that she needed the car to hide from the paparazzi. But I think that her car is broken, and she doesn't have the dope for the new one. She wasted all her money on the surgeries. You mentioned paparazzi. Is this Yakovlova? Somebody famous. Are you living in a dugout? You can say so. I'm sorry. Somebody famous. Galia Yakovlova was on the TV. A beauty, a socialite. However, it's all in the past now. You're harsh on your ex-girlfriend. No, I felt sorry for her. A psycho who destroyed her face last spring. That is who was harsh on her. That was when she went a bit crazy. Hello? Hi. Where is everybody? Where's Mishchenko? Well, what do we have here? I'd like you to be more polite. Captain, this, what, was a living person just a couple of hours ago. Andrei Zakhark, 29, the head of a charity fund that's helping children with cancer. From the heart, a doctor. He knew people from the local precinct. He was identified by the hospice workers, the one in the next building. And what do you have to say? He must have died from a blow to his temple during the fall. There are traces of blood here. Besides, there is a trace of a blow to the face there. That must be the reason why he fell. I'll tell you the rest after the autopsy. So, we can assume that the murder arranged an arson to hide the evidence. Who called the firefighters? Do you know? I do. A nurse on duty, Nalia Sherbakova. Taryn is talking to her right now. I found it out from the guys from the local precinct. Galia is my good friend indeed. I understand that you're working with Inga Stefan now. Well, yeah, there was a huge scandal a year ago. Galia's fiancé was a racing driver. Okay. Igor Maltsev. He was Inga's patient. And he left Galia for Inga. Naturally, Galia was furious. Aha. Uh -huh. And then Igor died in a car crash. Police said it was an accident. But Galia went crazy. She was screaming everywhere that it was Inga's fault and promised to push her mug in. However, somebody got into Galia's face first. She was going home in the evening, a bit drunk, after some party. Some bastard splashed acid into her face. Sulfuric acid. Was the attacker found? Of course he wasn't. Galia didn't have time to see him. And while she was staying at the hospital drowning her sorrows in whiskey, Stefan left for the States. Yakovlova was doing plastic surgeries all year and wasted all the money she had inherited from her three husbands. Did plastic surgeries help? It's an interesting question. She was repaired well. Well, indeed, but she lost the spice. She used to live by her face, always relied on her appearance. 
And now the fairy tale is over. And that's why she went completely off the rails. And she's still drinking too. Of course. Can't live without it. Stop. You can't go there. Who's the boss here? Let me through. I work here. Let her in. Sasha. Hello? Hi, Elena. Do you know her? Of course. She is our lawyer. I mean, our fund's lawyer, Aliona Chelsenko. Save my number. I called you. Please call me back as soon as Yakovlova contacts you. Of course. Of course. I understand. We're talking about an attempt on police officer's life. I understand. I got into trouble without looking for it. Took pity on someone. Such an idiot. You're not in trouble yet. Yes. I was talking with my friend on the phone. I went outside and saw smoke coming out of the warehouse. I called the firefighters and waited on the street. I didn't know that Andre was inside. Okay. And who else was here at the time? The patients were. And Surya Shmato, our nurse? His younger sister got sick, and they don't have parents. Today, he brought her to us for palliative care. So, he sat in her ward. Did he send his sister to a hospice? Is it that bad? Yes. It is really bad. Shmato and Andri and Sakhar were arguing about that all day. Why were they arguing? Sakhar. He refused to give Shmedov the money for his sister's treatment, I mean. The money from the fund. They were quarreling so much today. Did they have a fight? No, they didn't get into it. When exactly did their argument happen? It was after 2 p.m. They gave Andre a bad time today. They? Who are? They? Shmadov and Shelzenko, our fund's lawyer, you saw her in the yard. They were getting under Andre's skin all day. As far as I understand, Shmadov and Shelzenko tried getting up on Zakharkik to pay for Shmadov's sister's treatment. But he changed his mind. No, he didn't change his mind. Is Serios's sister the only one in need of a treatment? Just because they are friends with Shelzenko. They are not just friends, are they? Yes. Elena has the hots for Seriza. Today, she shouted at Andri right in the hallway and ran away. Is it normal? Shouting at your boyfriend because of a stranger. She's nuts. It's a nightmare. But he was putting up with her? Well, Nelia, you can go. For now, we'll talk to you later. Thanks. Nelia. Did Shells and Co. know that you had an affair with Sokhark? Or did she figure it out? Well, she knew. So what? They had their hands full without me? They were arguing all the time. And how did she react to seeing you with her boyfriend? It was bad. She tried attacking me. She is into karate, so she can beat you up like that. I see. Thank you. You should have thought about your daughter earlier. And now, don't get in my way, honey. Will we be there on time, Chief? As soon as we will. It's better we get there fast. Or better yet, yesterday. I didn't kill Andre. 
though I wanted to do that sometimes. Is it because of his cheating? Do you mean Shkurbakova? She wasn't the first and wouldn't be the last. So, you weren't jealous, were you? Shkurbakova says that you almost beaten them when you caught them. It's just her imagination is too rich. No, I wasn't jealous of Andrei anymore. It was just repulsive. We'd break up with him anyway. But you still wanted to kill him. Why? Because of his attitude towards people. He was too principled. The fun could make an exception for Sergei's sister. But Andrei wouldn't bulge. Fine. Where have you been around half past four? I went home to pick up some documents. So, you were at home at the time of murder? No. I was in a bus in a traffic jam. As soon as I found out about the murder, I stopped a car and came here. How did you find out about the murder? Sergi called. Around six. He said that there was a fire at the warehouse and Andrei was found there, murdered. No, he didn't say that. He said Andrei was found dead after the fire. I found out that he had been murdered here. I see, well, Alyona, you can go, for now. Captain Spock, did you notice that she was the first to mention the murder? Yeah, the girl's tongue slipped. Yep. Well, it's time to listen to Shmedov. I have nothing to tell you. I didn't kill him. Though I wish I did. So you confess that you wanted to kill him? I do, but I was too weak for that. And somebody wasn't. You made a mistake, Mr. Shmedov. You mentioned the murder when calling Shelsenko with good news. I only told her that the warehouse burnt down and that Zach Harkak was found dead there. That was it. When was he killed? Around five. Do you want to tell us something, miss? Then Suryaza couldn't have killed him. He gives me drugs on a schedule. I took them at 1650. He was here with me in the ward until the commotion began in the yard. I beg you, let's not do it here. Captain Spock. Alyona, have you been in the capital for long? For three years now. When did you move here? A couple of months ago. You know you. You've changed a lot. I am ten years older. I don't mean that. You see, you'd never tell anybody that he's too principled back then, and you wouldn't tolerate cheating. I grew up, Sasha. What about you? Me? <laughs> if you mean principles, then according to your, your adult scale, I'm still a man of principles. Are you a police officer too? No, I consult police on some issues. You're a profiler. Yep. Cool. I like movies about them, about you so much. What do you think about my brother? Do you consider him a murderer too? I think that your brother is hyper-responsible towards you. Did you lose your parents early? Yes. 
Five years ago, I was 10, and Suryaza was 19. He studied in the medical institute. It was an accident. Yes, gas exploded in the neighbor's apartment. We lived in an old building. Mom and dad died instantly. Suryaza had serious burns on his back. He stayed in the burn center for long. And a year later, doctors diagnosed me with a strocytoma, a brain tumor. Did you have surgery here? Yes. For four years, everything was fine. And a month ago, I felt bad again. Suryaza is trying to protect me. He thinks that I know and understand nothing. You understand everything, don't you, Senya? Yes. Inoperable brain tumor. Glioblastoma. A stage of rapid growth. I'm dying. Suryaza doesn't want to accept it. I'm worried about him. So please tell me. You think he's the killer, right? I think that your brother values your life over anybody else's. Hey, hey! What are you doing? Calm down, men, calm down, calm down, friendlies. Major Mischenko, Directorate General, Homicide Desk, who lives in this house. Some ex actress. Or a singer. So, here's the thing. Episode 4. Hi. Warning, Major. We have a new case. Did you hear about it? I did, I did. There is one more thing. Stepanik won't come in today. He wanted to talk to you yesterday, but you were busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did something happen? He has problems. At home. He promised to sort them out as fast as possible. But if something goes wrong, he'll take two days off. Is his ex-wife acting up? Something like that. Listen, Oleg, he really has an emergency. Serioga, let's talk later. Yeah. When you will be able to. I'll pick you up, sure. You're a smart girl, just be patient for now. Fine, I'll call you when I'll leave. No, it's too late for me. I'd like to speed it up. Fine. Coffee on me then, spider. Okay. Pavlik. He's very clever. I called my mom. Modia is tiring her out. She turned out to be a hyperactive beast. I have to take her back home. Motia, Matilda, a Yorkshire Terrier, remember? I gave her to my mom for a few days. So, what did you call Pavlik for? I asked him to find some info on one of the people involved in our case. You told me yourself that he was our IT consultant, freelance. Great. Get me up to speed, preferably with details. Yes. Zakharchik's autopsy report is ready. Hello, Dasha. How is our present doing? What kind of manners are those? Dasha, don't sulk. Do you have aspirin? I have a terrible headache. I don't. Hi, Desha. What do we have here? Well, traumas of the face and temple are in travital, inflicted not long before death. However, the cause of death is suffocation. What do you mean suffocation? What about the hit to the temple on the desk corner? The wound to the temple is serious. It could cause death. 
However, we found smoke in Sakharkuk's lungs. It means... It means that Sakharkuk was still alive when the fire started. I'm sorry. Go on. A blow to the face. Judging from the force, it was inflicted either by an average male or a sporty female? Not very tall, though. Well, this is it. His chemistry's clean. Neither alcohol nor drugs. No stranger DNA was found. What else? He didn't give birth. The report is ready. Here you go. You found everything out so fast, Spider. Amazing. Well, I worked extra hard for you, Inga. I already chose a coffee shop where we'll get coffee. I'm sure that coffee shop is great. So, you were telling me that. Yes, the explosion. It all came together. The gas in 92. The parents at the spot, and the daughter got lucky she was at school. The son was seriously hurt, though. He spent a month in the burn center. I got it. You helped me a lot. Thank you. You're welcome. When shall we meet by the entrance? I don't know when I am free yet. Let's talk at six on the phone and decide, okay? Yes, great. See you then. Thanks. Goodbye. Bye. Sasho, what kind of sport are you into? Martial arts, taekwondo, aikido. Close. Karate. Karate? Since I was a kid. How did you know? At the academy, we had a martial art instructor who taught us to identify professional fighters. You have nuances, reactions, flexibility. You know it yourself, right? It's none of my business. But if I were you, I tell the higher UPS that you know Shells and Co. as soon as possible. How did you find out? Fine. Major was out yesterday. I plan to tell him today. I just don't know how. Let me tell him. Deal. And yet, how did you find out? I'm a shrink after all. Although, your colleague Captain Spock believes that these are nothing more than Broad's fantasies. Have a nice day. Likewise. And the circle of suspects is very small. I'm telling you. So, I am saying that Shmadov certainly has an alibi. His sister said that at 1650, he gave her a pill on schedule. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? What's interesting? That the girl remembered the exact time. Usually, patients like her take strong drugs that affect their consciousness. Their heads are a mess, roughly speaking. Still, Shmadov has an alibi, even if it's flimsy. And Shells and Co. has nothing. Therefore, I think that we should press on Shells and Co. Because, it's purely a broad thing. A boyfriend freshly caught cheating. She could get into Zach Harkic's face and get him good and private. She does karate. It's easy to check. Why waste time, then? Ask Senior Lieutenant Taran. Why should we ask Senior Lieutenant about Shells and Co? Because Senior Lieutenant has known Shells and Co for a long time. It's obvious. Doesn't Taran's personal file show that he did karate? It does. But it doesn't mention that he knows Shells and Co well. Let it be my. Rod's thing, therefore, I wouldn't recommend sending Taryn to interrogate Shells and Co. I think that Captain Shpak will be more objective with her, and Taryn can interrogate Shmadov. Any more instructions, ma'am? Excuse me, Major, sir, but I insist that Taryn should interrogate Shmadov. I want to check a theory. I'll explain. So the traffic jam had dissolved by four, right? It wasn't too bad. It means there was a chance to get there in half an hour. Yeah, that's it. Thanks. Were you talking with the traffic police? Yup. And what do they say about Shelsenko's alibi? 
They say there was a traffic jam, but only until 4. So miss, Chelsea Co. doesn't have an alibi anymore? It means that she could be at the warehouse by 1630, with all the following consequences. Yes, Captain, sir. Listen, Lieutenant, you're a karate black belt, isn't it? Can you tell me whether a small woman, but a good karate fighter, can knock out a big guy? Are you talking about Chills and Co? Does she do karate? Is she any good? Aliona has been into karate since five. We went to same martial arts school. Yeah, and she can, as you said, knock out a big guy. We were taught to control and calculate the force of the punch. Any more questions, sir? Lieutenant, it's not your first case. Why didn't you tell us right away? You knew that it will come out. Major was out yesterday, and I didn't have time to do it today. Did you see the coroner's report? I did. An average male or a sporty female? Captain, sir, I assure you that my acquaintance with Aliona won't stop me from working the case. Come in, please. Thank you. Hi, Senya. How are you feeling? Fine. For me? Did you come here regarding Suryaza? Did something happen? Nothing happened. I just want to talk. Does it hurt a lot? Quite. Senya, I checked when you were admitted here. You were prescribed morphine in quite large doses. Doesn't it help? The nurses say that patients usually fall asleep right away on such doses. I fall asleep too, sometimes, but I wake up easily. Were you sleeping sleep yesterday too? This is why you came. You want to know if I could sleep through the time when Suryaza was killing Andri. No, I wasn't sleeping. I looked at the clock. It was 16.50. It meant that I was five minutes late for taking the medicine. Well, your alibi hasn't been confirmed. Therefore, I advise you not to exacerbate your situation. Well, so where were you yesterday from half past four to five? I went home to pick up the documents. I just didn't come back right away. I had to. I was on my way when Shmadov called me. I got out of the bus and got in a cab. And you were at home alone, weren't you? Is everything all right? Yup. What address did you call the taxi to? What taxi service was it? It wasn't a taxi. I stopped a car to get there faster. What car brand was it? I have no idea. I have never owned a car myself. It was an old car, gray or off-white. Could it have been beige or off-blue? Are you mocking me? No. But you seem to be mocking us. I don't know. I don't remember. I have no idea. Let's make a deal. You don't need to waste either ours or your time. We will check the road cameras and see when you got into the car. And now you will tell me how it was. Okay. Captain's right. That girl has a short temper. She is capable of a spontaneous murder. Is that it? No. She got angry and hit him hard. Zakharkik fell. He lost conscience. She saw blood, thought that he died and got scared. The arson was an impromptu attempt to destroy the evidence. She could get mad and hit him. I can agree with that. Her temper enables that. But the rest doesn't fit. What doesn't fit? She could kill in a state of affection. Or carelessly, yeah. But she's not cold-blooded enough to set a warm body of a close person on fire. No, Shells and Co. absolutely doesn't fit the role. Here's the forensic report. Oh, thank you. Was there anything interesting? Did you check it? I did. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Captain needs to take a break, get acquainted, and then we'll continue.
Good afternoon, Lieutenant. I thought you completely forgot about me. Do you have something interesting? Good afternoon, Major, sir. No, we didn't. So far there was nothing to report on. I'm calling to get you up to speed. There has been nothing going on there since yesterday's night, right? Yes, sir. We have been driving around here for an hour. We've seen nobody and nothing. Thanks. I owe you one. No problem. We'll keep an eye on it. Thanks. I'll be waiting for the news. Where the hell are you, Madame Yakovlova? I'm even somewhat worried for you. Inga, just a minute. So, what's your opinion? You saw the suspects right after the murder, then after a day, what do you think? I think that Shmedov and Shulzenko are either hiding something or protecting somebody. In any case, I'm sure that one of those two is a murderer. Is it your intuition again? Yes. Well, one of them is definitely a murderer. I won't do that. It's unethical, from the point of, from any point of view. I know how it looks, Sasha. But we need to figure it out. Think of it as an investigative experiment. I can say it once more. I won't cry for Zakhar. He was an asshole. But I didn't kill him. Why are you calling him an asshole? As far as I know, he was acting according to the fund statute. Nothing personal. This is exactly what he said. Nothing personal. I can see that your principal too, right? I don't consider it a flaw, go on. When Zenya got sick for the first time, the fund paid both for her therapy and her surgery. For four years, everything was fine. I even began to calm down, and then bang. An inoperable tumor. Do you understand what that means? If the treatment isn't started immediately, she will live six months at the most. Six months, and she's only 15. But Zakharkh... Senya is just one year older than the children that the fund helps, right? Zakharka could make an exception for her. Besides, you're their volunteer. That's right. This is exactly what we told him. You were friends. Did you listen to Shkurbakova? Alyona is a great person, and Zakhar couldn't shine her shoes. She should have left him long ago. Shmato! I can see that you fell for Shulz and Co. Big time. It's none of your business. But why? Look how everything fell into place. She doesn't have to leave anybody. And you got a jackpot. What do you mean? I mean that. Your rival, who was an asshole, is toast. Literally. You can ask Shilzen Co out tonight. With all the perks. Or did you already take her? <laughs> Are you happy? We'll continue, right? Yep, thanks. What was that? An investigative experiment. Oh, yeah. Well, I listened to you and sent the lieutenant to Shmedov. You promised to explain everything to me. You have a minute. If you can't explain it, then you won't work in my department anymore. Shmedov's sister told us that Sergi was seriously hurt in the explosion that killed their parents. I checked it out. Shmedov was discharged from the burn center with the diagnosis of incomplete fibrous ankylosis of the shoulder joint. In other words, the tissues got scarred so bad that the mobility of his shoulder is limited. It means he couldn't deliver the blow needed. He didn't have the strength. In any case, whoever hit Zakhark couldn't have a problem with the swing. Yes. Hello, Oleg? Just a minute. I know that you're very busy, but I have a problem with your dog. No, it's okay. But you know that it can't be left alone. It gets nervous. Lieutenant Taran is almost the same height as Zakhark, so I asked him to provoke Shmedov to evaluate whether he could have been our culprit. As you saw, he couldn't. Yeah, I need to go out tonight. Can you pick it up? Somewhere around 7. 
Will you come? Yeah, great. That's it, son. I won't bother you anymore. Okay, bye. Thanks for the speed. I'm on my way. I have an urgent case. Go on without me. You will have to repeat that to me later. I got distracted. Is this a tactic? Make witnesses wait for hours. Not the witnesses, but it does happen with suspects. Alyona, can you please show me your warehouse key? I don't know where it is. I haven't been able to find it for a couple of days. Weird. Your volunteer colleagues say that it was it was with you when you went to the warehouse. Yesterday? Yesterday, I took Andri's key. Well, everything was resolved, Sergi. Thanks a lot. You can go. What do you mean? Resolved? Did you find the murder? Exactly. Right now, my colleague is filing the charges against Alyona Shulzenko. Why against Alyona? Because all the evidence is against her. First, the motive. Second, the opportunity. Third, the lack of alibi. She even managed to leave the warehouse keys in the lock. Can you imagine? The most amazing thing is that there are only your fingerprints on it. Miss Shelzenko, do you realize that I can charge you of murder? How can a girl be so cruel? Lock up a living person and leave him there to burn alive. The horror. Was he alive? Yes, the expertise determined that he was alive. When the fire started, he must been unconscious. He suffocated. Alyona, you're a lawyer. You must understand that there is a motive. A heap of evidence and no alibi. There are only your fingerprints on the key that was used to lock up Sakhark in the storehouse. As a lawyer, I know that you have nothing to incriminate me. The key is circumstantial evidence. Anybody could have stolen it and place it while wearing gloves. How long did it take him to die? Approximately half an hour. A terrible death. A terrible girl. A terrible situation. Stop it. Stop your manipulations. Alyon is not guilty. I did it all. What? I set the warehouse on fire. I came to Zania. She was asleep. I sat there and looked out the window. I saw Zakarkik entering the warehouse. A couple of minutes later, Alyona followed. Then she ran out like a scalded cat. I thought that they had a fight, as usual. But Zakarkik wasn't coming out for a long time. I went to check on him. I came in, and he was lying on the floor there. In a puddle of blood. I checked the pulse. Then I thought that. You, you thought that Alyona hid him hard, too strong. She often said that she wanted to punch him, right? I thought that it would be unfair for Alyona to go to jail because of that pig. So I set some bail on fire. It went up right away and... I got it. Then you came back to Zinya, moved the clock 10 minutes forward and woke her up saying that it was time to take her pills, right? Quite cold, Sergi. What else could I do? I would go to prison instead of Alyona if not for Zinia. I really didn't know that he was alive. Allow me to see my sister, and then I'll write an admission of guilt. Let me see my sister. She only has a couple of months left. Hello, this is Senior Lieutenant Taran. Shmedov and I went to the hospice. We'll come back in an hour. If somebody asks for me, say that I went crazy. Copy. However, even in this case, I may charge you of murder.
Alyona, there is no reason for you to protect Shmadov. He confessed to everything himself. Shmadov saw that you followed Zakhark into the warehouse, and then got out of there instantly. Then he came in, saw Zakharkak in a pool of blood and supposed that you had a fight again, but you finally hid him this time, well, hit him too hard. Shmadov couldn't feel Andrei's pulse. Therefore, he drew a logical conclusion that you killed him, not intentionally, of course. Then he realized that he had to protect you somehow. Sergi decided to protect. Me? Yes. First thing he decided to do was to set the warehouse on fire, just in case, to hide the evidence that you surely left there, then, set one of the bales on fire and locked up the door to be sure, with the key that you left in the lock, by the way. However, Shmedov was sure that the key belonged to Zakarchek. So, Sergi killed Endry. Killed him because he thought that I already killed him. Yes. Sergi was sure that he's setting a corpse on fire. When I came home, I realized I didn't have the full set of documents. I realized that I left it at the warehouse. What did you come back for? Some documents. You wouldn't scatter them around if you thought about the work more. By the way, you weren't like that before. You weren't like this before too. Don't start it, okay? You don't care where I am and who I am with. Recently, Shmedov was the only one you cared about. What are you talking about? Don't play innocent. I figured everything out long ago. I'm not a fool. What did you figure out? Why do you care for Shmedov's sister so much? You show care and warmth. Are you earning points with your new boyfriend? Don't try too much. Shmedov is such a fool. Just snap your fingers and he'll never leave you. Are you an idiot? That girl is 15. Don't try that on me, okay? Train on Sergi so that you could console him in a moment of need. What are you doing? You could have killed me. You deserve it. So, did he didn't his temple against the table while you were there? No. Well, I got angry and hit him, but it was a reaction. That's weird. Shmedov told us that he found him unconscious with a split head. I didn't do that. I left him conscious and with his head intact. He was a bit shocked, of course. Like after a knockdown. Looks like he tried to stand up on his own, grabbed the table, fell, hit his temple and fainted. Right? Miss Shelzenko, couldn't you tell us that right from the start? Why waste both yours and our time? We could have saved the effort. Captain Spock, are you in a hurry? Sorry. You were afraid to say too much to keep him out of trouble, did you? Why were you so sure that he was the murderer? You must have thought that he got desperate and solved the problem dramatically. Where is he now? He's in the hospice, bidding farewell to his sister. So, how are you? Fine. I'm sitting here and waiting. Don't worry, Sasha. Everything will be fine. You've made a right decision. I hope so. We'll find out soon whether it was right one or not. Kid, wake up!
Hi. Suryaza, you came back. It means everything's all right. Because I got so scared when that lady from the police came. I thought that she wanted to say something bad, but she changed her mind. Suryaza. Suryaza. Look at me. It means that everything's wrong. If you tell me that you killed him, I won't believe you anyway. It was an accident. She's good, that profiler. She realized that I was lying right away. I sleep badly under morphine. I heard you going out and coming back yesterday. I even saw you changing the time. I just didn't understand why then. And you didn't tell anything. You didn't tell anything even to me. Why? I don't have anybody except you. You're not the only that needs to care about me. Fine. Don't worry, okay? It will be easier for me. Yes. Don't worry yourself. Aliona will look after me, Aliona. Is she okay? Yes, she's okay. Do you love her? Yeah? You do. I do. But you see how it turned out. Quit whining. You have good chances. I'm serious. I read a book about female types. Aliona is a type that needs to care for somebody or to protect someone. So you're in, bro. Is it time? They only gave me time to bid you farewell. Yeah, okay, okay. Bye. You'll be fine. Got it? You're the best brother in the world. I'm sorry for what had happened. For leaving you alone. Farewell. Suryaza. Yes. I love you very much. I love you too, kid. Suryaza, you're such a bastard. You promised to never leave me alone. You promised. Let's go, Lieutenant.
Thank you, Lieutenant. Aliona won't leave her. I know. Suriza, hi. Hello. You shouldn't have done it. For me? Well, it's done. Senya will be included in the HELP program. She's gonna get treatment. Do you hear me? Thank you. Well, today is an amazing day, Sasha. Will you file a report? Regarding what? You worked the suspect. He came to trust you and gave a full confession. The only thing you have to do is to file the admission of guilt. <coughs> well, are you ready, Mr. Shmadov? I am. See you later, Suryaza. I'll definitely come by when they let me. With good news. Can we talk? Thanks a lot, Sasha. It's nothing. You were right. It's time to grow up. Listen, I'm sorry for the past. I didn't even give you a chance to explain yourself then. Yes, you didn't leave me a single chance. Well, Aliona, good luck with your work. And with Shmato. Good luck to you too. With work and everything. You're a good man. Bye. Good evening, Inga. So, is our deal still in effect? Yes, of course. A deal is a deal. Let's meet by the entrance then. When can I expect you? Give me 10 minutes. Amazing. Okay, see you then. Date. No. Just coffee with a friend. Inga. Do you remember Galina Yakovleva? I do. I remember the death of her fiancé that was my patient, and I remember the attack on Golia. Apparently she has been dreaming to get back at you for a year, and yesterday she almost succeeded. Do you really think that Galia tried to kill me? Isn't it funny for you too? No. Who are you kidding? I'm not kidding. I beg your pardon, Oleg, but I need to go, I don't want to be late. Thanks for caring and have a good evening. Matilda? Hello? <laughs> this is Matilda. I didn't confuse anything, did I? No, miss, you did not. My son stubbornly calls her Modia though. I believe it lowers the social status of a purebred animal. What do you think? I totally agree with you, Matilda. You're so nice. Mom. Oh, hi. Hi. What are you doing here? 
I told you I'd come by. You did, but I risked coming here and making an ambush. Oleg, where are your manners? Will you introduce us? Inga Stefan, our criminal psychologist and consultant. Lyudmila, my mom. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, criminal psychologist. Profiler, yeah, yes, I watch crime dramas. Have you just started working with Oleg? Yes. What do you think? He has a bad temper, for sure. Mom, stop discussing me. Come on. Fine, fine, I won't. Inga, hello. Hi. Herr Major, Madame. Well, shall we? Yes, but I have a small technical problem, a skirt. No problem, miss. Let's either go on foot or sit like ladies do. Fine, I'll risk it. Hop on. Thank you. Herr Major. What an interesting girl, huh? Yeah, sure. Yes. Yes. Very interesting. Attack on Galani Yakovova. Yes. I'm glad you're all right, princess. This time, our gallant major did everything in time. Who are you? But I did well too. I finished the job. Of course, I could have done it a year ago. But I'll be sincere. I wanted to impress you once more. What did you do? Let's not spoil the surprise. You'll find everything out tomorrow. Good night, princess. Wait, wait. Do you remember saying last time that for me to become famous? I had to drive that bohemian scum away from you. You're a different bird, ain't I? Episode 5 Good morning, Auntie Clava. Is the border secured? You must have been sitting here all night, not letting a single enemy through. You may laugh. Inga, you'll know what insomnia is when you're old. Right? Tell me what's up with me. With you? Yeah. You're always up to date with the latest news. Maybe I missed something, nothing. Nothing for sure then. You'd tell me otherwise, wouldn't you? Have a nice day, Auntie Clava. We'll see how you'll laugh when there will be trouble. Come on, catch it. Okay, look. I'll be, it's a serious dog. Fit for a dude. Will you wear it in a pocket or instead of a collar? Sergi, is it something urgent? We're busy training. I came here regarding Captain Tarantiv. That's the first time I heard. Stepanik's rank and last name from you in two years. What happened? Look, Lieutenant! Captain Tarantive is a brilliant detective and a decent person. Major General, sir.
Department of Internal Investigations. Received a clear signal with clear facts. In this case, it is workplace drinking and absence during working hours. And I'm here to check this information. Okay, Lieutenant. I'll check my kitchen myself. If I'll find the mold, I'll clean it up. Do you remember me telling you that Stepanik will be absent for a couple of days? Yeah, because of family. He has a real problem. His daughter's missing. His ex-wife called him and he got drunk right at his workplace. With vodka? Does he keep it in his drawer? What difference does it make? He did it right in front of astonished audience. Just great. Listen, Sergi, keep calling him and keep me in the loop. Yeah. Right away, Major General, sir. Yes, sir. Strizik is summoning me. It's urgent. What are you looking at? Had enough? Andri. Oleg, do you remember our talk when you became the head of the desk? You got great detectives but difficult people. And your task was to make them a team. I think you've heard me. And what do we have now? One of your employees filed a report against another. Both are being checked by the Department of Internal Investigations. And a shame for the whole city to see. What if all of this is confirmed? Huh? How long until Tarantiv retires? They will throw him out with a bang. He won't find a job even as a guard. Andri. What? I'm listening. Captain Tarantiv's daughter is missing. His ex-wife called him the day before yesterday. His daughter is 15 years old. I see. There is no good news yet. But there is no bad news either. Just don't tell me about a good policeman Tarantiv. I saw him drinking at his workplace with my own eyes. It's not so simple, Lieutenant. He didn't drink at all until last year. And then, his missus threw him out of the house. Can you imagine? The guy comes home from work and his suitcase is by the door. She changed the locks too. Did she throw him out because he was drinking? Not at all. I know his Marina well. She's an ambitious lady. She was scooping out his brains bit by bit, so he started drinking a little bit. What happened next? Next. Stepanik was crashing at his friends for a month, and then he was given a room at the directorate's dormitory. I feel that Stepanik got into serious trouble. Something happened. His daughter is missing. Then the ex-wife ran to Stepanik. She remembered that the girl actually has a father. Fine, that's it. Call Taren Taiv, find out how the things are going and report to me. I'll deal with the spooks on my own. And tell me about your decision on whether the senior lieutenant Taren can continue to work in your department, Major. You can go. Yes, sir.
Dan, hello. Why aren't you sleeping? I want to talk about your secret admirer. Did you find something out? Not really. I found the place where he took the photos. It's a market opposite of our cafe. I may pinpoint the place up to a square meter. And? And that's it. There are no CCTV cameras there. I watched the records from the closest camera. There were a lot of people there at the time, and nobody with a camera. Well, with a visible camera. Sorry that I couldn't be of any help, Shtifi. It's all right, Dan. Both of us understood that chances of finding that photographer were slim. In any case, thanks for your help. Rest up. Something happened. I'm great. And stop calling me Shtifi. Kisses. I love you and I miss you. Come back soon. I'm telling you, Captain Tarantive is not here. If he's not here, then I need to see his boss. Inga, this lady is asking for Captain Tarantive. Good morning. Morning. I'm Inga Stefan, Captain Tarantive's colleague. Did something happen? Yes, it did. Don't worry. Tell me about it. Senior Lieutenant Taran. Good afternoon, Major, sir. Please tell me, is filing reports against your colleagues while bypassing your direct superiors your personal know-how? Did you give up one of your own? I filed a report because this unit is a mess, and you know about that well. I have been here only for two months. I can see who is drinking and who acting a fool. But honestly, if I knew that Tarantiv had an emergency, I would never. You, you snitch. As you were, Captain Spock. Okay. Your next report will be about your transfer. You can start writing it now. Major, sir. As you were. Major, sir, may I? Oh, can it wait? We have an important conversation. Captain Tarantive's wife's here. I think Major, it's urgent. Sir. I told you I'll get it. Thanks, hello. We're here. I'm fed up with looking for it. What kind of firm is that? It's a modeling agency. You're quite a model. We just need to freshen you up a bit. Somebody's mod needs freshening up. Thank you. Lara is very determined. She convinced herself that she'll become a model, and that's it. She has been running around those modeling agencies all year. She even had castings. She showed me pictures. So beautiful. Did she work with some agency on a permanent basis? No. They all promised to contact her but never called back. She was very upset, you know. Marina, we got that. What happened? She went missing. She called me at noon. I was at the dentist's and couldn't answer. She left me a voicemail. Let me listen to it. Mom? Can you imagine? I was invited to a photo shoot. Seriously, a real shoot for an ad. They said that I was an ideal type. Can you imagine? Pick up. Come on. So, the shoot is in the countryside. So don't wait up. Keep your fingers crossed. I told you I can do it. By the way, the modeling agency is very cool. It's called Model U. 
Okay, I have to run. Bye. So, are you ready to make the first step towards fame? Huh? Is that it? What happened next? Next she vanished into thin air. I called her as soon as got out. She didn't answer. I thought that she was going somewhere, or she was at the shoot and didn't hear the phone. Then again, and in the evening, the connection was lost. It was the same in the morning. I called her, best friend, Speeda. She said that Lara didn't call her, and she didn't know anything. I called Misha, and he got mad as always. And later, I couldn't reach him too. For the fourth day in a row. Marina, try to calm down. Captain Tarantive is an experienced detective. He must have dug something up already, Lieutenant. Copy the recording. Marina, tell me, is Lara a sociable girl? Is she easy to get along with new people? Sociable? Not quite. She has only one friend, Speeda. Why are you asking? About men? No, she didn't even have a boyfriend. You know, she used to say that career was more important now. She is so smart. Okay, Marina. Stop winding yourself up. Go home and try to calm down. Inga, see her off, please. Yes, thank you. Let's go. Goodbye. 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 Hi, Herr Major. What's up? Yes, one second. Go on. Okay, model you modeling agency. It means that you're a model. Oh, they are. Okay, continue. What? Especially gifted. They just had to name it like that. Fine, relax. I'll do it. Give me 10 minutes. Oh, and... Say hello to Inga. Tell her I'll call later. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna work now. Okay, bye. So... The Model You Modeling Agency. Major, sir, can I stay in the unit? Oleg. Allow me to stay. Find that agency. Go there, find Captain Tarantive and work with him after that. You can go. Oleg, are you mad? Why the hell do we need this snitch? He's already helped Stepanik enough. Sergi, Sergi. That's it. I'll send you the information on the agency as soon as I get it. But other towns are beyond our jurisdiction. Oh, really? As if we didn't know. So you're going there as a private person to find Tarantive, work together and come back together. And then you'll backdate a vacation. Go. Thank you. Yes. Why us? Fine, give me the address. An unidentified body, not you. An unidentified body was found on the Pashini Island. I don't understand why. The local cops are calling the directorate. Okay, yeah, bye. We'll get there and find out. Никакой рекламы на этой неделе мы не снимали ни в городе, ни в области. И из столицы тем более к нам никто не приезжал. I lock you up for seven years for managing a brothel. Can you hear me? Our conversation is not over.
Hello, Major. Long time no see. Do you need our help? I hope that we don't. We've had an APB for a week in the precinct. About Redchenko's daughter. That Redchenko, the MP. 17 years old. Her mother reported her missing. I'm afraid to say we might have found her. Oh. Oleg, look. She looks so much like Lara. Yes, she does. Let's hope it's not her. Thanks for the picture. I'll return it. She looks like Lara indeed. I got scared at first. Who is she? A daughter of an MP. Katerina Redchenko, 17 years old, went missing six days ago. It will be a lousy case. A lousy case indeed. A girl died, almost a child. Don't teach me how to live. Better help financially. If you don't get what I'm about, better be silent. It's not just a girl. It's a daughter of an MP. It means we'll be under pressure from all sides. Did you have a heart to heart? Dasha, do you have something to say? So far I see signs of dehydration, traces of intravenous injections on the arms. Time of death is about 15 hours ago. Junkie? Maybe. Captain, this is the moment for your lame joke. Autopsy will show. Excuse me. Can you take a couple of pictures that wouldn't show that it's a corpse? Imagine that it's a photo shoot and the model is sleeping, okay? Fine. I'll do it. Thank you. Quiet, 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 time to sleep, beauty. Hello, Darina. Hi, Desha. Hi. Do you have something? I say, are Redchenko's autopsy reports ready? Uh, yes. The victim is really Katerina Redchenko. Her mother identified her. The cause of death is the overdose of morphine. Okay, stop. I'll only say it one time, so listen carefully. This is my dog. It's a Yorkshire Terrier. Her name is Mojia. She responds to Matilda. She can't sit at home. She gets too agitated. The issue is closed. Next. Was the victim a junkie? I say that the drug first got into the body no longer than a week ago. There are no traces of other chemicals in her blood and tissues. She was kidnapped six days ago. The time is suitable. She was injected with morphine during this time. There are also signs of starvation and dehydration. Judging from the state of stomach and skin, I say that she wasn't fed and given almost no water for about a week too. From the day of kidnapping, any signs of violence, bruises, or scratches? Absolutely nothing. There is one mark on the side of the neck. It resembles a trace from an injection, and injection marks on the arms. That's all. Oh, no signs of sexual violence? Fine, an injection to the neck. She was knocked out during the kidnapping. That's why she wasn't tied tightly, because she was drugged. How often she needed to be injected to keep her in that state all the time? Judging from the number of injections, every six to seven hours? Okay, that means he needed to be near her all the time. So she couldn't accidentally come to her senses ahead of time. There was no rape. What about sex? There was no sex. She had never had sex at all. And she never will. Somebody doesn't have to be a doctor to make injections like those. Just someone who had a lot of practice. The main thing is to find the vein, right? Exactly. He never missed the vein. And it's hard to obtain morphine. It means the kidnapper had connection to the medicine, right? I think she was starved to death. If he fed her, at least through the tube, she would hold on for much longer? So, the dose of morphine wasn't deadly. 
Right, it became like that just because the kidnapper didn't take the body weight loss into account when determining the dose, right? So that means he... What if he didn't want to kill her? I understand everything, Deputy Minister, sir. My detectives will do everything possible, have no doubts. I don't doubt your people, Andri. Just explain to them that this case calls for attention and sensitive approach. The girl died of an overdose, didn't she? It shouldn't surface anywhere. It already did. If you're telling me about the girl's overdose in an hour after the autopsy, the interested party has already told you about that. So let them make sure that it doesn't spread further. Andri, I know that you have the best detectives in town, and maybe in the entire country. Let them work. Careful but fast. I got it. Have a nice day. Katya was a dreamer. She decided to become a famous model. I was telling her, why a model? You need a bulldog's grip, fangs. And she was so tender. She didn't know life and people. You're talking as if Katya was a homely girl, is that so? Yes, that's right. She was often sick in childhood, missed school and stayed at home. She didn't even have close girlfriends. When did you last see her? A week ago. And when did you talk last time? Last time we talked. She called me. It was around three. I was at the office. She was going to storm some other agency. Storm, that was, her word. She used to say that she would achieve her goal, take it by force. She was so happy and lively when she called. She said she was chosen for some shoot by some agency. Didn't she tell you where the shooting was going to be, or the name of the agency? No, she didn't tell me the place, but she did tell the name of the agency. It was a weird name. Model Y. Model U. Yes, exactly. Lyudmila, can I see Kadi's room? Of course. Where is the info on the agency? Your 10 minutes passed two hours ago. Check the mail first. And then call. Bye. Mail. Yeah, one girl per week is a coincidence, but two is a series. Serioga, go find Inga. Time to storm that agency. I'll wait for you in the car. I'll send the info to the lieutenant in the meanwhile. Mr. Major, this is Yablonsky. You asked to contact you if Yakovlova surfaces. Did she? I got a call an hour ago. And, my car was found. It was pulled out of the sign lake today. The copper. Was the car empty? No. With Galia, I think. Listen, there's a desecrated woman's corpse here. But I think, it's her. Wait for me, I'm on my way. What the? Hello, Major, what are you? Listen, I have urgent business. I'll send you the address now. I sent everything to the lieutenant, he needs to check the mail, and to work both Redchenko and Tarantayeva. Tell him that. Aha. Besides, there's an office of this company in his hometown. A branch, to be more precise. He can visit his relatives too. We have the main office in the capital, that is for you. Call you later. Why, why did your boss leave? Shouldn't he work our case personally? Fine, now I'll call Alexei, I'll now call Alexei and my ex-husband. Katya's father, Lyudmila, please. We'll do everything we can to find the murderer as soon as possible, I promise. 
What do you know? Have you ever lost a close person? Have you been sitting at night with the phone having no idea where he is and what is going on with him, just hoping that he would call? I understand you. I lost a close person two years ago. I still don't know what had happened to him. Yes. Weirder and weirder. I like, freakier and freakier. More, by the way, I had no idea you read Alice in Wonderland. What Alice? Oh, I just remembered somebody's Facebook status. Yeah, right. Our major is quite the joker. How will we get to that model agency from a suburb? On oh, dear, it will take an hour to get a taxi. Captain Spock, did you forget? I drove here on mine. Let's go. Good afternoon. Yes. What date? Come again. Yes. Surname. Yes. The booking is valid. Yes? See you. Goodbye. Hello. I need a room for one person, standard, for two days, with a possibility to prolong the stay. There are no free rooms. Even suites are sold out. The national team is playing tomorrow. There are so many people here. Hello? No, excuse me. Young man, don't waste your time driving around the city. It's the same in all other hotels. I know what I'm saying. You should look for an apartment or remember somebody you know from the locals. I'm a local myself. Thank you. Goodbye. Hello. Well, Vinogradna Street. Get in, let's go. Hello? Hello? Are you from the police? Again? Will you come here every day? Excuse me, what do you mean every day? Well, one of your people came the day before yesterday. Scruffy, agitated, Taran in Terakov, I don't remember. Someone from the directorate too, Taran Tive. He is our colleague. Lara, can you move faster? We're being late. They'll wait for you. Hi, Dad. Hi. Will you let me spend the night here? Come in. It turns out there are pleasant people in our police too, Inga. Thank you. I beg your pardon, but your scruffy colleague behaved very rudely. We were thinking about calling police. Thing is, Captain Tarantive has serious problems now. One can understand him. How long will we wait for your CEO? Who? CEO, Chief Executive Officer. How long? I don't know. He doesn't report to me. I'll go and walk around the corridors. Yes. Yeah, this one is the same. A proletarian. So what about your Tarantayev? He has drama. His daughter, age 16, ran away. Jailbait. Who did she run away with? With his best friend. Hot damn. Did she run away with? A man as old as her father. Yes. And he told us that the girl went missing, and was certain that we were responsible, but we didn't even see that girl. The problem is that she really went missing. His daughter, Taryn Tive saved her from that pedophile, and in a couple of days, she vanished into thin air. She has a friend, Katia, and she told us that they were going to your modeling agency. They wanted to walk the catwalk, become models, look like came here, but nobody has seen Lara since then. She disappeared. When was it? No idea. Katia says that she was at your agency a week ago, and Lara texted her mother two days ago. Listen, do you have her pictures? I do, here. Okay. They are so alike, like sisters. Listen, this one came by. Are you sure? I am. Such a brat. Sorry, they look so self-confident, but in reality they get cold feet. We sent her away. Why? She is pretty thin and young. What else do you need in the agency? She doesn't have the spice. Girls like her are a dime a dozen now. 
that's why our modeling agency isn't interested. Maybe the other girl came here too. You said they were like sisters. Could you confuse them? You know, theoretically I could, but not in practice. I have a good eye. I wouldn't miss her. Fine. We'll go, Lena. Maybe we'll try to catch your boss tomorrow. Whatever you say. Listen, can I give you my number? And you'll call me when you'll be on your way. And I'll tell you whether it makes sense. Great idea. Please, thank you. I'll give you my business card. Here you go. Great. So, how do you like the capital, son? Do you regret your transfer? No, I don't regret it. I'm all right, Dad. Glad to hear that. They say the new head of the directorate is a real warrior. Well, ex-military, served in Afghanistan, all that. Rise and shine, company. He must be mustering you boots far and wide. Dad, Major General Strizik is a great boss and officer. It's not a barrack over there. Not a barrack. It's good that it's not. Great to hear that he is great. And how do you like your direct superior? Who is heading the homicide desk now? Huh? I'm sure you know it very well. Why do we need this performance? Don't get cheeky, son. You feel adult and cool, don't you? I'm an adult for quite some time, Dad. And I never wanted to become cool. At least not in the sense you and your pet buddies understand it. Oh, really? Yes, you know who I'm talking about. Your old police guard ready to lick the boots of the city's former district attorney until their graves. I'll go now. Sasho, where are you going? Sorry, I got a call from work. Let him go. Sasha. What is it, Captain Spock? Are there flowers your growing pardon. on me? No. No flowers on you. But you do omit something. Why did Lena flourish so much in your company? Aren't you interested to find out which girl she recognized? I know it already. Rachinko's daughter, Katya. Really? Interesting. How did you find out? You could overhear that but you couldn't take a peek. Why couldn't I? I could very much do it. Really? Tell me about it. Let's put it like that. You have your trade secrets and I have mine. To tell you the truth, you did impress me today. Big time. In a good way. First during the conversation with Lyudmila Redshenko. And then with this Lena. You made her talk. Respect. Taking the opportunity. I want to thank you for helping me with Lena. Let's consider it our teamwork. Thanks. Still, how did you get her to talk? With some gossip or something? I picked her up. She is a lesbian, and I am her type. Fine. Don't tell me if you don't want to. Captain Spock, as you said, you have your secrets and I have mine. Okay, guys, sweep everything around. A rarity. Is it her? Fine, fine. Well, Mr. Yablonsky, you can go. Go somewhere, drink some cognac, and relax. I can go? Yes. It's just that guy from the district police prohibited me from leaving until... Good afternoon. Hello. Captain Shestak, Investigation Department of the District Police. I understand that the owner of the car called you. Yeah. Are you his friend of a friend of the deceased? I'm the head of the homicide desk of the Capitol Police, Major Mischenko. I didn't see your papers though. Okay, here you go. Yeah, everything is in order. Captain, we shouldn't butt heads. That car is material evidence in a case of an attempt at life of our employee. Only the car. Well, the car and its contents. 
so we'll take this case for sure, no hard feelings. And you can get both the car and the body to us. No problem, Major. But let's do it like this, your boss should call mine and confirm it. And then, you can take them, and we'll transfer the papers later. No hard feelings. Of course, no hard feelings. Only silly people hold grudges. Hey, my good people, don't you want to say anything? What is it? Or who is it, to be exact? It was ordered to be sent to you. Who ordered this? I did. I ordered this. I need it very much. Please. Major? Sir, I love you, of course. But did you check the time? The working hours are over. Oleg, please do get a conscience. For God's sake, who am I telling it to, though? You're doing it around the clock. Yes, please. It's very important. What do we have here? Mm, looks like drowned. Judging from the traumas. I always say that you're a genius. A genius of the medical expertise. Exactly. Two hours ago, she was pulled out of the car, and the car was pulled out of the lake. It probably was a car accident. She reeks of alcohol. What do you need? Old man, a wasted lady lost control? I am interested if she was just drunk as a skunk or whether there was something else in her blood. And the exact time of death too. You're hiding something from me, Major. Yes. When will you know? Is it another case? As soon as I can. Tomorrow, by noon. Dasha, I beg you. Did you know her, Oleg? It's something personal, right? I don't know her, but it's personal. Fine. I'll call you tomorrow morning. Thanks a lot. You're the most beautiful coroner ever. Ever. And don't flatter me. Yeah, pigs are definitely flying today. Major Mishchenko has something personal. However, looks like even his personal life is linked with crime. No, no, you're alive. You're alive. Alive. So, what do we have? They saw Katya in the main office. People in the branches didn't recognize the girls. Could the secretary get confused? I am 95% sure in her answer. It means we don't know anything for sure. There are questions about the branch too. Because when Stepanik went there, he was on edge. Tomorrow he and Taryn will go there again and try to interrogate everybody more thoroughly and calmly. Tomorrow it will be five days since Lara's kidnapping. He killed Katya on day six. I understand that these retards have a tendency of picking up the pace. Not always. It depends on many factors. First of all, how much the victim fits the subject's fantasies. Can you describe him? I am talking about the imagination. Let's try. 
Our subject is a young man 25 to 30 years of age. Social, charming, he could endear himself with the girls, make them trust him. The fact that two girls are so alike means that they are the sublimation of a real woman our subject had a thing for. Let's just say he was obsessed with her. The state he left caught his body and tell us that he repents. Repents? What are you talking about? Girl's body was washed, the hair brushed. The subject even managed to put makeup on his victim, put a nice dress on her, placed her in a pretty pose in a picturesque place. All that means that subject felt sorry for his victim and repented. And the absence of the sex part tells us that in his childhood, he likely suffered a serious trauma. Why did he start killing only now? He experienced some stress, or he was flooded by memories. A similar situation. It also could be serious changes in life, psychological trauma, or death of a close person. But the main thing is, our subject had a goal. As soon as we understand what he wants, we'll find out who he is. Interesting. Episode 6 Michaelo! This is Lieutenant Taryn! Anybody there? Michaelo! One moment. Will you let me in or not? Shoo. Sashko, come in. How did you find me? By the smell of alcohol. I was at the agency. The CEO was impressed by your visit and gave me your address right away. And... Hold on. There's no need to shout. You woke the entire floor up. Michaelo, it's almost nine. The entire floor is at work. By the way, I thought that you were working too. Looking for your daughter. Don't teach me. Brad. I'm, I'm looking. There. Got it. I see it. Where are you taking me? Don't. That's it. Come on. Quiet. Okay. What did you get me into, Major? I wish I resigned right away. Oh, Matilda. You've got lucky with the owner, yeah. It's good that he at least feeds you. One moment. Oleg, why are you ignoring Matilda like that? Are you already at work? Yes, I'm here, and I'm ready to expand the profile of R. I'm waiting for you at the morgue. Copy that. Look, Lieutenant, just don't think that I'm an asshole or something. My daughter disappeared, and I'm getting wasted here. When I saw that girl yesterday, the one that died, I lost my mind completely. She looked like my Laris so much. Drink some coffee. There are three spoons of sugar in it. You get yourself together faster. Your wife came by yesterday. Marina. She told us everything. Major sent me here. And the case of that girl, Radchenko, was sent to us later. I get it. Did Major promise to reprimand me for my absence? He won't. Considering the circumstances. Fine. 
Michaelo, you have problems with the spooks because of me. Did you file a report? You did the right thing. Captain, sir, I didn't know. Come on. We're through. It doesn't matter whether you knew or not anymore. Thanks for coming to help me. I'll deal with the spooks later. There are more important things to do. We need to get those fashionists by the throat. Yeah, yeah. She definitely didn't drown. There is no water in her lungs. Before you ask, it wasn't a dry drowning either. You can drown from a rapid temperature shift only if you fall directly into the water. It's impossible in the car. Was she drunk? Yep, wasted. I would say no less than three per mil. It's not deadly, but dangerous. Could she theoretically pass out the wheel? Theoretically, she could. But there is one. But there are traces of clomipramine in her blood. So what? It's not a poison. It's an antidepressant. That's the catch. Taking clomipramine together with alcohol provokes rapid rise of blood pressure, suppressing the nervous system at the same time. It means that a person believes that he's fine even though his blood pressure gets to 200 and the pulse is off the charts. I see. So without emergency medical help. Game over. Death occurs within 15 minutes after taking the drug. Well, I got it. Thanks, Darina. Thank you. What? Why are you looking at me with an entomological interest? With what? Entomological, like at an insect. I got it. It's just that you're an iron lady, Inga. React to the body of someone you knew with such Olympic calmness. That, well, but you didn't see each other for a year, and you weren't friends. Plus, plastic surgeries, right? When did your Kalvava die? The body was pulled out of the Cyan Lake yesterday but she died over a day ago. The day before yesterday. Excuse me, I need to go to the toilet. She is not iron. I've done good too. I finished the good deed. Of course, I could finish it a year ago, but I'll be sincere. I wanted to impress you once more. What did you do? I won't spoil the surprise. You'll find everything out tomorrow. Good night, princess. It can't be him. You didn't kill her, did you? What's up? Listen. Guys. Come on. I'm not talking to you. Well. You're my trump card. Appreciate it, yeah. Okay, I need to know about a credit card. When and where it was used for the last time. Yup. Since when do you need a subpoena? The owner won't care anymore. She died a day ago. Fine, I'll send you a text now. Bye. Okay, I'll be waiting. Thanks. Here you go. Thanks. As I told your colleague yesterday, we didn't invite models from the capital for the shoot. Not recently, not ever. I see these girls for the first time. We're not interested in faces like that. Could they be invited without you knowing? It's absolutely not possible. We're not running a thoroughfare over here. Despite what some of you think about modeling, we're not a brothel but a successful and reputable agency. But you found something for us. I did. 
Look, these two girls work with us on a permanent basis. They are the same type as yours. Well, the missing ones. I don't know what you want to ask them, but... Thank you. Have a nice day. Goodbye. Thanks. Goodbye. Can we talk? There is nothing to talk about, Major, sir. I've heard everything I needed from the coroner. Gala was drunk. She took an antidepressant and died. It was an accident. The matter is closed. It's so simple for you. She got drunk, chased it with an antidepressant and died. So, she didn't know what would happen if you mixed alcohol and drugs. Maybe you'll start talking about the suicide now? No. I won't talk about a suicide. But women usually choose a more pleasant and beautiful way of ending their life. However, a drunk woman could make a mistake when taking drugs. The main thing, she did it right at the exact moment when she was wanted for an attempt to run you over in someone's car. She did borrow the Cooper, that's a fact. And she tried to run you over, that's a fact too. Listen, I won't interfere with you building your own version. I simply told you my opinion. You're playing an ostrich. You hide your head in the sand, don't see anything, don't hear anything. Pretending that everything's fine. I'm done. I got it. Go, there's daddy's place. Run over there. Fine. Angela, you need to give us the contacts of your permanent employees. Yes, I've already prepared it. Here you go. Thanks, tell me. Do you have girls who moonlight sometimes? Not a lot. Management believes that permanent employees are more dependable and disciplined. Maybe you have them registered. I have to check. At this moment, only a... Ara Krayukova. Here are her contacts. Thanks, Angela. You're welcome. Have a good day. Take it, we have to go. Hello, Antonina. Hello. A dive. What do you mean, a dive? Madame paid at a dive right before her death. The name is even cooler than your model, you. Are you ready? And the nemesis, the goddess of retaliation. They sure are creative. This is how I'll name my yacht. Do they serve grilled bodies of their enemies there, or what? Pasha, why do you think that the owner of the card was a woman? Major, come on, who are you talking to? Oh, I almost forgot. The nemesis is two minutes from the place where... The deceased was found. Thanks for your work. So, why do we care for that drowned lady? Pasha. Oh, like that. Fine, I'll find it myself. Major. Pavlik. Don't make a fuss. I'll resign. Good afternoon. Do you want to sit here, or will you come inside? We have a meeting here. There. We're already here. Okay. Hello. The Capitol Police? Did you call me? Yes, that was us. Can I see your documents? Here you go.
Thank you. Have a seat. Thank you. What's wrong, dear officers? Cognitive dissonance. A model, that's not stupid. It happens too. So what about the addition to the profile? Well, I analyzed the photos from the crime scene and I'm almost positive that our man has a creative job. Why exactly? Definitely the way and the place he left Katia in. It's an important part of his fantasy, as well as the type of the girls, and everything in general, the body, the pose, the surroundings. It's staged, it's a thought-out picture, a performance if you will. So, I don't know how I can help you. The agency is a side job for me. I study at the Language Institute here for. Tell me, were there some occasions when it was you in particular that was needed for the shoot? An ideal type, so to speak. It's funny that you said that. An ideal type. Once, that was exactly what I was told. Who said it and when? It was long ago, like four years ago. I've just graduated from school and was going from one agency to another trying to get them interested. Did you succeed? In a way. By the way, it was the same agency model you. A photographer met me at the door. He began flattering me, told me that he needed me and only me for the shoot, that I was the ideal type, something like that. Did he take your pictures? Yes. The next day, at the waterfront. Did everything go fine? It went somewhat weird. I didn't have any experience, and the photographer was very young, no older than 20 from his looks. Did he ask for anything unusual? No, he didn't ask either for nudes or sex. He was just angry with me because I was doing everything in a wrong way. And that's it. We were unhappy with each other's work and went our separate ways. What was his name? Max. I think. I can't remember his surname. It's not a problem. Does he work at the agency? Frankly, I don't know. I don't go there often. Well, thanks a lot. Thank you. Goodbye. Oh, um. Yes. You know what? Maybe that Max didn't work at the agency. I was thinking. They use many freelancers. Like me. Everybody wants to make money quick. So could he be a freelancer? And you went to work with him without any doubts because he was behaving as an employee. You're smart and handsome. Did they take your pictures for the police corporative calendar? Fine, take care. Have a nice day. Both girls' phones are a dead end. Katya's last call was to her mother, and Lara's was a voicemail. Did you find out where they were calling from? No. The tech guys say it's impossible because on different days, a phone may catch a signal from different towers. However, we do know that they called from downtown. It doesn't give us much, though. Besides the fact that the Model U agency is situated downtown, thus we come back to them again. I think we should stop being obsessed with that agency. Well, I mean that it often happens when the case affects close people. Investigators suffer from tunnel vision. What is that? It's when they stop asking questions and start twisting facts to match their theory. We only work with the facts that we have. Do you think that the agency has nothing to do with it? Do you have any suggestions? The agency might play its part, but we can't be sure that the murderer works there. I continue to insist that we need to answer the main question, what does our assailant want? The faster we'll find out, the sooner we'll find him. Great, you figure it out. This is your concern, and don't forget to inform Detectives Taran and Tarantiv of your suspect's profession. Well, from your point of view. Fine. Sariza, I need to leave for some time. Check the closest CCTV cameras to the agency on the day when the girls were kidnapped. That's it, bye.
I gave our numbers Krykova. She will call us if she remembers anything new about that, Max. Our numbers? I thought so. Fine. Maybe she'll remember something. That girl is smart. And beautiful. Fits you well. Come on. She came here tipsy and chased it with some cognac without any snacks. First, I thought that she wanted to pick someone up. You know, we often get pissed ladies striving for adventures. And some guy did come up to her. What man? Can you describe him? No, just a guy. A regular one. Do you think she was waiting for him? She wasn't waiting for him, but she wasn't very surprised. Maybe she knew him. Did they leave together after? No, they sat together and had a drink, and then he left. She wasn't very upset, but by that time, she was really wasted. Aha. Uh -huh. She paid with a card, gave tips and cash, a proper amount, and that was it. She got into the car and drove away. Was she driving in that state? Are you sure? Definitely sure. You should have seen her driving out of the parking lot. Fine. Did they pour the cognac themselves? I mean, did he touch her glass? Well, if he poured it, it means he touched it. But you know, I didn't have time for that. About a dozen of people was sitting at the bar alone. I had to make sure they all paid and didn't break any glasses. I'm sorry, I didn't see who touched what. For sure. Yeah. Glad to hear you, Mikhailo. Well, do you have any leads? We do, but everything's somewhat shady. Listen, Inga, I can't reach Major, so receive the info. We need to find somebody at the agency. His name is Max. Looks like he cooperated with the model you, but it was four years ago. He's not here anymore, and nobody remembers him. Try to find him in the capital. Maybe he moved. What else is known about him? He is about 25 now and then he was shooting a girl who looks like Lara. Fine. Do you have her pictures from the shoot? No. He didn't give her the photo. He said they didn't turn out good. Please, look for him yourself. Bring in Spider. He is a bit crazy, so you will click. Fine. Thanks for the recommendation. Will do. Have a nice day. There you go. These are pictures from the Capitol Branches site. Do they remind you of something? Yes and no. You're right, Sasha. The girls do look alike, but the photos themselves, how do they say it? The composition is very different. They are in the countryside, yeah. This photographer wants the girls to move. Look, she's running. Spinning around, laughing. They are full of life in his photos. Do you see? Maybe Mikhailo. But still, we need to check this guy out. Look for his surname. Here. Zadorozny. Shoo. Why are you eating this crap? Sit like this. Good girl. Oleg. Yeah. Are you out of your mind? Stepanik is calling you, and you're sewing some buttons. And I think that we didn't finish talking about you, Kavlova. And I think she was killed. And I'm sure you think so too. Yes. Yeah, Major, sir, this is Senior Lieutenant Terran. Me and Captain are fine. We need to interrogate a Maxim. He is a photographer. His surname is Zadorozny. We're almost sure that he is not the suspect, but he could know his colleagues that worked for the agency. He's not here, so I believe you've got him. I got it. We'll talk to your Zadorozny. Thanks, Major, sir. We're waiting for the results. We'll interrogate a photographer now.
Let's see whether he fits your profile or not. Welcome. The usual for me. Double ristretto and a glass of 2009 Merlot. What are you having? They have a great... A cappuccino? You shouldn't behave with dad like that. What are you fighting over? Mom, we're not fighting over nothing. It just happened that we're very different people. You should accept it and stop spoiling your nerves and mood. Sasha, why do you want to prove something to us? To dad, you can't shoot from the hip like that. You know how it pains me to watch it. You're both my most beloved and closest people. Mom, I'll tell you something now. But don't get insulted. I realized long ago that the closest and most beloved person in your life is yourself. I know how important social norms are for you. There won't be a scandal in our family. I'm here for a couple of days and won't bother you anymore. Sasha. Maybe you will come home before leaving. I think it's never too late to make things work between a son and a father. Thank you. It has been late for many years. It's just a dry medical fact. Don't waste your time, Captain. I've just come back from Prague. I spent a week there. I'm preparing my personal exhibition, and I have nothing. To do with those girls. Good for you. But it doesn't prevent us from talking. What will we talk about? I'm telling you, I don't know these girls, and if I did, I wouldn't take their pictures. But why? The girls seem to be pretty. These girls? They are run-of-the-mill. Photographers say that the camera needs to fall in love with the model. Aha. Uh -huh. This is not the case. Not, it's not him. Narcissistic, too self-absorbed, successful. And totally calm, while our man is not that confident. I can agree with that. Thank God. Pasha checked, said Rosny came back from Prague, but me might be of use for us. What kind of art is this? It's God knows what. Well, what you don't like? The model or, what do you say, the composition? Both the model and the composition. And the girl looks dead, wait. Is it a real corpse? Why did you show it to me? Well, I... I just wanted to hear a professional opinion. You photographers must know each other. Maybe you know if somebody of your colleagues is capable of such art. There's one loser. He is constantly showing his God forbid art to me. Such a hack. His girls are usually sleeping. I told him, Max, you need work at the anatomy theater. There are plenty of girls you might like there. And the surname. What is his surname? Shelestov. Maxim. He tried to work with us as a freelancer. Thanks a lot. Pasha, it's urgent. Maxim Shelestov.
You worked at the model agency. Model you. Model you. Everything about him. I'm waiting. Listen, Lieutenant. While you were away, I checked in his profile once again. The one on that bastard. I mean the suspect. So I thought. Wait, Lieutenant. Did something happen? You met with your mother, didn't you? We did. Nothing happened. I just wanted to relax. I get it. It's easy to get wasted, but it won't solve your problems. I know that. Didn't stop you, though. I'll try it, too. Why did you report me? That's fine. Stay cool. I'll tell you why. You were disgusted looking at my antics. And you were right. You have to decide what to do. What to think about? About the profile? Listen. I don't believe such a sick person didn't try doing something like this before. If he is a local, it means that something similar must have happened here. Maybe it didn't come to murder. Look, if there was something similar, I... No man who can know about it. Oh, can I get a check? You're on the loudspeaker. We're listening to you. Oh, yes. Inga, hi. Come on, spit it out. Okay. Maxim Shelestov, 25, a freelance photographer. He showed up at dozens of agencies, including our Model U. He came to conquer the capital three years ago. Now, that's interesting. A couple of weeks ago, his mother, aged 50, died of cancer. She was sick for many years. Was his mother his only relative? Looks like it. She died in his arms. Well, he took her home from the hospital a couple of months ago. The address. Already in your mailbox. Fine, look if his mother's prescriptions included morphine, and find out about Shilistov's car. Later. Let's go. This is what I'll tell you, Sasha. We didn't find bodies like those either in the city or the countryside, as far as I know. I wouldn't forget something like it. However, I remember a girl that looked like that. I went to the crime scene myself. But it was long ago, about 20 years ago, and it wasn't a murder but a pure accident. We found the morphine vials. Interesting. The apartment looks like a household of an elderly lady and not a young man. Maybe he didn't change anything while his mom was sick. We found the morphine vials. It was prescribed to Shelestov's mother during the last months of her illness. There's an APB out for Shelestov's car. It was a terrible case. That's why I remember it. The parents, local businessmen, left on a vacation. And they left their five-year-old son with a babysitter. When they came back, the boy was sitting over Amy's body. The expert said she took a nasty fall. She laid there in a coma for five days. The boy was sitting with her all that time. He couldn't go out because the door was locked. And he couldn't call anybody because it was a private house on the outskirts of the village. It's good that he didn't die of hunger. What happened to the boy? What do you think? They moved out of that house at once. I think they took the boy to the children's psychologist. I remember that when we came, he was running after the stretcher. He loved that Anya. Andrey. It's them? Yes, Anya Kovenka, 18, and Maxim Shelestov, 5.
His mother's death became a stress factor for Shalestov and provoked recollections of Anya's death. Shalestov is a talented guy. Now he's trying to depict a beautiful death that he memorized. For that, he needs the girls to be completely immobile. Okay. He kept Katya for almost a week, and he couldn't leave her alone in case she would come to her senses. It means he needs a permanent place. He didn't come to his apartment. Strangers live in the Shalestov's former house now. Where does he keep them? We haven't found his car, and his phone is switched off. None of the agencies he worked with saw him this week. The bad thing is, we have basically no time. Lara called mom at noon and said, Mom, I have a nature shoot. Don't wait for me, I'll be home late. How could she go to another town with the model you branch and return home the very same evening? It's a very long drive. A plane? Well, Shelistov is not that rich. Perhaps. If she didn't mean the city, then what might it be? What nature? Wait, I think I've got it. There is a tourist complex on the southern highway halfway between the cities. It's called Nature. I was there some years ago. They have isolated cottages there, like in a forest nearby, for the people to connect to nature. Do you remember the exact place? I do. Let's go. Daughter. What did you take? Let me go. I need to finish. Let me go. Come on, they'll bandage you there. We'll deal with this one. Do you know that? Morphine. It looks like an overdose. But she will live. How long? What do you mean? Has she been on drugs for long? She's not a junkie. She was drugged against her will. I see. Let me examine you. Examine her first. Give me the suitcase. Well, I didn't want to kill anybody. I'm not crazy with Katya, it... was an accident. I just wanted to take beautiful photos of them. You killed a 17-year-old girl and nearly crippled another one. Nobody should have gotten hurt. It was just an accident. Just an accident. Anya, you're so beautiful. Did somebody promise to draw me? Wait, I think your paints were on top of the wardrobe. I'll get them now? I'm holding you, Anya. Anya, why are you lying? Stand up. Anya? Then I stopped crying, and I started looking at her. 
she was dying for a long time. She was so beautiful. I've never seen such beauty. Perfection. I wanted to achieve this in my works. Give me the suitcase. Hello. Good afternoon. Are you the father? I am. She's still sleeping. The drug is still on the way out. She'll wake up in a couple of hours. But if you want, you can stay with her. Yes, of course. Thank you. Goodbye. How's Lara? Fine. She's sleeping. I'll go to her now. Thanks for your help, Lieutenant. I don't know what would happen without you. How's your arm? Eh, it's fine. Say hello to her for me. Sure, I will. You asked me to give you a lift, so I did. Where are you taking me, Oleg? What house is it? It's the house of Galanay Yakovleva. I want to show you something. Great. Hello. Hello. Put the gloves on, please. Just take a look. So what? So what? What's your point? It's evident that a person who did it was mentally ill. That person hated you, Inga. That person stalked you during the last year of your life. That person patiently waited for your return home. How do they say? Revenge is a dish best served cold. What do you think? Is Yakovlova cold enough? Okay, I got it. This topic haunts you, Oleg. Fine. Let's discuss it. Sure. Let's settle this once and for all. My opinion as of a specialist, Yakovlova is not the type of person who could prepare and think her revenge over. She would do it fast and loud, because people like Gala get wired fast and cool down fast too. And that's it, I won't discuss this with you again. Didn't you think that someone didn't let her cool down? How did she get a hold of your pictures from the USA? I'm done. Listen here. You'll get a laptop now, you need to fish out some info. Everything that you may find, mail, messages and social networks. What should you look for? Anything there is. Bye. Well, what about that bastard Shilistov? Listen, he is really sick. It's good that Inga saw that. Major, do you know that our Inga has her own personal drama? Well, she had a fiancé who went missing. Do you mean that guy from the FBI? There is no drama there. It's the usual, they broke up, and she came here, that's it. No, she had a fiancé, and he went missing two years ago. How do you know that? She talked about that herself. Yeah, when we were talking to Redchenko's mother, she said, I understand you completely. I had the same situation, like, with a close person, I see. Fine, Sergei. Get some rest. It was a hard day.
damn it. Yevonese daughter. Yes. Hi. Listen, you asked me to call when I'll check the laptop out. So, I did. So, what's there? Well, nothing good. It's empty. The hard disk is formatted. Everything is totally clean. Fine, I got it. Good night. Bye, wait. Listen, maybe you'll give me that person's phone number. I'll look around some more. If you have it, of course. That's the thing, I don't have the phone. It disappeared. Okay, bye. Thanks. Have a good night. Episode 7 Good morning, Inga. Good morning. You don't look yourself today? Mornings are hard when you didn't get any sleep. What? What do you mean? You had an overnight guest yesterday. You both must have stayed up late. You're pale, and your eyes are puffy. Of course, you're young, but you need to care for your health. You're an amazing woman, Auntie Klava. You notice everything. I care for your health if I were you. Do you know why? Because good sleep is much more important in your age than in mine. Yes. Bitch. Oh. You could have warned me. I'd buy a cake. What are you waiting for? I'm waiting when you'll stop acting a fool, Inga. And tell me what is going on. Oleg, I don't understand what you mean. What is happening? Where? Stop for now. I appreciate your acting talents. I'm very interested in one monologue performed by you. What is going on in your life? The door is there. No need to close it. Aha. Uh -huh. You're smart. You know what is going on. People start dying as soon as you appear. Your patients, your friends, your admirers, your enemies, like that cripple. Your fiancé. Where is your Jerry now? You came back because of it, right? You studied at the FBI and started working at the police. To find out what had happened to him. Why are you silent? Why are you silent? Come on, tell me. I can help you. We'll find him faster together. I mean, his grave.
So, what do we got? Regular calls from an unknown number. Distorted voice. He has been stalking you at least from the beginning of the last year. And if, sorry, your fiance is on his record. Much longer then. Why did he start acting only now? I suppose that me coming home could be a stress. I came back after many years of absence and with Jerry as my official fiancé. The subject could perceive it as an insult of his feelings and dare to take radical measures, come into my life. I agree, this is not enough to create the full profile. But now, he will call more often, because he already made direct contact with the object. Did you hear yourself? What? You're being stalked by a psychopath and a serial killer, and you, object, subject. That's it. We'll work together from now on. Analysis alone is not enough. We need to act. Oleg, you don't need to get involved. This is my personal business. I'll give this crap to the experts tomorrow morning. Maybe we'll get lucky, and they'll find something. In the morning, the guys will check your phone too. Thank you. Anytime. Thanks for making me tell you about it. I feel better now. I've told you I had a good year. I just couldn't reach my psychologist. Lock the door. Yes, sure. Good night. More like, good morning. Beautiful, beautiful. You're beautiful too. Just shaggy. Well, sit here. I'll take this to the lab and come back. Got it? I came by for a minute. I'll go back to the hospital right after. Lara fell asleep. The doctor said that she'll wake up in an hour. Everything's good otherwise. The drugs are out of her system. They say she shouldn't be addicted. Good. Great, even you could just call. Why go here? Misha, thanks for saving Lara. Thank me for what? For saving my own daughter. Yeah, you and your blurts, Marina, fine. It's time for me to go. Go to her. What if she wakes up and there is nobody by her side? It's not good. Wait. Misha, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, it's all my fault. I was thinking only about myself and completely didn't pay attention to Lara. Stop it. Why now? Calm down. Go to her. She needs your support now. She asks whether her dad will come soon when she wakes up. Tell her. I'll come by soon. Good morning, Andrew.
Good morning to you too, my dear. Tell me about that case you took from the locals, buddy, with the drowned woman in the car. The head of the investigations reported it to me. And our criminalists worked in Yakovlev's house. What kind of initiative is that? Andrey, it concerns Inga. Tell me about it, I'm all ears. Good morning, Captain, sir. Writing another paper for your handlers in the internal affairs. Out of habit. Or do you just like it? What? Did you think that you helped Stepanik once, and that's all? No. Sunshine and unicorns, yeah. Good morning, everyone. Why are you staring at me like snakes in front of a rabbit? Listen, Sergi, if you're talking about his report, Lieutenant and I have discussed and closed this topic. I hold no grudges against him. To tell you the truth, he had reasons to file that report. As for his conscience, let him draw conclusions on his own. He is a smart guy, so stop punishing him for me. Congratulations, gentlemen. We're getting back into big politics again. A young up-and-coming politician and a fiery fighter against corruption Yeager Shannon has just been killed in his apartment. Great things await. And a big headache from the comrades of the fallen Figer. She'll fly to America today. Andre, it will be a mistake. You see that this is a psycho. He gets agitated when she is here. Exactly. That's why she has no business being here. If she leaves, you will stalk her there. And we won't be able to help her there. Fine. That's why we're opening a case because of an attempt on our freelance consultant. Add Yakovlova's case to the materials. Thanks to that crap we found at her home, we'll receive a warrant to wire Inga up. As a victim of an attempt in stalking, you look for Yakovlova's accomplice and her murder. Yes, sir. Can I go? You can. One moment. Right. Yeah, good morning, General, sir. How can I? There you go. You're a girl. Looks much better this way. It's good that you're here. You'll go to the repair shop. I'll send you the address. Leave your car with them. Don't say anything to anybody. They are waiting for you. Just introduce yourself. What's at that repair shop? The repair shop will check your car for bugs and gizmos that your admirer could have left. What if they find something? Then what? If they do, they'll leave it in place. But we'll understand what he knows. Yes. Yeah, we're on our way. We have a call. It's none of your business. What do you mean? It's none of your business, literally. You're going to the repair shop, and we're going to the call. Show them your phone too. It's the same as the car. If they'll find something, they'll leave it in place. General Strizik fully agrees with me. What do you mean? Did you tell the general everything? Who gave you the right to tell him anything without consulting with me first? This is my private life after all. This is not your private life anymore. Great. Brilliant.
I can see that your major has been not himself recently. Is it because of her? Hello, Inga. Will you go by your car, as always? Do you know where to go? Give me the address, please. Thank you. Yeah, and FNG and the team is always trouble for the brass. That's it, be quiet. Yeah. Guys, have a look around before the journalists arrive. Sasha, let's go. Yeah, fighters with corruption do well for themselves. You can see that it's profitable. God, I hate this. Good morning. Yeah, quite a morning, huh? Two gunshot wounds the hip and the head. The femoral vein is punctured in the leg. Approximate time of death is 15 to 18 hours ago. I'll tell you. I know, you'll tell us after the autopsy. At a boy. The gun. 38 caliber is a rough guess. A Makarov was lying alongside. I think it was the... But ask the ballistics that... One to the head to make sure, right? Possibly. It was a short-range shot. But, that's all for now. Aha. Uh -huh. Sasha, what do you got? An empty safe. Could it be a robbery? Owner was forced to open it. Robbers don't do wet work. Besides, the owner wasn't an ordinary guy. Not at all. Okay, keep working. I need to go to the attorney. I beg your pardon. Yes. Um, who found the body? The body? The housemaid, Irina Tishko. Irina Tishko. Thanks. Tishko. 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 Great. Check the boot too. This one is clean for emergency calls. Enter anyone you need into the speed dial. Oh, and we installed a GPS tracker just in case. Just talk as you usually do. Just watch what you can say and what you can't. Yeah, I got it. You need some practice. It's not as easy as you think. Even the word order? Yeah, even the change of the usual word order may blow the agent's cover in these cases. Yes, really, I got it. Thank you. I'll take my car back tonight, and I expect a clean call for you before that. You said that you came in as usual. At 9 a.m. Did you notice anything unusual in or around the house? Well, the gate and the door weren't locked. They were just tightly closed. Otherwise, there was nothing unusual. Didn't that concern you? Of course, it did. Shannon wouldn't let that slip. He was a very meticulous person. How long have you been working for him? For about half a year. Do you think he had enemies? Who do you mean by enemies? He was a politician. I think he had quite a lot of ill-wishers. But to kill him, I don't know. What did he keep in the safe? Money, documents? Maybe money or documents, but I don't know for sure, you understand. Did he keep his gun in the safe too? I saw him once putting his suitcase in the office, and the gun was lying on the table. I don't know where exactly he kept it. Is this the gun? It looks like it, but I am bad at weapons. Come in. Hello? Hello. 
What do we have here? Nothing good. Two GSWs, one to the head. What else? The door and the gate were open. No signs of burglary. He lived alone. The body was found by a housekeeper. Witnesses. Hell if I know, maybe we'll find them. We checked the neighbors. First one is on vacation. And the second one is renovating. I see. Let's go and see our anti-corruption activists' lifestyle. Did you find anything? I did, but not a lot. The guy is not very convincing. A local drunk. He hangs around a lot here. The smell is weird. Lemony and bitter. No? The criminalists surprised us. They say there are no fingerprints. And the gun. There aren't a lot of fingerprints in the whole house. So what? We found out that he lived alone, didn't have many guests, and cleaned well often. So, it's no wonder that there aren't a lot of fingerprints in the house. Yes, but there are spaces here with no prints of the owner at all. However, they should have been there, like here. They are on the lock and on the door of the wardrobe. Where's the major? He's on the terrace with the housekeeper. There, yes. Sasho, you went through everything here. Please show me the bathroom. Sure. When did you last see Shannon alive? Yesterday, around 5.30 p.m. Aha. Uh -huh. He called you, right? Yes, he called me and told me to come and clean up once again. Didn't you clean up in the morning? Of course, I did. But he called and said that I had to do an urgent cleaning again. Ha. Huh. And what happened? Nothing happened, I think. But Jaeger was obsessed with cleanness. He didn't even invite people home. But as far as I know, he had guests yesterday, unexpected ones. That's why he called and told me to come. Wow. What a battery. Any broad stream, right? A metrosexual. Oh. Did they litter it there or something? Did they make a mess? No, there was no mess. Everything as usual. I came and cleaned up in an hour. Are you sure you left at half past five? Absolutely. I looked at the clock on the wall in the hall when I was leaving. Usually I walk home, I live nearby. But yesterday I wasn't going home, so I had to call a taxi. Interesting. We have a witness who says that you arrived at half past five or a bit later, passed through the yard of the neighboring high rise, crossed the street, and entered the gate. Is this the way you got here? He also said you were in a big hurry. Wow. It looks like a museum. It's almost sterile. Inga. Is there a mania like this? Yes, but it's not a mania, it's a phobia. Excuse me, is there something like a pantry here? Yes, go along the corridor and turn right. Thank you. It means your witness is confusing something. Because I know exactly when I came and when I left. We'll check it. And when did you come? If Jaeger called around four, that means it took me about 10 minutes to get ready. So I was here at around half past four. I cleaned up in an hour and I left at half past five. By the way, I have the text that the taxi has arrived and I could come out. 528. Okay, we'll check it. Ha. Quartz antibacterial emitters. Lamps like those are usually used in hospitals to disinfect the air. Irina, tell me, did you notice? 
Why Shannon in a bad mood? He was amped up after the conversation. With whom? When I came, I was cleaning the pantry, and he went out into the hall. He was talking on the phone with some Sergi, I think. Don't you try to scare me? Scare the grannies on the block. Got it? Yes, I'm worked up. Don't you even dare come here, or I'll bathe you in glory to the brim. That's right. I'll arrange a show with press and the cops. Just how you like it. Go to hell, Sergi. Sergi, do you know who could it be? No, there is no Sergi in his inner circle, and I don't know anybody else. Well, I don't know anybody at all. I come here only in the mornings. I didn't see anybody, except Ilya Chervoni, his lawyer, because he drafted my work contract. I see. Fine, Irina. Thanks a lot. Walk around the house with the captain now, check if anything disappeared or maybe some things are in the wrong places. Misha. And exchange contacts. What? Take your phone number. Fine. We'll show through Shannon's contacts. He argued with some Sergi over the phone. The housekeeper said so. Major, sir, may I address you? Fire away. I was wrong in the Captain Tarantive's case. But I ask you to let me stay in the unit. Sashko, for the future, we don't need conflicts in the unit got it come on i can feel it coming in the air tonight why aren't you answering the phone pasha okay pasha look i need everything on one arena tishko Born around What is that? Cigarette ash or something. Looks like it. I'll tell you when I'll check it. So was he... Was he standing here smoking and dropping ash on the floor? I don't think that he was smoking. And he definitely wouldn't drop ash on the floor. What do we have then? The murderer was standing, smoking, and looking at... Shannon bleeding to death. I think that... He came up to Shannon. Crouched, put the cigarette out against the floor. Stood up and shot him in the head. Yeah, that's a cold-blooded bloke. Maybe it really was a hitman. By the way, we didn't find the butt. Of course. He took it with him. Yes, you're right. It's an exceptionally cold-blooded and cruel subject.
Right now, before your eyes, the coroners are taking away the body of the murdered Yeager Shainan, a young up-and-coming politician with prospects, well known for his constant fight with corruption, was shot in his own house. At the moment, the homicide desk of the police directorate is working at the crime scene. We're waiting for their comments. But we found out from our own sources that Shannon was shot multiple times and the kill shot was to his head. Oh, thank you. Anything else? No, that's it. Thank you. Tell Ms. Shenko to go to my office as soon as he arrives. Fine. What happened? God, it must be Major Mischenko's dog. She has a habit of running around the office. I'll leave the tray and take her away now. No, there's no need, Svetlana. Let her run. Major Mischenko's. A real police dog, a real hooch. A nano version. Are you gonna watch this crap with me? The owner will introduce us as soon as he comes. Huh? Our police aren't in a hurry to share the details of Jaeger Shannon's murder with us. This is the shortest way. I always take it. Did you do the car? Yes. Sergi, did you find anything interesting? Well, look, I think our guy was freaking out yesterday. Here's the cognac and the sedatives. Inga, as far as I know, they don't go well together, do they? To put it mildly, but maybe he only went for one of those. In any case, autopsy will show it. But Captain's right. If he used both alcohol and psychotropics at home, it means he wasn't fine. The housekeeper thinks that he had some unwanted guests yesterday. He called her in for overtime cleaning. Jaeger, this is Ilya. Pick the phone up. What's with your cell? I haven't been able to reach you for two hours. Are you home? So, I got a call from Berezan in the morning. They said that your old friend has already arrived before his term. You need to know about it. I'm in London now. And my schedule is too tight, so we won't be able to talk. I'll fly in tomorrow morning and call you. That's it, bye. See you. Wait. Look. Did you stand up, Mila, again? She's furious. You're an adult man, but you behave like a boy. It's good that she's a smart woman. I suggest you call her immediately and apologize. Or better yet, buy her something nice and come to her in person. And don't test her patience. That's all. Talk to you soon. Listen, maybe that Mila gave it to him. Look how interesting it gets. Shannon's lawyer in London is worried about him. Sergi, come on, find out his flight number, meet him at the airport and bring him to the directorate at once. Aha. Now, we need to find out who Mila is. Mila Lojanova, Shannon's classmate, and his wife. If they don't live together anymore, it means she is his ex. And it looks like we're not the only ones interested in her. And that somebody is from her student life. An old friend has arrived ahead of time. Listen, maybe let's have some coffee tonight. I can't. I'm going to the pool. Guys, they are coming. And we're off. Tell us, was it a hired hit? Is it true that Shannon was finished off with a shot to the head? Tell us, please. People have a right to know what's going on. Can I ask you one more question, please? What does an FBI expert think about the murder? It would be wrong to draw hasty conclusions in such a serious and resonant case. We understand that you want to know the truth. As soon as we get exact facts, we'll definitely tell you about it. Our police aren't in a hurry to share the details of Jaeger Shannon's murder. Unfortunately, it was to be expected. 
Let's hope that the public will be informed about the course of the investigation in the nearest future. This is what a new employee of the homicide desk of the Capitol Police who had just recently undergone training at the FBI Academy told us. Right now before your eyes the coroners are taking away the body of the murdered Yeager Shannon. Good afternoon, Igor. Look, Andri, we don't need hired political hits. They will tear the entire force to pieces, starting from you. Your people need to work hard and dig into that Shannon's shady dealings. It would be ideal if it happened to be a domestic crime. You know, a crime of passion and all that. I got it. We'll take it into account. Listen, is it your niece? Performing for the cameras? Yes, sir. She's good. She didn't say anything and cooled them down. Listen, maybe we'll let her lead the briefing. When we decide what to feed the press. It's a bad idea, Igor. She has worked at the police for two seconds. She can blurt out something bad. Fine. I'll think about it. There he goes. No way will I allow my own niece to be torn to pieces. Thanks for understanding. Come on, Inga. Give something for an old friend. I don't recall you being my friend. And by the way, I didn't know you specialized on crime reporting. And I'm not. I specialize on you. You know, something interesting is always going on around you. I won't say that I'm touched. I have to go. Inga, we have to be friends. What do we have here? A very clingy pin shark. Oh, here's the defender. Inga, you have a talent to get knights. People get fish, mister. Radashni, and your wording is quite poor for a journalist. Excuse us. Let's go, Captain. You talk good game, Inga, but you have nothing essential to say. Here, this is my house. This is my entrance. The apartment is on the seventh floor. Will you come in? Oh, this camera. Do you know if this camera works? I have no idea. That's fine. We'll find out. So what, Irina? Done showing off. I told you not to be so mean. If you weren't so greedy to give me money for a court, maybe I wouldn't notice you yesterday. I don't know who you saw yesterday, but it definitely wasn't me. It definitely was you. Tatiana booted me out to buy bread in the store. It was before six. I came out, and you were... just crossing the road. In your usual... green dress. I called her over. I wanted to ask her to give me some money for beer, but no? We're so fancy. She didn't even look back, just went to her MP's gate in her heels. And disappeared. What are you talking about? It wasn't like this, Captain, sir. We'll find out. Irina, let's go to the directorate. Just as we planned, you know what, Talia, let's go with us right away. You need to sign your testimony anyway. Grip Crimes Unit, Senior Lieutenant Taryn. You got a match? Who? Uh -huh. Yup. In 97, right? Got it. I'll come by for the full report soon. Thanks for the speed. Goodbye. The latch is easy to open. Oleg, I was thinking, what is it with Berezan? I'll call you back. What is it? The lawyer said that he got a call from Berezan. A dear friend had arrived, but ahead of time. And, and, is it difficult to get here from Berezan? It's a two-hour trip on a commuter train. Go whenever you like. There's a medium security prison in Berezan. Exactly. What if somebody was going to be released from there? Came a bit earlier, for example, was proled. Ha, huh, 
How do you like this surprise for Shannon? It's great. Find out who was released from there during the last two or three days. Already on it. Grigori, hello. Good afternoon, Sasha. One moment. One moment. Here you go. Can you give a brief summary? The shot was made from the Makarov that was found near the body. The gun is clean. It was registered in Shannon's name two years ago. There, about the fingerprints. About the fingerprints, we found some fingerprints of Shannon and his housekeeper at the house. Also, there are no fingerprints on the gun. They must have been wiped. As for the safe, you already know. By the way, it's the first time I see such a sterile space. Anything else? Door handles. They were thoroughly wiped. There aren't even Shannon's fingerprints on them. There is no stranger DNA on Shannon's body. There are his fingerprints and DNA of the glass with cognac. That is all. And what about the ashes on his offices for? I beg your pardon. Yes, yes, here. Ashes from a cigarillo. You know, it's a very thin cigar. The tobacco is of high quality, it's not cheap. Judging from the quantity of the ashes, the murderer smoked one. There is no but. That is definitely all. Thanks. You're welcome, you're welcome, Sasha. Anytime. Good luck. Okay. Just a bit more, okay. The courier brought it when you were on call. What is it? I have no idea. The stamps are from America. No return address. Do you have the courier's number? Yes, here. Thanks, Sergeant. There is a stranger's fingerprint in Shannon's safe. We have checked it through the database. It belongs to Sergei Zelestuk, born 1982. In 97, he was given suspended sentence on vandalism charges as a minor. What is he up to now? Now he is an active fighter with corruption. And recently, Yeager Shannon is hindering his struggle. I mean, he's not hindering anymore. I got it. Clean up your table, senior lieutenant. Yes, Major, sir. Episode 8 Anyway, we have a suspect. One Sergei Zeleskuk. Another one up-and-coming fighter with corruption. He and Shannon were grazing the same field, fighting for some fat anti-corruption grants. Yeah, they have been arguing publicly a lot recently. Arguing publicly because of the grants? It doesn't sound wise. In his last speeches, Shannon was transparently hinting at Zalischuk's dark past. Does Zalischuk have something to hide? I think he does, actually. He has a conviction. It was a juvie and he got a suspended sentence, but he doesn't mention that in his biography. And we have Zalischuk's fingerprints on Shannon's safe. And the housekeeper overheard his argument with some Sergi on the night of murder. The housekeeper seems shady too. Irina Tishko. 
Just half a year ago, she worked as an immunologist in the Institute of Neurosurgery, and then she somehow became Shannon's housekeeper. Where is Mochia? I don't know. She didn't tell me where she went. Very funny. I'll have to look for her around the entire directorate. What is it? Dasha sent the results of the autopsy. Are you coming? I mean you both. Well, here is your Vic customer. He died last night between 6 and 7 p.m. The first bullet hit the femoral vein and the second entered the brain. Judging from minimal bleeding, the headshot was made after the death. Did he have any chances to survive after the first shot? Only if with immediate medical help. The blood loss needed to be stopped immediately. It wasn't done. That's why I say he bled to death in five, seven minutes at the most. Was the shot made point blank? Yes, point blank. There are traces of oil and gunpowder on Shannon's hands. And I am almost sure he was struggling for the gun with somebody. During the struggle, the gun went off Shannon fell on the floor and rolled on it, clutching at the wound. This is why his hands were bloody, and the person with the gun, well, I don't know, maybe he was thinking of what to do next. Maybe he simply was standing there and smoking, waiting for Shannon to kick the bucket, and then he came up and shot him right between the eyes. And that's it, no professionalism needed, just strong nerves. Dasho, what does he have? Here, above the eye and on his forehead some kind of particles in the hair it's not gunpowder it's dust i thought so too at first but it's regular ash from a cigarette i just don't understand one thing how it ended up there did the killer blow the ash into his face after death oleg i am ready to present the profile to the team what damn hitman it's a scam for the journalists. Your hitman watched too many criminal dramas. A real hitman wouldn't leave Shannon a single chance. He wouldn't even be able to grab his gun, even more so get it out of the safe. I agree. I'd also exclude a common robbery. The safe is empty. All the valuables are in place. The main thing is, Shannon was at home at least two hours before the murder. Not a single robber would do a job with the owner inside. Yes. There are no traces of burglary. It means Shannon let the murderer in himself. They were talking in the office. He even opened the safe in his presence. It was somebody from his inner circle. Why did he even go into the safe in his guest presence? Did he want to take the weapon, the money, or something else? Come in, please. Have a seat, Irina. On that chair. I'll come back. In two minutes? Are you sure it won't take long? I have important business. It really won't. If you had told me everything, that you know. The subject is somebody Shannon knew, for sure, that he called for an urgent talk. The conversation was unpleasant and directly connected to his earlier guest, the unwanted one. After he had left, Shannon panicked, mixed whiskey with a sedative and called the housekeeper. What's the damn deal with the housekeeper and the guests? Tishko. These unexpected guests, as far as I understand, he was a public figure. People should have visited him sometimes. I would have been so in a normal case. But judging from Shannon's house, he clearly had OCD. What? The obsessive compulsive disorder. In his case, it was misophobia, a pathological fear of dirt and germs. Remember looking through his house, lots of cleaning products, disinfectants, what wipes on every corner. So that's why the whole place was smelling like an operating room. Does it happen often? Pretty often for public figures. Experts believe that this happens because of heightened stress and a lack of privacy. So basically, with this crap in the head, he wouldn't invite somebody over. Only in extreme cases. Hence, I think that the urgent cleanup in Shannon's nervousness was connected to the fact that in his opinion, a person who came to him was not clean enough, that's why he went crazy. Yeah, maybe somebody came from prison. That's where you are. And more precisely. Okay.
Mish. Misha, did you and Tishko examine the house? Did she notice anything there? No, she said everything's in order. Well, a pair of slippers went missing from the hallway. <laughs> wow, a robbery of a century. Is Tishko sure that they went missing? She said that she used to leave three pairs of slippers in the hallway. If somebody used them, she would add a new pair. Last night she left three pairs. This morning only two were left. Okay, Sergi. I urgently need a printout of Shannon's yesterday calls. Pasha is working on his phone. Maybe it was turned on somewhere. Go and find out. Misha, keep working on Tishko and ask her about Shannon's disease. Check the alibi. Yes, sir. Okay. You will work on Shannon's ex-wife. She might know something about the contents of the safe and about his friends. And I will go to Zalischik. Wait a minute. According to our profile, our subject is very clever, highly organized and careful. The murder was clearly spontaneous, but he reacted in a very smart way. No panic and no slip UPS so far. The only things we have found are the ones that he wanted to show us. The crime scene is a clear setup, a couple of false clues left specifically for the police. The sergeant called. Shannon's ex-wife is here. Mila Lojanova, Shannon's ex-wife, is here. The ball comes to the player. Work with her. Did something happen? No, it's nothing. I just wanted to ask, what is that parcel on your desk? It's a gift from the States. A courier brought it while we were away. What? A gift from the States brought by an anonymous courier. Tell me, why this gift isn't in our lab now? You got it all wrong. It's really a present from a friend I studied at the academy with. He just didn't have time to congratulate me in America. So he sent it here via courier. You're sure? Yes, definitely. I called him and asked. Why didn't he sign it? Well, because he wanted to make a surprise. Second, he doesn't know about the present circumstances of my life. Third, everything is normal inside. There is a card and a signature. I see. Bye. Is everything all right? Yes. Fine. Well, I decided to not wait for you to come to me come here on my own. A wise decision, Mila. Please tell me, maybe your ex-husband had a wishers. Or even enemies. As a politician, Yeager was a dud. Just populist and a grant eater. He wouldn't been a nobody if not for his father's connections. Let me put it this way, he didn't grow to have serious political enemies and a hired hit. And, if I were you, I'd look for a person he offended in a bad way. However, I didn't come for this. Jaeger and I are divorced, and I know nothing of his latest antics. I have an entirely personal and a mercantile interest. Did you find the necklace? Yes, Misha, hello. Hello, Oleg. Reporting on Tishko just like you asked. Her son, age 17, crashed on a motorbike eight months ago. Badly. Now he's a paraplegic. She doesn't have a husband, and she needs a lot of money, and you don't earn much as a doctor. So she found the best place she could. Of course, Shannon was a bit of a weirdo, but he paid well. I see. What about her alibi? It's confirmed. The taxi driver picked her up at half past five and took her to the hospital. Her son is at another examination there now. She sat there with him until 8.30. Well, having an alibi is great. Whom did your witness see then? Or he was confused while being drunk? What do you think? Listen, there is a camera by the entrance. If it's working, we'll see everything ourselves. Fine, Misha. Keep working. And let Inga loose on your witness. Maybe she'll pull something out of him using her methods. Okay. I'll let her loose now. The necklace was a wedding present from Jaeger's mother. An individual piece of art. Um, diamonds and emeralds in white gold. Absolutely enchanting. High-class jewelry for a high-class bride of their golden boy. 
and Shannon capped the necklace after the divorce. He did. He just kept it for himself. When I was moving out, he changed the code on the safe and went somewhere on a business trip, played the last mean trick. But you're sure that he was keeping the necklace in his safe all this time? Yes, I'm absolutely sure that it still was there. Shannon had a very smart lawyer. He convinced him that it was better to divorce me peacefully. And yesterday, we agreed to meet at 7 p.m. He had to bring the necklace. But he just didn't come. I called him a couple of times. During the second call, he even picked up, kept silence for a couple of seconds and hung up. And the phone was picked up after 7? Yes. Mila, at that time, Shannon was already dead. Looks like his murdered answered your call. That's it, Cap. Last time Shannon's phone was switched on in this area yesterday at 7.20 p.m. After that, it's a dead end, and now it's out of range. That means it's either switched off or discharged. Your radius is the entire residential district. Can you narrow it down? The radius is the coverage of the nearest tower. Sorry, I can't narrow it down. Only if it's turned on. Okay, I see. I'll go handle the phone calls. Bye-bye. Yes, that's the necklace. How much can it cost? Almost half a million dollars if my appraiser didn't lie. Lieutenant, shouldn't we put out the APB on the necklace? Right? I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Milo, you don't think highly of your ex-husband, do you? It's not about just the necklace stunt, is it? Do you know what it is? What? Yeager, Shannon's small counsel. This is how he called us. Yeager's father convinced him that King is made by his court. So, he was practicing. I understand that Shannon and you were the royal couple and the rest. Kostya das Hedev, the court jester, Yulia Karpenko, my maid of honor, Dima Smiliak, prime minister, and a real king, the best of us, smart, bright and charismatic, funny. Shannon was a mediocrity himself and was using Dima's brain. Dima knew it well, but he didn't care. He knew his own worth. Why is Smiliak's photo absent from the graduation album? Did something happen to him? It did. He was under investigation and later got a prison sentence. A sentence for what? For rape. Yulia Karpenko stated that he raped her at our graduation party at the Shannon Summer Cottage. Captain, we need to know when Mitro Smiliak's prison sentence ends. He was convicted of rape five years ago. Mitro Smiliak. Paroled yesterday at 9 a.m. He served his term in the Barazan Medium Security Prison. Aha. Uh -huh. He was Shannon's classmate and a close friend. As for the rape, it was Yulia Karpanko, a friend of Shannon and Smiliak, who accused the latter. And I'm sure that Smiliak was Shannon's competitor in the fight for Lajanova's heart. Inga, are you a witch or something? Thank you. Well, I finally found something, and you already know it. Your fingerprint was found inside Shannon's empty safe. Besides, Shannon's housekeeper saw you arguing yesterday. I propose for you not to waste everybody's time and nerves and tell us what happened yesterday. Mm. 
Yes, I called him. I did. We... We had a fight. We had a fight, so what? Jaeger threatened me with God knows what, and I wanted to understand what he really had against me. And that was it. I didn't go to his place. You understand that. Your alibi is weak. Not that convincing. I didn't go to his place. Are you sure that any of your friends will confirm your alibi if they find out we're dealing with a murder? A political one. Fine. Fine, fine. I went there. It was around half past six, even closer to seven. Yes, I went there, but he was already dead, got it? He was already dead. Hey, Shannon, why don't you close the door? Hey, is anybody home? You're not afraid. They might take away everything that you had earned with hard work. You got him knit. Son of a bitch. Was there anything else in the safe except for the paperwork? Nothing, just the documents. Did you see his phone by any chance? I didn't. Pay attention. I wasn't thinking about it. Fine, thanks for the sweets. And for helping the investigation. Tell me, were the papers worth it? Were they worth playing spy games? Are you mocking me, Major? Yes, I am. Bye. Listen, I've told you everything. I've signed everything. I do need to go. Irina, a couple more questions, and we'll let you go to your son at the hospital. By the way, your alibi is confirmed? Tell me about that green free-cut dress you wore that morning. Is that your permanent uniform? Yes, it's my permanent uniform. It's a compromise between a housekeeper and a medical worker. Do you wear this dress outside? Of course I don't. Shannon would fire me on the spot if he saw that. All right, heels. Do you wear heels? No. Sometimes, I don't sit all day. My legs swell so much by the evening. So, loafers are my everything. And the last thing. Do you use perfume at work? Perfume? No. Shannon had a phobia. You know that well yourself. Of course. I just had to ask. Thanks, Irina, you helped us a lot. He's not home. Let's wait for him. Maybe let's have a bite. Yeah, let's have a bite. Freeze. Police. You weren't on the outside too long, didn't you? Well, it's a trivial story. There is a girl named Mila Lajanova. Smart, beautiful, from a good family. She was courted by a rich but primitive Jaeger Shanin and smart and handsome Dima Smiliak. From an ordinary family, 
that Trio and two other people were celebrating their graduation. And the following morning a girl named Yulia Karpenko writes a statement to the police that she had been raped, saying that Dima got drunk, started molesting her and she couldn't fight him off. What next? Dima Smiliuk was sentenced to six years of medium security. Yeager married Mila. And what about Yulia? Yulia tried to work at the firm that had already hired Smiliak. However, she didn't stay there for long because it was above her level. As far as I know, she now owns a political PR firm that cooperates with Shannon closely. Smiliak should hold a grudge against Shannon and Karpenko. You know, it seems to me that when all that noise went away, Mila Lajanova didn't believe that Smiliak was guilty. Smiliak should have had good chances with her. Yeah, I think so. <coughs> Listen, Ailing, I had a really long and crappy day. I even had to run after you too. So don't beat around the bush, talk to me. I didn't kill anybody. And the breeze blew Shannon's phone into your apartment. Yes. I took his phone. But I didn't kill anybody. What about the necklace? What necklace? An emerald one, from the safe. I'm neither a robber nor a murderer. I came there at half past six. Yeager was already dead. And the safe was open. I didn't even. Look inside. So you don't need money, do you? You didn't need anything for happiness except for his phone. And the photo of your beloved from the album of the happy competitor, shit. You're a real drama hero. I'm neither a robber. Nor a murderer. I took the phone to find. Yuya Karpenko's number. I couldn't, it was password protected, and then it ran out of juice. He looks bad. Tuberculosis. Closed form. Yeah, when he came to Shannon looking like this, Jaeger must have pooped his pants out of fear. But actually, we don't have anything on him. That motive and opportunity. But we only have a phone as evidence. We didn't even find the missing photo from the album in his apartment. Do you remember me saying that the entire crime scene reeks of soap opera? And? The same goes for that stolen photo. Why did Smiliak need to steal Mila's college photos? I'm sure he has an entire set of photos like those at home, just like Shannon. Listen, I understand you. You are sure that Shannon and Karpenko set you up. He married your girl while you got tuberculosis in prison. Shannon was the first to come. He took out the gun. You struggled. The first shot was accidental. You were protecting yourself. You're a smart guy. You know that it would be better for you to sign a full confession. Why delay it? He is not our subject. Do you feel sorry for him? Only logic, Major, sir. Smilia could get emotional and shoot Shannon, but he wouldn't stay to watch him bleed. He would empty the whole magazine into Shannon. I didn't kill him. He could kill. Probably. They ruined the guy's life. On the other hand, what's smoking? He has tuberculosis. Tuberculosis, by the way. As for tuberculosis, by the way, I'm not talking to you. Yes. So, Mitro, when you found out that Yulia Karpenko got your job and Shane and married Mila, you couldn't believe in such betrayal because Yulia and Jaeger were your close friends. 
Therefore, as soon as you were released, you went to Shannon to clear everything up and to know where is Yulia Karpenko, the one responsible for your prison sentence. Am I right so far? You are. You first came to Shannon around four. You didn't stay there for long. He threw you out almost immediately. Yes, he didn't even shake my hand. As if I was a leper. Then he said that he was busy. I asked him where Yulia was, and he said that he didn't. No. Hello, Andri. Relax, Major. Your fighting dog made my day. Right. What is her name? Motia. Matilda. This is the way, but let's get down to business. What do you have? Then you met a friend who told you about something, and you went to Shannon for the second time. Who did you meet, Dima? Your classmate. Maybe a teacher. It was our dean's deputy, a lovely grandpa. He always was worried about me. And while I was in prison, he came to visit me twice. Was he glad to see you? Yes, we both were glad. I asked him how Yulia was doing. He told me that she was, with Jaeger. Well, I decided to come back and look in the eyes of a person that I considered to be my friend. You came back around. Half past six. Yes, the gate was open. I hit the door with my fist, it turned out to be open too. I came inside, saw Yeager lying there with the gun beside him, and the safe was wide open. I realized that I should leave. If somebody saw me there, they would think that I did it. On my way out I noticed a phone on the table. I decided to take it to look for Yulia's phone number. Didn't you want to look for Mila? No, I didn't. <coughs> but you answered the phone call. <coughs> yes, I wanted to hear her voice. All right. Well, thank you for the sincere conversation. Wait. Did you believe me? Of course I did. And Mila believes you too. Or rather, she doesn't believe that you could do what you were accused of five years ago. <coughs> well, well done. Great work. Yeah, now we can charge Smilia. I wouldn't hurry with that. Why? Because Inga believes that it wasn't him, and I agree with her. Then keep Smilik in detention for now, and you go on digging, Major. If you think that it wasn't him, look for the real murderer and do it fast. And what did you decide with Terran? I'll leave him. For now, he and Terran Tai found common ground already. As you wish. It's you who has to work with him. Don't make yourself a new headache. And remember, he also has to keep working with Shvak. And you know his attitude towards snitches. Oh, I remember that. I do. Seems like our kind of dog. Take it away. Did they tell you when they'll return your car? They called in the afternoon and said that I may come for it any time. There was a bug inside, and some GPS device in the trunk. The guys said it was really high-end. I asked them to leave everything as is. Your phone was bugged too. He equipped you well. We'll have to check the apartment tomorrow. Listen, kid, the traffic police send me. 
a recording from a camera from my rise the next to Shannon's house, where the witness allegedly saw somebody. Aya watched it, but the recording was bad. You can see a Mazda in the yard, and a broad in something green is walking past. Can you? Take a look. First, Michaelo, I'm not a kid, but spider. Okay. Second, did you look at the clock? Stop whining. Do it quick. Only rabbits breed quickly. Fine, give me the drive and I'll watch it at home with some beer. Okay. I'll go to my daughter at the hospital then. Fine. Bye, Pavlik. Goodbye. Jaeger did call me yesterday around 4. We only talked for a couple of minutes. I was busy. Why did he call then? Excuse me. I'll call you back. He was very agitated. He said that Dima Smiljik visited him unexpectedly and, as far as I understood, he behaved quite aggressively. Aggressively? Did he try to fight him, or threaten him, or demanded money? I don't know about fighting, but I think Jaeger either gave or promised him the money. I don't know the details, but Dima said, I will have my revenge on you for setting me up. Did you really set him up? Come on. I wouldn't embarrass myself like that. What else did Shannon say? Um, that was it. He said to be careful. He means Smiljik, right? He didn't say that, but... But I understood him that way. What about Stepanik's witness? Did you pull anything useful out of him? No, just the same, just after. 5.30 he saw an unknown blue car in the yard. And he saw a woman from the back, tall plump, with dark hair. Dressed in something green that looked like Tishko's uniform. Her hair was done, and she was on heels, looked like high heels. Also, he paid attention to the specific aroma of her perfume, something zesty, like lemon, grapefruit or orange. But we know that it wasn't Tishko. I think it happened like this. Smiljik didn't ask Shainan for money. Maybe Karpenko could come to him, and Shainan could demand her to leave the country to lie low. And she demanded Mila's necklace for that. Shannon opened the safe and took out not a necklace but a gun. And threatened her. She is the skittish type. And by the way, she fits the profile of our subject like no other. Anyway, Spider worked his magic on a drive from the road camera. We can't see the woman's face, but we have seen the license plate number of that car in the yard. Did you find the owner of the car? For sure. The owner is Yulia Karpenko. She parked there at 5.40 and left at 6.20. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. Where is Yulia? You just missed her. She left for the airport 40 minutes ago. Right. She's going to New York. The flight is in three hours. Is it Yulia's dress? It is. What perfume aroma is it? So strong. Grapefruit, lemon. It's a new one. Eau de France. It's very strong and long-lasting. Tell me, did you book her tickets? Yes. What is the flight number? LO754. Thanks, Sergi. Well, Major, everything's fine. I met Mr. Cervoni. We are going to the car. We'll be at the office in an hour. Run right back to the registration desk now. Flight LO754 to New York. Karpenko has a business class ticket. We need to stop her.
Don't approach her. Let the security service search her. They have every right to do that. She has Shannon's necklace on her. I got it. On my way. Ilya, we'll have to stick around for a bit. What's going on? We are going back to meet your old friend. Vera, do you smoke? Of course I don't. These are for Yulia. She smokes very rarely. I only bring her some when she asks, not to tempt her. What cigarettes does she smoke? Cigarillos. Aha. Uh -huh. Come with me if you'd be so kind. What is the problem? We need to clear some security issues. We won't delay you. Come this way. What is there? My personal jewelry. I have the right to carry it. Open it. Is that it? Can I go now? Madame Karpenko, I'm afraid you're facing indefinite weather delays. And give the stolen necklace back. Why? Why stolen? It was, it was Shannon's present. We, we were lovers when he divorced. That's enough. Yeager didn't have any women last year. Because of his phobias. Well, he had big problems with potency. Do you know what's bad? A good lawyer can clear Yulia Karpenko. He may build his defense on panic. Say, she came to Shannon, he was shouting at her, freaking out. She came without a gun, and he demanded her to leave the country. Took out the gun. Only we know that she was having a smoke looking over dying Shannon. But in court, this fright might work. Such a pity. I'll talk with her. Wait for the lawyer. She won't say a single word without him. She doesn't need to say anything. I'll talk. Well, I won't talk without my lawyer. Okay, no problem. We'll wait for your lawyer. I had a friend at the university. Not really a friend. I was like your Mila Lajanova, a queen bee. And she was a gray mouse. She was running my errands, bringing us pastries from the canteen. It may look like just a photo, but it's obvious. A queen and her court. Look at the boys looking at her. And you were a gray mouse, a nobody. It is frustrating, I agree. You're trying to copy her even now. You made the same hairdo and the makeup. But they don't suit you. The psychological traumas inflicted in youth are the deepest. I say that as a psychologist. I'm only interested in one thing. What did you fare psychologically to stay in the queen's shadow forever? Huh? By the way, never asked my maid of honor about that. I didn't think about it. But you lost anyway for the most part. You screwed up. Yes, you made Mila and Smiliak break up, and Shannon promised you patronage for that. But what did you get in the end? Mila is a beautiful and rich heiress. Look, she has half of a million worth of emeralds just on her neck. And you? When you get out of here, nobody will even call you a mouse. Get lost. And Shannon, 
must flipped out when you demanded Mila's emeralds for your emigration and silence. I wonder what he said to you. Was it something courteous? Something like, emeralds don't suit you? No. He was too agitated. To be polite, most likely he simply laughed. It must have brought him to tears. He wasn't laughing anymore while rolling under my feet and coughing blood. And your queen's shadow will show what she's capable of. Right. Hello. Goodbye, Michaelo. Have a nice day. Inga, can I talk to you for a moment? Yes, of course. I heard that you come from a family of doctors. Yes, my parents have been running a private clinic for 20 years. There is one thing, you... Something happened, Lara. No, Lara's fine. The doctors say she will be discharged soon. It's me who needs help. Could, could you recommend me a doctor that can fix my alcohol problems? I mean, for good. Of course. My father is a great expert in this field. I'll give you his number and warn him that you'll be calling in the evening. Okay? Yes, thank you. Goodbye. Hey, where are you running? Stop. Come on, stop. Go have a piss, not the... <coughs> well, here you go. I hope you'll figure it out. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Where are you going? Thanks. Good luck. Goodbye. What did he want from you? Rather, I wanted something from him. I mean, Milo Lojanova. She asked to give Smiliak her number and tell him that she was hoping that he calls her. I don't know, maybe Smiliak will do fine after all. Some coffee. Maybe. It doesn't look that good. Why? Because there are neither fingerprints nor DNA on your gifts. Well, they have been touched on the outside a lot, but inside, it seems that he lovingly wiped every apple. It's not unexpected. Yan is too smart to slip up over such a minor thing. Why Yan? He told me to call him so. We don't have any other name, and we need to call him something. Fine, let us call him so. Well, the package and apples come from an ordinary shop. The only lead is the photo. There is a stamp on the back side. Judging from it, the photo was printed stateside. I'll try to ask my friend when and where the portrait was printed. Fine. And we'll try to trace him when he calls you again. Do you have any ideas? Of course I do. I must try to make him talk. I lack information to create a profile. I'll have to play his ego. Provoke him, tease him to make his tongue slip. It'll be a clue for us. You know, I really don't like the word. Provoke. I saw too many provocations. The last was an hour ago when you nearly got your throat torn out. But it wasn't. Because Sergi and I were close by. Well, that means Sergi and you will always need to be close by. Okay. I must go, it's late. Stop. Tell me, which one is from your stateside friend? Here, it's an apple. He knows how much I love them. Why do you think that it was him who sent me a bead for the bracelet? Because you're not taking it off. If I wanted to make you a present, I'd choose something like this too. Episode 9 
I'm sorry for being so startled. I just didn't expect to see anybody here. It's me who should be sorry for scaring you. I came to see if everything was all right. It's your first time here, and you went away for so long. But now I can see that I shouldn't be worried. You're a great swimmer. No, it's not my first time here. I just went away for a long time. Are you the new guy here? Because I haven't seen you before. Yes, I've been working here only for a month. I decided to combine work and sports. I'm Alexi. Inga. Nice to meet you, Inga. Likewise. Okay, I won't interfere. Come on, Inga. Don't be so stubborn. Keep me company. Stop talking me into it. I won't go. I'm too lazy. But do your best, though. A national team scout isn't coming here to take a look at me. I'll try. Sit on the bench, at least. That's it. Enough loafing, Igor. Go towards the great junior champion future. Did you let Maslov go to the pool on his own? Aren't you afraid that somebody will steal him? Why should I be scared? I'll be glad for him if he finds somebody nice. He is my best friend. Stefan, you're so smart, but in reality, you're a fool. He is in love with you? Listen, maybe you're making this up on purpose. You're keeping him on the leash with your friendship. Listen, did you try to write novels? Ho, oh, Alia, you're wasting such an imagination. Bitch. Can you imagine? They found him in the water. The cops say it was an accident. He drowned. Come on, Igor swam like a fish. And she, the boys heard that she threw a tantrum in the principal's office. Grief and all that. She was standing him up, and now she's suffering. Listen, maybe he must love. You know, committed suicide. Maybe Stefan drove him to that. Inga, you're a star yet again. You could have boasted to your neighbors. Radishni just can't forget about you. He dedicated an entire issue to you today. For the second time already? I'm so glad. Our viewers are eagerly watching the meteoric career of an incredible woman from the FBI who came to reinforce the homicide desk of Capitol's police directorate. Looks like her uncle, Major General Strzok, helped her with that. Inga isn't just promoting herself using the police's biggest cases, but also she's establishing close relations with the homicide. Desk head, Major Misenko. Does the gallant major know about unlucky admirers of the beautiful FBI agent who died last year under mysterious circumstances? One after another. The first victim of the passion towards the black widow was her American fiancé. One espresso, no sugar. 
That was quite dashing, Inga. I can feel that FBI grip. I am happy for you. Let's get down to business right away. I insist that you leave my team alone. Stop mocking those guys. It's not their fault that you don't like me. And you're not asking me to leave you alone? Will it help? Of course. It won't. You're a tasty morsel. When I mention you on air, my ratings go up. Ratings go up and the money's flowing. Mr. Radishny, enough of mocking. Do you realize that it may end up in court? Do I need to tell you about responsibility for slander? Inga, you need to play poker with a face like that. Yep. It's all bluff. There won't be any lawsuits. Do you know why? Why? Because the courts will screw over your beloved uncle and your precious team even more than I do on air. Clever people told me so, but I didn't believe them. There's your weak spot. The team. Tell me who told you about it. I'm interested. Well, you know better who knows as good as anybody. Have a nice day. Watch my broadcasts. I will enjoy that. As if I had nothing to do. Our heroine is not only beautiful but modest too. Something about men, suicides. Today in the morning, Inga asked me to concentrate my attention not on her personally but on the police's teamwork. Come on. Come on. And about your affair. Mom, come on. Why are you? Eat. The pickles. About the affair, is that also a lie? Of course, it's a lie. Mom. Or is there something? Oleg. Mom. Shame, such an interesting lass. Unlike your usual fairies. Well, can't say that. They all look the same, like they were made on a conveyor belt. Yeah. Oleg, yes, I saw it. I am enjoying it too. Aha. Uh -huh. I have a suggestion. Let's discuss it after the weekend. Okay? Aha, uh -huh, great. Bye. Hello. Hello. I wanted to ask you. What do you think about Mr. Radusny's Saturday escapade? It's another portion of empty gossip for the target audience. Why did you meet him and gave him the scoop yourself then? I was wrong there. Aha. Uh -huh. It was a dumb thing to do. Interesting. We have another topic to discuss with Radishny. Shall we? Usually. Morning. I'm also sure that somebody is feeding him info about you. There's too much personal data. The insurance, for example, that was issued stateside. Was your fiancé talking about it? It means it's Yan. On the other hand, why does he need it? He kind of cares for you. And that asshole is flinging mud at you. I'm not sure that Yan is Radashni's source. However, you're wrong about the motive. We don't know Yan's plan. Maybe he has special plans for Radishni. He is playing the part he's needed to play. Yes. The address. And who's the victim? Did he call too? I got it. We're on our way.
Maybe Sergi's right when he calls you a witch. It's unwise to cross your path. Five minutes ago, a well-wisher called the dispatch and strongly urged to inform the homicide desk that there was a murder in Arthur Radishny's apartment. And the body is still there. Whose body? Not Radishny's. That fact evokes conflicting emotions. Come on, get ready. I'll call the guys. It looks like the death occurred during or right after sexual BDSM roll-up lay. The cause of death is strangulation. The time, approximately six to eight hours ago. Sasha, what do you got? Driver's license issued to an Ilona Shevtsova and a business card of an agency. Shall I check it out? Of course, tell me later. Oleg, what? There is a whole arsenal here. Of weapons? Exactly. Oh. Listen, do you like German Arthaus movies? What? Nothing. Listen, does your friend suffer from a disorder like this? God forbid me from having such friends. But it's not his diagnosis. Look at the mess in the apartment. However, somebody does clean here. I think he hires a housekeeper from time to time. The case history shows a blue collar job. It formed a habit of keeping things in order. A sorter, a cleaner, something like that. Do you like it? Oh, Lord! The neighbor next door says that she saw a girl coming to Radishny yesterday. She says she can take a look at the body and see if the recognizes her. It means she's curious. The broad came to him yesterday, almost in the middle of the night. In the middle of the night? When exactly? Well, definitely after midnight. I had a migraine, such a migraine. I felt every step, every rustle as a blow on my head. And that girl was clicking her heels like a horse. I looked in the peephole to see who was prancing around like that. And he opened the door for her. As I live and breathe, did he open the door himself? Who else could it be? Well, I didn't see him, though. I just saw the open door. He lives alone. That Arthur has lost his conscience. So he didn't call the prostitutes before, did he? Of course he did. Such a horn dog. But recently, the same girl was coming over. Quiet as a mouse. She used to come quietly. I wouldn't even hear her. And not so late. Never before Sunday. Never before work. No, never. Did you see him? You said you can identify the body. Yes, of course. Guys, please have a look. Yes, that's her. Yes. Okay. When was the last time you saw Radishny? Last night, around 9. He was just getting into the car. Fine. And you didn't see or hear anybody after that? Maybe you fell asleep. Yeah, like I could. I've had such a migraine. No, nobody came after that broad. I'm sure. Aha. Uh -huh. Sergi, put an APB out for Radishny in his car. And tell Pasha that he needs start looking for Radishny's phone and credit card. Sometime after 8p. 
M. That's it, bye. Tell me, did he strangle that broad? Oh. He's really done at this time. Such a pervert. By the way, I know his housekeeper, Anna. I can see you move the furniture here. No, I didn't choose girls on your website. I know, I don't need that too. Miss, can you stop? Wait, this is the police, and I need to talk to your management. Did they hang up and will pick up now? You should have asked them to send the price list to your email, but you should have done it when you were alone in the office. Oh, I forgot. You played by the rules. Neither boys nor girls interest you. Don't worry. Don't worry, snitchy. Call them again from a different number later. Just formulate your wish before that. What do you want more? Kittens, goats, chicks. Hey. As you were, detectives. Whoever starts a fight in the unit will file a report to be transferred elsewhere. You can go with your childhood complexes and adult psychological traumas to Miss Stefan. She'll tell you where to go. Okay. What about the brothel? Did you arrange a meeting? Let's go and have some coffee, and you'll tell me on the way, Sergi. I mean the table, it's more interesting this way, I guess. You face the common folk now, that's right. And you keep everything under control. Control is our everything. God forbid somebody catches you off guard, right? And you keep wearing your holster. Inga, do you want to say something to me? Yeah. I can see that something is bothering you. And if it's your previous traumas, I think you need to seek help from a specialist. And I think it's none of your business, Inga. If your uncle the general sent you to our desk to pick our brains and snitch if someone got a screw loose, tell him that Captain Spock is absolutely fine. And if I'm not, Inga, then please go. And analyze somebody else in some other place. I've heard you. The address of the brother and ideally contacts of the owners. Write it down, Herr Major. The phone is registered to the 11 Laskava Street. Ha, oh, that's cool. Welcome to the brothel on the Laskava Street. Okay. Fine. Give me five minutes. I'll trace the owners and send everything to the lieutenant. Okay. That's it, bye. Oh, wait, are you still here? I am, I am. Cap asked me to trace that Radishny bastard. His phone can't be reached at the moment. However, his card surfaced in a fancy spot yesterday. I'll send the address to Shpak's email, okay? Why do you hate Radishny so much? Why would I like him? That asshole keeps constantly heaping dirt at our Inga. Don't you know about that? Good man. That's it, bye, later. Anyway, Pasha will send you the contacts now, and you will go there. Yes, fine, Major, sir. What? Can I ask you one question? I'm just curious. How did you find out right away that the victim was a prostitute? Because of SN. Sasha, you. I'll tell you later. It's from a professional point of view. Of course. You'll get coffee and come back to me. I'll get coffee and come back to you. Look at that Lexus, Sergeant. Homicide put out an APB for it. Dispatch, it's the 31st. 
we can see a black Lexus. License plate number I-33166. It's wanted. Police. I didn't do anything. She did it all. Why are you exaggerating? It's all because they are constantly arguing with Taryn lately. Their differences with Taryn are the consequences. However, Lieutenant's report against Captain Taryn Tive became a stress for Captain Spock. I don't know the circumstances of his initial stress. Come on, even more so. Why talk if you don't know it? What dynamics are you talking about? Or was he rude to you? What do his manners have to do with it? I'm telling you as a specialist, his mental state deteriorated. I can see it without knowing his case history. All of it is nonsense. Why? Because a month before your arrival he was attested by our police psychologist. Everything was fine. He was permitted to return to work. Captain Spock suffers from enhanced nervous irritability. He started losing his temper. He demonstrates aggressiveness. Judging from his movements and the traits of his speech, he suffers from chronic insomnia and nightmares. He stopped standing with the back to the door or the windows. He moved his table so that he could see the entire office. Today at the crime scene, when an expert got between him and the door, he asked him to move. Besides, he carries a weapon on him. Specialists call markers like those. Hypervigilance. Shall I go on, Major? Sir? No need to. So, what's with Sergi? What are the conclusions? These symptoms often manifest in patients with post-traumatic disorder. I've already told you about that. By the way, I've noticed it on the first day we met. I know that many officers of the homicide desk are allowed to carry weapons outside of the working hours. Sergi was at his workplace among his colleagues. He was the only person who had a weapon in the holster. Oh, and the dog, yeah. I told him that the dog was left in the darkness in the bathroom without any water. Looks like he was a hostage once or something. He barely survived. Will he be able to work? He will for now, but I'd recommend sending him to an expert, a psychologist. It will be for the better. Yes. Copy that. Radishny was just found not far from his home, in the car, wasted. They are bringing him here. It means he definitely left at 11 p.m., right? Ask me for the fifth time already. I told you that he was leaving. We were closing the kitchen then. Stop asking me about this for a thousand time. I won't confuse his mug for anything. He is on the TV all the time. Also, he comes here often and always pays with a card. He has never left tips once. Does he party with broads? Was he with a broad yesterday? No, he was with some guy yesterday. It must have been an important man. Arthur was crawling around him, even paid his bill. And he's so greedy. Did they leave together? No, the guy was the first to leave. Arthur stayed for about 20 minutes more and bailed too. Well, he pulled himself together and left. Was he very drunk? He didn't drink much, but it got to him. He only had a couple of glasses of wine. But as soon as his buddy left, he somehow deflated. Do your cameras work? Can you show me last night's recordings? Let's go. Well, my business is absolutely legal. My clients are respected businessmen. We also get a lot of foreigners. They want to take a walk around the capital with a nice, educated, and polite lady guide. They do. It's their right. And then, if they somehow grow to like each other and make some deals afterwards, it's their personal business. We're all adults here. Fine, Margarita. Let's talk like adults. Sure. You tell us everything. About Radishny and we, in our turn, will close our eyes to some nuances of your services. Fine. Um, Radishny is one of our regular clients. He has been calling girls, well, once a week for about a year. Did the girls complain about him? Was he calling some specific girls? No, nobody was complaining, and nobody was refusing to service him. Besides, he paid more for us and... Was he calling some specific girls? 
In the beginning, he was changing the girls. But after some time, he was only asking for Lola. Did Ilona ever come to him before? No. Actually, Ilona has never been with him. I was very surprised to hear that he called for her. Why? Well, you'll get it when you'll see Lola. Oh, Major. At last. I thought that you'd be testing your psychological tricks on me until the night. Why until the night? Let's do without the theatrical pauses. Sure. I know all your tricks. Better bring my lawyer here. I won't talk without him. Your lawyer is on his way. So far, I'm only interested in one question. Why did you spend the night in your car? I had a few and fell asleep. I understand. However, I don't understand your logic. Yesterday you had a drink at the Clio. You came back home. Called the brothel. Got yourself a lady from there. The call from your city phone was traced. You waited for her and let her in. Your neighbor saw that. Then, you decided to have some fresh air and fell asleep in the car. All that while one of your enemies played with that lady in your own bed and strangled her. I have a more logical version of what had happened. You got so carried away that you came to your senses with a body by your side. To consider your further actions, you had some more, and then fell asleep in the car. You didn't even think that someone from your entourage would snitch to the police so fast. To set you up, I wonder, by the way, how do you like to be a victim of a secret illegal surveillance? Does this role suit you well? It does. Hello. I need to talk to my client. As you wish. Hello. Hello, Roman. Talk to me then. Usually I don't moonlight with clients. It's safer to work with the firm. However, I urgently needed money. And I know Arthur well. He is tender and harmless. So you were not scared of him? Taking his taste into account. He could overdo it in haste. No way. The main thing was for me not to overdo it. Why would he? He would crawl by my feet, lick my boots. You'd have to step on his fingers a couple of times and slap him on his bottom, and that's it. He's happy. Was it ever the other way? Was he ever slapping you? Or tied you up and strangled you in the process? I love innocent men. They are such a rarity nowadays. It's very unusual for the SN partners to change their preferences. Almost never. Why did he choose me? He wanted a small and tender girl to trample him in the dirt. Do you mean yourself? Why are you interested in these details? Because you're colleague. Ilona Shevsova was found strangled and handcuffed to the bed in Radishny's apartment. Stop it. It can't be. We usually saw each other on Sunday afternoons, last week too, and Ilona is not his type. He must have come to like her. Or the contrary, dislike her? Okay, thanks for the sincere conversation, Lilia. You know, he couldn't have strangled her. Due to my job, I'm interested in psychology. Clients are different, you know, and it's better know their kinks right away. 
Arthur, he's used to mix people with dirt at his work. And in sex, he compensated for that. Because he is weak by nature. He could kill, but only like a rat that was backed into a corner. But not like that. Well, thanks a lot. Have a nice day. Let's go. Look at the modern prostitutes. So nice and educated. She should talk with Inga. Lieutenant. If you want to meet in private, you have my number. I won't take money from you. It will be purely for the Sol. And generous. You heard my client. Last night was talking to his source in the bar up until midnight or around it. He had a bit too much in the car. He felt that it was dangerous to drive in that state. He parked the car and fell asleep. Your driving license will be withdrawn for three years. And according to the CCTV cameras and the bartender's testimony, your client left the place around 11 p.m. And around midnight, he let the deceased into his apartment. I didn't let her in. I didn't even call for her. I wasn't at home at all. Who else has the keys from your apartment? My housekeeper does. Great. We're talking to her right now. Maybe she will confirm that she let the girl in or gave the keys to somebody. Your friend here can't control his tongue. Roman, can't you see what is going on? They're taking revenge on me. Because I wasn't afraid to tell the truth for not being afraid to tell the truth about them and their FBI broad. Quiet, quiet. I beg your pardon. But it's all right. We'll see how he'll do in detention. He behaves as if he's looking for trouble. It doesn't seem like him at all. Do you know what he said to officers that arrested him? I didn't do that. She did it herself. Herself what? Why are you so upset? You have to be glad that this asshole set himself up. He won't have time for you now. Strangled herself. Captain, do the cameras from the bar show who he was meeting here? Their table is right at the border of the dead zone. This idiot has seen clearly why the other guy only shows the back of his head sometimes. Who booked the table? The barman said it was the other guy. Why do you care? I wonder what source made him wasted so timely. What do you mean timely? So what? Are you happy now? Do you think you've got the dirt on me now? A famous journalist is into SN. Will you leak that to the press? Why? Nobody cares about SN nowadays. However, scarfing or strangling for the sake of sexual pleasure would be something the tabloids would die for. Did you overdo it with alcohol? Strangled your girl stronger than usually. Didn't you know that in such cases, it's recommended not to tie the partner up too strong so that he or she could escape, just in case? No, you didn't? What scarfing? What bondage? I've never been into that. Yes, Dasha. We're on our way. You'll stay in detention for now. There are many guys like you there, with special interests. Do you drink rum only before the SM? I don't warm up with rum. That booze is for the proletarians. I see. Thanks. And you must be. Anna. Anna. You were cleaning the house once a week after the weekend. Yes. Did you see his toys? Did he use them often? You know, I... out of the loop. I came in on Mondays. And all that shit was thrown around the pantry. I collected all that, washed it and put them in place. And the next Monday, I'd find the same obscenity. Looks like her uncle, Major General Strizek, helped her with that. He did. Tell me, did you see his girls? Well, these ones, for example. I. 
definitely didn't see this one, but I saw this one. On the photo, it fell out of the drawer. They were together on it. Was the girl tied by any chance? I wasn't looking that close. She was standing over him with a whip. Thanks, Anna. The last question. Tell me, what booze did Radishny drink? Red wine. Expensive, from France. What about? Stronger drinks? Rum or whiskey? No. He didn't even keep them at home. He believed that strong alcohol was bad for health. He cared for his health, let me tell you. Thanks a lot, Anna. You can go. Oh, sure. Thank you. Goodbye. 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 Why did you ask about his booze? Inga asked me to find out. She didn't tell me why. You may start getting acquainted. Establish new friendships. They may be useful for work. Why do we have a writer here now? I am a famous journalist. The pigs set me up. Yeah, yeah. A victim of the regime. We're all like that here, one way or another. I know this sucker. A journalist indeed. You write shitty articles, and you throw mud at everybody on the TV. You finally talk too much, didn't you, sucker? As I thought, the cause of death is asphyxia. Time is between midnight and 1 a.m. DNA. The murder weapon is her stocking, only hers. The killer was in gloves. There are traces of talcum powder on her body. There is no damage on the body. I can understand why she wasn't resisting when he was handcuffing her to bed. It was their game. But why didn't she resist when he put the gloves on and started to strangle her? I don't get it. What's in her blood? Absolutely nothing. No traces of chemicals. Alcohol. None. There are some greens in her stomach. Looks like a salad and a bit of proteins. I think it's sperm. However, all that was three hours before death. They had sex with a condom, right? You see, looks like she didn't have sex before death. I see. What is it, Inga? At the crime scene, you withdrew into yourself and you're not coming back. I think I can assume why she didn't resist. There's a drug called Trilemity. I don't know how it's called here. In small doses, it's a medicine against the Parkinson's disease. It's usually prescribed when a person is seasick. If the dose of the trilemity is large, a person becomes complacent. You can do anything with the victim, literally, usually, it's added to drinks or sprayed on the face. It absorbs immediately and can't be found afterwards. Well, it's an interesting theory, but it doesn't fit the version of a murder in a drunken state and a fit of sexual passion. Maybe Sergi's right when he calls you a witch. I don't think that this was a crime of passion, and I don't think that Radishni is the murderer. Let me tell you once more, it's a very bold conclusion, very. The meeting with the source, sudden sleep at the wheel, apples, rum, absence of sex, the victim's empty stomach, and an anonymous call. Let's do it one by one. One moment. Yes. Oleg, it's about the fingerprints from Radishny's apartment. Great, we're listening. Three sets. Radishny's, his housekeepers and well, the victims. Maybe something else. DNA. None. Nothing. Everything is spotless. There are no fingerprints on the linens, bed or even handcuffs. What about the bottle of rum? Or a plate with apples? Nothing. Well, if you're interested. Two glasses from the bar were used. 
They were washed, but there's some residue liquid there. We can check it out. Thanks, Grigori. You're welcome. Goodbye, Major. Good luck. There it is. Another piece in favor of my version. What version? Maybe it's time to stop playing charades. It's Yan. It's his game. And it's Radishni's final scene. It means he is out. It's clear as day. I just can't see why Major is delaying the charges. The dude doesn't have an alibi. He blurted out to the patrol officers the girl was killed in his crib and in his favorite SN style. There are some issues here. Why didn't he call his regular? And why didn't he play in bed as usual? Easy. The guy wanted some fresh thrills with a new broad. Right? When he saw what he had done, he got scared. He was so wasted that he couldn't take the body out. Haven't you seen enough heroes like those? They are all heroes when they kill somebody. And afterwards he's sitting there and whining. And they run because it's scary for them to look at the body. Inga has another version. Inga likes to complicate everything. Of course, her scientific method is very useful. But sometimes, it just gets in the way. I don't know. I also paid attention to rum and apples, but it's not an argument. It's not an argument separately, but all together, they fit the picture. The one Yan wanted to create for us. This murder is full of discrepancies and mismatches. However, he left us a lot of hooks to help us to notice and try to understand him. And what do we have? An open bottle of rum that Radishni doesn't drink, and two washed glasses. Maybe the killer drank from one of it and added some drug in the other for the victim. Radishni meets his mysterious contact, drinks a lot of wine there and suddenly blacks out before reaching his house. Do you think Yan spiked his drink? I think so. Yan wanted to be sure that Radishni wouldn't come home. That's why he left the meeting a bit earlier, to check whether he blacked out or not. And then he went to his house. What did you want to say about sex? Yes, Lola told our guys the truth. That sexual roles in SN are very stable, just as the partner's type. It tells us Yan deliberately called a girl of different type for Radishni. And he killed her not as a mistress but as a slave. Well, and the presence of two washed glasses and gloves exclude the version of a murder in a fit of passion. Besides, all of Radishni's toys were clear. Yes, because nobody was using them. There was no sex at all. Why? There were no sexual games. Yan isn't interested in prostitutes. He considers himself to be above it. Consider the secret part of our investigation finished. We need to tell it to our guys. They need to why Radishni is not the murderer. But what did he do yesterday to be ready to stay in the slammer as a murder suspect? Episode 10 Mom, hello. Why are you calling me so late? Is everything all right? And when should I call you, daughter? You're basically spending nights at your work. We're fine. How are you? I am great. Are you sure you're fine? I told you, yes. The news said that you've arrested that mischievous reported. Did he really kill a girl? Mom. You know that I can't discuss these things with you. And don't pretend to be Madame Naive. It doesn't suit you. Fine, I won't. Are you going to come by? Of course. Maybe this week. No, I can come by tomorrow at lunchtime. Okay. Great. I'll definitely be home. I'll be waiting. Oh, wait. Mom, my boss is calling. I'll call you back. Bye. Hello? Hi, Princess. Did you miss me? I did. But I didn't. Is this your real voice? Do you like it? I see you became bolder. Stopped hiding your voice. Maybe you'll ask me out soon. I like your sass. And our date is gonna happen very soon. I'm ready. What do you need from me this time? I want to know what you decided to do with Radishni. What could have I decided? 
I know one thing for sure, you set him up. I, I gave you a real chance to get rid of that bastard once and for all. You don't even have to do anything. Just don't stop that fool from drowning. He is not a murderer. Forget about your principles. And I, nobody has the right to bother you. Of course, nobody except you, right? Is that what you meant? Only you have the right to meddle with my life. Yes, you're right. Now you have to decide. Sweet dreams. Damsel in distress. I'm in trouble. Night, my ass. So you think that Yan had set Radishni up to take revenge on him for bothering Inga? Isn't the scheme too complicated? Exactly. If her maniac really wanted to punish that asshole, he could just simply whack him and then call her to boast about it. But go through all these motions. I don't know, what if you didn't read his signs? And sent Artem to jail for murder. It would be too easy for Yan. To just kill the guy. Yan is smart. He watches everything from the sidelines. He feels his power more acutely this way. He is a manipulator, and I am sure that the subject studied basis analysis. He correctly evaluated the capabilities of each player of our team and left us just the right number of traces to notice. You're talking as if you're impressed with that psycho. Enough. Hunches are a good thing, but Radishni doesn't have an alibi and has a body in his apartment. When he realizes that he had been set up, he'll give us everything about his source. Sergi, in the meanwhile look what he was doing last night after 11 p. M. Wait. I don't get it. Major. Are you now ordering me to find Radishny's alibi for the time of the hooker's murder? Yes. Bloody hell. Well, I've... I've never looked for the murderer's alibi, that's for sure. Listen, Major, I'll go through Radishny's phone and computer in the meantime. If that psycho was feeding him info about Inga, maybe I'll find some leads. Do it, Pasha. Yeah, yeah. Call me right away if you find something. Okay. Pavlik Spider. Incoming call. Burning the midnight oil. Not on my own will. Listen, Major. Inga called about 20 minutes ago. Fine. What's up with her? Her pocket psycho called her. After the call, she asked me to trace it. Okay. Did you do it? The signal is encrypted up to the eyeballs. I've seen things like those only a couple of times. Listen. You're a genius or not? Stop rocking the boat, Herr Major. If I started right away while they were talking, I could have tried. But now, I'm sorry. I'll work my magic on Inga's phone tomorrow. Okay. Fine. We'll see tomorrow. Wait, Major. I got into Radishny's laptop. So, did you find anything there? Of course, I did. Well, looks like he received a virus with delayed activation. It must have been in one of the last emails. The hard drive is wiped clean. It's unpleasant to realize it, but your Yan is... disgustingly good. Okay. See you tomorrow. Bye. What's up, old lady? Dumplings are expensive nowadays.
Hello. Good morning. How are you, Inga? How am I? I have a chronic lack of sleep, but looks like it became a habit. And what did you decide? Will we save this idiot? Mikhail, what kind of question is it? I didn't expect to hear it from you. That idiot got a pound of your flesh from the looks of things. Maybe he didn't kill the girl, but he did things that weren't but better. Maybe we'll leave it all as it is. With the evidence planted by your psycho, a good prosecutor will put him away for a long time. So we don't need to stop him from drowning, right? What? Yan advised me to do the same. He called me last night and told me to not interfere with Radishni's murder conviction. But I think that we can't do it. Because if we just let it be, it will mean that Yan won. Get it? He'll gain an edge on me. If he talks about you, you'll suffer the same fate. I think I shouldn't have gotten you involved in all this. It's my personal issue. I have to figure it out on my own. Stop bullshitting, Inga. When my daughter was in trouble, I didn't notice you leaving me on my own. You're a member of the team if you haven't understood that yet. And we don't leave our people behind. We'll get that freak behind bars. And we'll begin with cracking that idiot's case. So come on, let's go. We have to work. Listen, Herr Major, is Inga with you? She is not picking up. Get her to me with her phone fast. What happened? I was thinking about how to catch that hacker. And I came up with an idea. Listen, it will take a lot of time to explain. Let Inga come to me with the phone. I'll explain everything to her. Fine. I hope you'll explain everything to me too. I will, of course I will. Do I have a choice? I will install everything on herself first. See you. See you. I'll give her instructions and treat her to a cup of coffee. At a boy. Later. Um, let's go. You'll have a cup of coffee. Shall we? Let's go. Good morning. Morning. Please. Captain, sir, what are we going to do now? I don't understand what to write in Radishny's case file. A suspicion of a setup done by the English Stefan Stalker. That's nonsense. Are you out of your mind, Lieutenant? Keep quiet about Inga. And her stalker too. We need to move quietly and dig up where that idiot went after the dive. Do you believe Yen? Did the murder at Radishny's? Of course, I have no doubts that he is stalking Inga. But to kill a stranger just to set up some asshole because he was bothering Inga? Lieutenant, take a seat sometime and count just how many people this Yana fed while he's stalking Inga. And those are only the ones that he boasted about to her. I really have no idea how she managed to live with it for two years. Just don't feel sorry for her. If it was that bad, she would tell everything to her friends at the FBI long ago. Not to us. Cut the crap, Sergi. Did you wake up on the wrong side of the bed? And next you'll say that she made it all up. I won't say that. But all of this is very weird. Being as smart as she is, Inga hasn't found who it might be. Besides, this maniac is very weird. A regular a maniac would offer long ago. And that's all she wrote. That's the thing. As far as I understand, he doesn't want to kill her. He wants to control her life. Anyway, listen, I... Don't give a damn about Inga's incognito maniac. But I do care about Radishny's case. I'll go and talk to him my way. And maybe this case will fall apart. The one with the setup. Yan told us to step aside and enjoy watching Radishni's suffering. He wants to have fun. What a bastard. What else did he say? He said that he was the only one who had the right to interfere with my life, and that we'll have a date next. 
like that? Yes. His mental pathology is progressing. He became bolder, stopped hiding his voice. It's logical that a meeting will be the next step. Are you sure that you didn't recognize his voice? Of course I am. Well, I would have doubts if he was whispering, but he talked in a normal voice. Don't worry, we'll get him. I know, but I don't want to stop my life because of him. Way to go. That's right. Okay, we'll go to Pasha now. He came up with something for your phone. Yes, it's Vita. We're on our way. I'll take it. Come on. Okay. Look. This is a fad. That's what I call it. How does it work? When you get a call from an unknown or hidden number. My server connects to your call automatically. As soon as you pick up. Got it so far. Yes. Next. My server will record all your phone calls and I'll try to trace them. I give you my word that I won't eavesdrop. Spider's honor. Only if you ask me yourself. I'll only check your logs. I am not even gonna ask about the logs. It's a register. It's easy. There is a register of external events and a log of systems work. E2 to E4. That's it. I still don't get it. Why do you have to use the fat on all the calls? Let me put it this way. Because it's better to overreact than underreact. Your stalker is a technologically savvy dude. I experienced it last night. He can encrypt the signal so well that you'll get a call from one of your contacts while in reality, it will be this twat. So, let's play it safe, just in case. I got it. Okay, thanks a lot. You're welcome, Inga. But still, I will not rest. Why do you call it a fad? Why not? I like it. It's a nice name. Fine. Thanks again. Just like you. So beautiful. An old-time friend called me. Radishny's lawyer is prancing around to change the preventive measure for him. What do we have on Radishny, for real? You got it, Major. Their decision largely depends on that. What do you have? Radishny's case is intricately connected with the of the Inga stalker. Report. Yeah, we need to keep this Radishny in the slammer. You get more flexible. I'll explain my opinion to the court, of course. Radishny doesn't have many trump cards. Therefore, nobody will be surprised when house arrest won't be granted. I think his lawyer understands it well. No doubt about it. Roman is an experienced lawyer. That's it, you're free to go. Oh, Major, what about Inga? She's hiding from me. She doesn't come to her parents. Does she manage? She does. And she works great. I hope so. Go. Radushni, go out. Forward. I can see you've gotten the hang of it. Way to go. Get used to it. I don't have to. I'll be released tomorrow. Yeah, everybody says that. Move it. Oh, this is what I need. Hello. Captain. How's it going? I don't understand the question. Oh, you mean my health. I had the shit in the morning, and I have a minor headache. Are you afraid that I am not up for the interrogation? You need to go to the doctor. You have been very jumpy recently, and I can see that you didn't get any sleep. So snitch on me to the major, like we like to do in the unit lately. Captain. But not your holster at least, because you're going to interrogate a murder suspect. Ну
Well, you pug. Will you continue to deny everything heroically or are you honest only after SN? We can arrange it. All we have to do is warn the guys in the cell. Don't take me to the cell. I'll sue you for insulting me. Don't call me like that. Like what? Pug. Sorry. I thought you like it, that it brings back good memories. And yeah, sue me. File a suit when you'll be tried for your girlfriend's murder. To kill two birds with one stone. I didn't kill her. I wasn't even home. Fine. Where were you, then? Ha. Ah. You're a weird person. Pooh, sorry. Artur. You're saying that you didn't kill her, and you weren't at home. And I'm ready to believe you, but tell me where you really were at the time. Provide an alibi to the investigation, or write a full confession. If you don't want to go away for life, of course. Everything is going according to the plan. Our heroic lover believes that his preventive measure will be changed. And it won't be changed. No. I've just talked with the general. He complains that you forgot about your family. Right, right. I wanted to ask you take an hour off. I promised to come to mom for lunch. May I? Take two. Thanks. Okay, where the fad? Mom, hi. You have a perfect sense of time. I'm standing by the car to go to you. Are you serious? Yes. I will believe it if you come right away. I am on my way. Warm the soup up. Okay, see you. Okay, the fad. Yeah. Hello, Inga. Well, everything's great. Everything works. You had a call from Yur. Inga, why do you need to check me? Well, you said to check all the phone numbers. So, I... Don't overdo it. Nobody will find out my number anyway. <laughs> she does like me. <sighs> Stay seated. Where's Stepanik? He said that we needed to stop fooling around. He's right. Old school. Did he tell you where he went? Okay. We need to get some work done too. We need to trace Radishny's route and find out where he really went after the dive. That it was time to work the case for real. I already checked the car yesterday. It's fancy but there are no gadgets in it, like a dash cam or a satna, or they were taken off. It speaks in our favor. It means he's done something. It means he has something to hide. Push him. I want to model the best route from the dive to his house to the house while considering where his car was found. And check the incident reports in that neighborhood. Fine. Get to work. Oh. What? Sergi, what do you have? A soap opera and agony. I got out of there to not burst into tears. Because I see Dar, and tears prevent me from talking. The lawyer came to the pug, with bad news. Did the court refuse to change the preventive measure? Oh, you knew about it, didn't you? But our bird will start to sing now. Let's go and listen to it together. Listening. Hi, princess. Where are you going, asshole? I get it that you're driving. Yes, you got it right. However, I can choose better expressions for you. Don't be rude, princess. It doesn't suit you. I'm glad that you made the right choice. Do you mean the fact that Radishni stays in jail? It doesn't mean anything. It will just be more comfortable for investigation. He won't go to prison for a murder he didn't commit. I promise you that. Well, we'll come back to this topic again, and I... 
It's not the end of the game. Listen, Oleg, what do we have? A wasted guy in the car, not a junkie. Where was he? Right. Misha, these are the most unexpected news over the last two days. Listen, we didn't examine his car. For what? He didn't put the body in it. But I went to the impound lot and went through his Lexus. There's a dent of the fender and a scratch on the bumper. The marks are fresh. We were talking about what he could have done that he keeps quiet. The car accident is the easiest answer. Maybe he ran over some granny or pushed another car into the ditch. Good job and a brilliant version, Misha. Well, if it was a car accident, it must have been something serious with fatalities and a lot of aggravating circumstances. He fled the crime scene, driving wasted. He has what to hide. But in the murder, he is just a suspect. I'll go and talk to the traffic police. I'll ask them to look it up. Okay. And talk to Lieutenant. He's checking the accident reports now. Maybe he found Radishny's car there. Why are you so wound up? Everything's fine. I just can't get used to our roads. Listen, do people ever pass driving tests here or do they get the license as a birthday present? They get it as a present. Let's go. The food will get cold. Yeah, let's go. Weekend evenings are busy on these routes. There are many dives on the way. You'll be looking for him for a long time. Thanks. I found it. What? I think I've found it. Look, Michaelo. About midnight, about five blocks from the Clio bar, a car ran over a woman with a stroller. The driver fled the scene. There are witnesses. They remembered only a partial plate number. Judging from the description and time, it's our client. Great. Hello? Major, sir. Looks like have a witness. Great. Text me all the info on the car accident. Later, Sergi, listen, is Radishny still chatting with the lawyer? Maybe you can go, the guys found a suitable car accident? I didn't eat at all today. Can I have a bite? Let Stepanik or Taryn go. Fine. Call me later. Sergi, is everything all right? Are you okay? Did you all conspire today or something? I just asked. I can work. But I cannot dance, for example. Yeah. My husband and I took our daughter for a walk. Alia is teething and doesn't sleep at all. She doesn't let us sleep either. And in the fresh air, she sleeps, at least for some time. I was pushing the stroller and almost reached the middle of the crossing. And suddenly, that bastard came out of nowhere and ran the stroller over. So what next? What happened next? What next? We flew off the car. Me to one side, the stroller to another. And that bastard didn't even break? God, it's great that I was pushing an empty stroller. And Vitya was walking behind me with Elia in his arms. When I think that I could have put her in the stroller? Calm down. The main thing is, it's all right. Don't win yourself up now. The kid can feel it all. I have a daughter myself. But she grew up already. Do you remember the car? 
It was dark. My husband says it was Alexis. Black. Well, thanks for the talk. Get well soon. Call right away if you remember anything. We'll find that bastard for sure. I didn't kill her boss. I've never met that girl if that's what you're gonna ask. Your evidence is circumstantial. Mister, Radishny wasn't at the apartment at the time of the murder. None of the witnesses saw his car by the house. The anonymous call to the police was made by somebody who strangled a girl in my client's apartment and set him up. Right. However, your client still doesn't have an alibi. Yes. Yes, copy that. Taryn is checking the CCTV cameras from the street where the accident took place. He called and said that the recording is bad. It's unclear. It breaks up and nothing can be seen. However, I bet that this is our boy's accident. What about the cameras and witnesses of the car accident? That's right. A dead end. I'm sick and tired of that pug. How did Inga manage to tolerate him for so long? Listen, Major, let's bluff. Get rid of his lawyer for 10 minutes and I'll crack that twat. Roman, this is Major Mischenko. Can I talk to you for a moment? Don't worry, everything will be all right. Can we go to my office to talk about your client for 10 minutes? Yeah, sure. I won't talk without my lawyer. We don't need you to anymore. Everything is in this file already. By the way, don't worry about your mysterious alibi. We found out ourselves. What did you find out? On Sunday around midnight you, Mr. Redishny, while driving your Lexus, license plate number I-33166, and being severely intoxicated. On the corner of Lipinski and Kudryashev Street, you ran over a young woman that was crossing the road with her one-year-old daughter that was in the stroller. You fled the crime scene. The witness, yes, there was a witness. The witness testified that you didn't even break after the collision. Mother and daughter died at the hospital from sustained injuries. Give me some water. So, what do we have? We have a witness, a recording from a CCTV camera, a dash camera, and a satnav. You disposed of them right after the accident but we'll find them too. Now, I understand why you prefer to stay in the slammer on suspicions of a murder that you hadn't committed. It's better go to jail for a murder of a whore, right? And not for the murder of mother and a child while being wasted. You know, you may be lynched for a conviction like that. Let me write a confession. Why do I need it? You were bullshitting us for over a day. Please. Let me confess on my own. There you go. I love your salads. Really didn't have such a tasty meal for so long. You're welcome. Come here more often. Maybe you will get used to it. I won't ask you about work. You won't tell me anything anyway. You don't need to hear about murders. I have a secret. Promise to not tell Dead about it. Otherwise, he'll start torturing me with his advice. 
Okay, I am planning to write a thesis. Well, I'm collecting materials for it. Don't tell Andy why, because she will tell it to uncle, and he'll send me straight to library from his office. Deal? Deal. Listen, can I dig around father's books while he's out? I want to find some book titles, and then order them for myself. Huh? Just warn me if he comes, okay? Okay. Thanks. There you are, darling. Okay. The birthday date doesn't work anymore. Let's try the date of my return. Stability is a sign of ability. I love you, Dad. To buy rubbish like this just because your daughter ended up studying at the FBI. Mom. I found everything, thanks a lot. I have wet hands. It's all right. Say hello to Dad. I have to run. Bye. Bye. A no number. Okay. How do I? The fad, one second. Hello? You've disappointed me, princess. Why did you entrust our story to those dumb cops? They have no imagination, only the service zeal. What are you talking about? Now the bastard Radishni will go to jail for a trivial car accident. Yeah, Inga is talking to him, right now. No, it isn't working. I told you there were no guarantees. Okay, give me five seconds. Those idiots even let him write a confession. They are great. I am glad I trusted them. You can only trust me. Don't forget about it, princess. Who do you think you are? What do you know about me? Do you think that you can read my thoughts if you hacked into my files? Hell no. No way. Got it? I know everything about you and I. I created you. Who would you be without me? An actress? A swimming champion? You became who you are thanks to me. Do you remember why you decided to become a psychologist? Don't worry about the Radishni fiasco. You learned to act the right way. I'll teach you. I'll find her. She's going like hell. Does she drive well? Like in a movie. She is going towards the Soria cinema. I can't pinpoint the exact location. I'll follow her and try to reach her. You'll guide me on the way. Don't call her when driving. You'll both die. Inga, Inga, where are you racing? Hello? Does Sofia Gashenko still teach here? Yes. She's the principal. Great. I am Inga Stefan. I'd like to see her. Will you show me to her office? Thanks. Well, breathe out, Herr Major. She parked. Without a single accident. At least, there are no accident reports from this neighborhood. Memorize the address. I was told that you returned from the States. You have an unusual job for a lady. I'm a consultant psychologist. I work at the police. I decided to follow my father's footsteps. 
Gosh, life is so interesting. I was always sure that you'd become an actress. Stop it. You had talent. Don't argue with your teacher. Honey, do you remember how we staged the Snow White with you? You were around 15 then, right? Your princess was amazing. It worked out great. Yes, Princess Snow White. Yeah, those were the times. Do you remember your star manners? You don't? Come on, we were having a general rehearsal, but you kept turning your nose from the apple. You had to bite it only once, but you said you wouldn't do that, because it was too sour and gave you a toothache. Then I sent one of the kids, the dwarf, to the supermarket. I told him to bring you the tastiest ones. He did well and picked huge, red, and sweet ones. You love them. I remember that you were eating them all the time afterwards. <laughs> Stefan, it's showtime. That boy, Dima Maleshko. A tragedy struck his family a year later. His big brother, who studied in the parallel class with you, jumped from the seventh floor staircase. He died. Your parents sent you to some relatives at the time, that's why you don't remember that. That summer, my best friend drowned in the pool. They said it was an accident. Yes, I remember. Igor Maslov. He was a great kid and a great athlete. Maleshko Sr. died, exactly one month later. Dima, that dwarf, didn't back here the following autumn. Why? I don't know for sure. His family was rich, they were business people. People were talking that the parents took Dima to America to treat his nerves. His brother jumped off right before his eyes. And the boy was 13, an impressionable age. Now we know who to look for, and we'll find him, don't worry, we'll go to the firm now, we need to calm the boys down, do you think I'm the only one who is worried for you? Sergey made Radishny fully confess. Not for the murder, of course, but it was fair. I know, Yan told me, he is mad that you ruined his plan. I shouldn't have gotten you all involved in this story. You know what, stop talking like that, you're not alone now and you will be. We're together now, got it? That's it then. Guys, thanks a lot. You did a fantastic job. I'm sorry that I didn't help you at all. Thank you. Don't put ashes on your head. If not for you and your psychological tricks, we would be still digging in a wrong direction. That's right, Inga. You ironed out all the kinks. She says that she didn't do anything, and who identified this psycho will catch your maniac in the nearest future, for sure. Believe me, well, we make a good team. I won't wish you fruitful work. I wish everybody to have less of it. Inga, Inga. Inga. Yeah? I'll think about how we can catch that maniac. You're all good here. But there is only one genius, have no doubts about it. Thank you. You're the best. They are homemade. Granny sent them. Oh, thanks a lot. Yeah. I. Wait, wait. This is for you. In honor of what? In honor of your safety. It's a tracker, just in case. I got it. Thank you. I hope you won't need it. If it doesn't, I can wear it as a pendant or give it back to you after the case. You can leave it. Why the lock? I worked with what I had. 
Okay, I thought you chose it as a symbol of you holding my safety in your hands. Maybe I did. Thanks. Will you find out? Of course, I will. Will you tell me about it? Why do you need the Melishko family that immigrated to USA in 9899? I'll tell you later. I promise. Scout's honor. You've never been one. Fine, you've got me. All right, I'll tell you why I need this info, but it will be next time we talk. Is it a deal? I know you well, Shtifi. I can see you've gotten into some serious shit, up to your ears. It began when you returned back home, and it's getting worse. I don't want to pressure you, but I won't tell you single word from what I'll find until you tell me the entire story. Did we understand each other? Do you know who you are? You're a buzzkill. It's a deal. Fine. I have to go. Love you. Kisses, hugs, and I'm eagerly waiting for your return. Bye. Manipulator, my ass. Episode 11 We're at the crime scene. Police refuses to share details for now. We only know that there are several victims. There are dead. There is no data about the attacker. The names of the victims are also withheld. We'll watch the development of the events and inform you on the details in the nearest news reports. Got it? Thank you. What's up, Misha? Hi. Did you come long ago? No. Where are the others? The kid is already here, and Shpak somewhere is on the way. I can't reach Inga. Well, it's night already. She could have turned the phone off. She could. She is capable of anything. And why are you so upset? Is it that bad? You betcha. I haven't seen a mess like this for a long time. It looks like a slaughterhouse. Really? Yes. Let's go and have a look. Let's go. And right now we'll tell you. Lyosha, thanks a lot for letting me in so late. I don't have other options, and I want to swim badly. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you. Our doors are always open for you. Goodbye. Goodbye. By the way, check your phones. Check your phones, by the way. They were ringing while you were swimming. Maybe something happened. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. Bad cop. Eight missed calls. Right here. Are you serious? Right here. Where are the bodies? The gore? Ha. Huh. Why are you so happy? Okay. Misha, my mom and me plan to go to the Philharmonic. And there's the call. Get it? Everything fell into place. I get it.
So. Sasha, what do you got? For victims. Two dead, two are at the hospital. The attacker. He fled. Walked away, to be precise. What do you mean, walked away, Sasha? He started a massacre at a well-guarded property and just walked away. Is this Rambo, first blood or something? One of the victims is a mall cop. And Major, sir, the attacker left with a gun. Yes. I was at the pool. Oh, I got it. Of course, I know where it is. I'm on my way. Where are you going so late, Inga? Did something happen? It's not your parents, I hope. No, it's not my parents, but something did happen. Some job you have. It's not for a girl. I bet you're going to see some nightmares instead of going on a date. I didn't expect to meet you here this night. Nobody expected that, Jasha. What do you have here? Well, two knife wounds, carotid artery, chest. Both were mortal. I think he died almost instantly. I didn't examine the other one, but as a rough guess, knife wounds similar to the first victim. Are you from the directorate? Yes. Our higher UPS will arrive soon. This is the deputy of local homicides chief. Major Artemenko? Mm -hmm. Yup. Listen, Major, you know him, right? Well, new. I studied at the academy with him, Misha. Well, the circle of suspects is widening fast. He had many ill-wishers. I'm telling you, calm down. Calm? I'm calm. Then why are you messing with him? Why? Why did you bring him here at all? Don't you understand? No, I don't. Will you please calm down? I am calm. Who is that? Anyway. Two with knife wounds, and two with just W's. This is what we have. I see. Hello? The experts are on their way. Hello? Hello? Subject used cold weapons twice. He switched to a firearm after that. Very weird. Nothing weird. He just took a gun from a cop that he killed. Something's out of order, yeah. Yes, something is really out of order, Major. Sir, by the way, Captain Spock is getting into it with somebody from the local precinct. Smells like a fight. Misha, work with the witnesses. Sasha, the cameras are on you. Begin the examination. How many knife wounds were there? Five. I'll write it down. Five. I'll see how calm you will be when your boss will get whacked. I'll look for the murderer when my boss will get whacked, instead of pressing the local goobers. Got it? Fine. What do we have here? Nothing. The captain here has already cracked the case, found the murderer, hot on the trail. Who is he? Kalia Demidov, a local junkie. Moonlights as a petty dealer. Artemenko locked up his elder brother, Pasha, for selling drugs. He kept sending messages from the court and the prison saying he wanted to take revenge on Artemenko. Why is he pressing on you now? Or he was at the crime scene? He was. He was loitering by the cashier desks of the supermarket. And his brother was got out recently. And just as he got out, Artemenko almost got run over by a car. Is the car intact? Sergi, interrogate him. Come on. Move it. Hello, Night Owls. What do you need? What do I need? Aren't you at the firm? I can work fine at my lair too. What do you need? Did you hear about the incident? 
Of course. The internet is buzzing about it. Anyway, bring up all the cases of late Major Artemenko. Dig only into the most serious clients. The ones that he sent away for a long time. Check out the ones that were released recently and are in the city right now. Did you get me? Who do you think you're talking to, Major? I've already checked it out. Oh, damn it. What's that? Did you step on a cat? I'm making coffee. It's a common thing. People with genius brains usually have sloppy hands. Don't get upset. Though, later. Bye. Nothing new so far, Andri. Yes, we've put out an APB right away. The patrols from the whole city are there. Nothing so far. Have you identified the attacker? Not yet. He's most likely a junkie. According to the witnesses, he behaved inadequately. What about the cameras? Can you see him there? We are going through them now. We will clean the recording and give it to the press, without unnecessary details. Yes. The press media doesn't need excessive details. He's armed and very dangerous. Those are the details. Is everybody there? Yeah. Inga and the lieutenant are going through the video. Andri, I have a call from the morgue. I'll keep you posted. Deal. Keep working. Well? Say, what a nice job you found for Inga. Oh. What about our brothers, the Demitivs? Nothing. The elder brother started partying as soon as he got out. He still does. Where? We are finding that out at the moment. I asked Spider to check it out. Here is what I think, Major. They didn't plan any serious revenge. I think those were just empty talks and boating. We'll see. What else? The junior had a good look at the murderer. He was going out, and Demitev was loitering in the hall at the time. He says that he saw him in the neighborhood many times. Did he tell you where he saw him? He'll tell us in the morning. He talked about some place, a shed. I didn't understand him well. He says that he even knows where he lives. He is almost sure. One or Demitov skipped town by morning. No, I put a patrol near his place. They will bring him to us in the morning. That's great. Are you going to the morgue? Yes, I'll go with you. Maybe Dasha will help me wake up. Let's go. Dasha, what a look. I can't recognize you without a dead body. I'm so not in the mood for your witty humor. I was just joking. Why are you both so dressed up? Did you have a date, Sergi? Dasha, did you call about the identification of Artemenko? Did they arrive? They didn't arrive. They were brought in by the head of the local precinct. I understand that it's the boss of the deceased. I was asked to go out and not bother them with my presence. What kind of important and vulnerable bird is in there? Hello, Major. Please meet Lisa, Artemenko's sister. She identified him. We know each other. Of course, we do. Oliga and I were married. We married right after graduation from the academy. Didn't my brother tell you?
8.50, the subject comes in. Artemenko is already there. But the subject went right to the cashier desk. He didn't see Artemenko behind the shelves. You see, he is moving. In a weird way, he has some kind of a nervous tick, a sign of an unstable mental state. What did he ask the pharmacist for? For diazepam. It's a strong neuroleptic. Why didn't she sell it to him? She said the prescription was out of date for over a month. The dosage was big. I see. Did she remember the surname of the patient or the doctor? Just a stamp of some clinic. And the surnames were simple. The time is 8.53. Yes, it went down very fast, less than a minute. It's a rare case when a cold-blooded gaze confirmed the testimony of the witnesses. A cold-blooded gaze? In the law enforcement bodies of the states, the evidence recorded on video is called the cold-blooded gaze. Often, they don't align with the testimony of the witnesses. You see, people are subjective. They often make mistakes, forget or at something, or they lie, and the cameras don't. In our case, the testimonies aligned. So what? How are we doing? Did you give the photo of the attacker to the journalists? We did. And what is going on in general? Do we have something to report to the brass? We may skip the version of Artemenko's premeditated murder. Arguments? From the recording, it's evident that the murderer didn't see Artemenko until he jumped at him to disarm him. I suppose the criminal can be a drug addict. He behaved like a junkie during a withdrawal. A junkie during a withdrawal wouldn't try to sell the neuroleptic prescription to a pharmacist. The recording shows that he's got some kind of a tick. I think it's late dyskinesia. It develops if you take psychotropic drugs year after year. It's clear that our murderer is a psychopath. It doesn't prevent him from being a drug addict. Our subject didn't have a weapon. He came to the pharmacy to buy drugs with a prescription. Then, when the lady refused to sell it, he got very upset and it fed a bunch of people. Maybe somebody scared him. I studied the recording too. And defense is not a behavior of a murderer. You're wrong, Oleg. Our subject came to the pharmacy being already irritated, and the longshoreman provoked his aggression. The longshoreman provoked him. With what? A paper knife? Bad enough for four victims. Maybe not only with a knife. Maybe that longshoreman reminded him of somebody. Or it was the situation in general. It's evident that our subject had a nervous breakdown. We may assume that he's former military. Then, he might suffer from a post-traumatic disorder. I don't no. In any case, the main thing now is to find out the cause of our subject's unexpected stress behavior. The main thing now is to make a break for a couple of hours. We won't find anything new until morning. And maybe he'll get caught during that time. We'll be very lucky then. Sasha, can I take the drive? I want to study the material in more details. It seems to me that we missed something. Yes, of course. You're not mistaken. I'm not mistaken. It's Ilian, I'm sure. He has been coming to us for a long time. I have been working here for two years and he's been coming here all the time. Aliona has been here for only a couple of months. Looks like she didn't see him yet. Fine. Does he come here often? Once a month. The prescriptions are usually issued once per month. I remember him well. Because he's the only one who comes to us for serious drugs like those. If he used to come every month, then why your rookie didn't see him before? Right, you know, I met him on the street one of these days. By accident. He didn't look well. He was pale, as if he was sick. I thought that he didn't come to us for a long time. And today, Aliona said that his prescription was out of date. How did he usually behave when coming to the pharmacy to buy the drugs? Maybe he was nervous. Was he arguing with anybody? On the contrary, he was always very quiet, a bit removed. I could never imagine that he's capable of such a thing. Fine. I'll write it down. Have a seat. No. <laughs> 
Well, tell me, why were you waiting for me? This is where you're dug in. Brother told me you were promoted. I wasn't surprised. You always was married to your job. Like your brother, right? Yes. You didn't talk with him for a long time. He didn't start a family. He was always too busy. And now it's too late. Was he telling anything weird to you recently? Was somebody threatening him? As far as I know, a car almost ran him over a couple of days ago. If he was scared of everybody whom he had sent to prison over the years, he'd have to live in a bunker. No, he didn't say anything like that and behaved as usual. What was he doing in that pharmacy? He lived in another neighborhood, and it's far from his job. Yes, Oleg, you remember it, right? He stayed in our parents' apartment when they emigrated abroad. He went to that pharmacy because of me. I live in that neighborhood. I got an apartment there after the divorce. The second one. I didn't feel well, my throat was sore, and I had a running nose. You know how susceptible I am to viruses. I asked Fit to go to the pharmacy and buy me herbal tea, something antiviral. Oh, look, so it means if I hadn't sent him there, he could still be, is it my fault? Did I kill him? Lisa, don't start, please. I killed him, Oleg. Stop it. Stop it. It's enough, enough. Quiet, quiet. Oh, Inga. Are you going to your office? Yes. Let's have some coffee. Captain, what coffee? Major told us to get a couple of hours of sleep. Yeah. But don't come there for about five minutes anyway. Major is consoling a lady there. She is all in tears, very upset. What the hell are you talking about? What lady? Sister of late Major Artemenko. Fine, let him console her. I only need to take my bag. Maybe you. Don't know but sister of Major Artemenko is our Major's ex-wife. It's a real soap opera over here. It's all right. Thank you for your concern. Yeah, Major is in trouble now. I beg your pardon, I only have to take my bag. Sorry. Um, this is Lisa Artemenko, sister of late Major Artemenko. Please accept my sympathies. Are you the new consultant of the directorate? Yeah, from the FBI. Come on, Oleg. You introduced me, but didn't introduce your colleague. I'm Miss Inga Stefan, our off counsel. Yes, nice to meet you. I have to go. Miss Stefan. Why the formalities? Just Inga, right? Yeah. Oleg and I have known each other for so long. We definitely need to talk later. I've heard so much about you. Some other time. Will you give me a lift home? Miss, I am canceling the order. No, you listen to me. You said five minutes, half an hour ago. No, cancel it. That's it? What a day. What happened? Can you imagine? It's the third card they are sending. One is broken. One got lost. I'm speechless.
what did you find? Maybe I'm calling to ask the brass to let me go and have some sleep. Misha, come on, talk to me. Well, I interrogated the local staff. You know about the pharmacist. I'm about the ones from the grocery store. Girl, the cashier, and the guard identified our subject. Do they know who he is? No, they don't, but they say he lives somewhere close by. He has been coming by regularly, at least since summer. The guard said that once, he came to the store in his slippers. The home slippers, rubber ones, you know. Maybe. He is a local hobo or a junkie. No. Both say that the guy was quiet and polite. He didn't look like a junkie. Judging from his clothes, he was poor, but clean, tidy. He didn't smell. Maybe he's a drunk. It doesn't look like it. The cashier says she doesn't remember him ever buying booze. Even beer. Only food, and not a lot of it. Fine, good job, Misha. Thank you. Have some rest. Yeah. I will. Oleg, come on. Couldn't you call on the way? Nothing changes. Looks like you were the luckiest today. I had time to swim at the pool, at least. And it looks like your evening was spoilt. Not only mine. Have you ever seen the Major in a tie? Nope. Exactly. He was entertaining his mother today. He came to the crime scene straight from the Philharmonic, left in the middle of the concert. From the Philharmonic. That's unexpected. No, it's normal. Oh, I think you don't know. His mother is a music teacher. In his youth, Mischenko graduated from the musical school. He played piano. I heard that his mother wanted him to enroll into the musical academy. But when his father died, Oleg decided to enroll into the Academy of the Internal Affairs. What happened to his father? He was killed. He was a detective and a very good one at that. Pavlo, our driver, you know him. He worked with him and told us about it. Was the killer found? No. By the way, you were right. Today, I tried to go on a date. However, it wasn't too romantic. It's all right. It's not the last time. By the way, did you see Mischinko's ex? How do you like her? I don't care. We don't have to baptize children together. That's right. I think she's a real bitch. It seemed to me that Lisa wasn't against baptizing somebody with Mischenko. Is that it? Thanks for seeing me off. It's unpleasant to walk here alone at night. Okay, bye. I have to go. Wait. Will you catch the killer? Lisa, of course we'll catch him. What kind of question is that? The entire city's police is looking for him. Come on, go home and try to go to get some sleep. I really need to go. Won't you come in? Not for long. I can't stay on my own right now. You're not right after all, Major, sir. Defense, contact, blow. Contact, blow. The same thing every time. What did you remember? There definitely was a hospital. 
We need to check that. Oh lord, of course. I completely forgot about that. Poor Lisa is under supervision over there. Well, I won't bother you. Come on, pick it up. Answer the phone, come on. Yes. Oh, Herr Major. What? One second, well... I've checked Artemenko's collars. And I want to upset you. There is nothing... of interest there. What do you mean? Nothing at all? Well, a lot of people were threatening to break his skull, but in essence, those were all empty talks. The ones that were threatening him are locked up and keeping silent. The ones who got out are doing fine. But, out of more or less serious people, only one got out recently. What's his face? Demitov. The one our cap was interested in. Where is he now? His brother said he was at the resort somewhere. Yes. He rented a nice place. Goes to restaurants, saunas and so on. Are you sure? Of course I am. You bet I'm sure, I've checked everything. That dude has already withdrawn half a million from his credit cards. Okay, I see, later. Tell me, the rest tomorrow. Bye, good night. Wait, Major, why weren't you picking up for so long? Pasha, I was busy. I am busy sometimes. Bye. With whom? With your ex or something? That's it. Bye. Right? As if it was a royal mystery. It's all right. I'll check everything myself now. You need to get married, Pavlik. Everything would be fine if you didn't need to take a leak. Take a walk. Go piss. Good morning. I take it you didn't sleep well. Good morning. Yes, I didn't sleep well. Is it very noticeable? Is there something with my makeup or my hairdo? I'll fix it. Everything's fine. And I see that you're quite happy. After the eventful night, yeah. Yes, everything's fine. Go to the boys right away. We have something to talk about. Girl, come on. Let's go, let's go. Come on, come on, let's go, let's go. So what? Do we have new victims? You're so optimistic early in the morning, Inga. Do we need to have them? That would be bad news. I rewatched the recordings from the CCTV cameras. Looks like he didn't snap for nothing. The longshoreman reminded him of somebody. Our subject vented off all his negative energy at him. By the way, he is still wired, and he has a gun. I'm surprised that he still hasn't surfaced somewhere. Being in the state. Do we have any good ones? The APB didn't yield any results. There is not a single report about our subject showing up somewhere, and one of the wounded died at the hospital. Did the late Major Sister tell you anything of interest? No. Let's go to work. Yes, we do need to work while the Major is solving his personal issues. Okay, I'm going to Spider. I have an idea. I want to check all the patients registered at the local clinic. The subject clearly has been ill for a long time. I understand the thing with the clinic. I can't understand another thing. What is going on in general? There is tension in the air. 
Yeah, like before a storm, right? I'd say it this way. Our Major was excessively sympathetic to the sister of late Major, who is also his ex-wife. And Inga believes that our Major must spend more time with his colleagues. See, they brought in my goober. Maybe now he'll tell us where our psycho lives. Anyway, bye. What a woman. Jesus Christ. Born in 82, Kyiv, Philological Faculty. Hair major, husband number one. Wow, there was a third one already. Girl got a good exit package. Oh. Hi Inga. I was working here. Everything's fine. I understand. You care about Major's moral appearance, but you are relaxing yourself after the workday. It's all right. Are you ready to work? For you, anytime. Great. I need to check the Solomayansky district's local clinics. Okay, what are we looking for? Prescriptions of diazepam monthly over the last two years and the alternation of diazepam with these drugs. Are you serious? It's not work, I'll find it in three clicks. That's great. It's really important for me. No problem, miss. You may watch me checking it. It will only take a couple of minutes. Yes, I beg your pardon, somebody's calling. Where are you? I'm at Spiders, on an urgent matter. What is it? Wait for me, I'm on my way. Okay. Yeah. What happened? Why do you say so? I just wanted to find out how you're doing. Maybe you have some news. Yeah. Hello, princess. Lisa, nothing changed since our last conversation that was just one hour ago. No news. Stop it. What do you mean? Stop it. Why are you talking to me like this? Lisa, in case you forgot, I'm looking for your brother's killer. Therefore, stop interfering with my work. I'm sorry. I, I didn't want to interfere. I'm just, I'm just a bit out of it. Talk with your aunt. You asked me to drive you to her at night. Yes. Thanks a lot. You, you understand everything? I'm just worried about you. That's psycho kill Victor. And now, something may happen to you. It's the job in case that you forgot. Oleg, I didn't forget anything. You can't even imagine how I felt when you left. I don't even want to imagine that. Lisa, it was so long ago. Let's not plunge into memories, especially bad ones. That's it, later. I have to work. I have visitors. Oleg, I'm worried about you. Be careful. Don't worry. God be with you. In the cold storage. I told you, Inga, it won't take much time. I'll give you everything now. What's that? Oh, the master of unexpected appearances is here. I'm preparing Inga's special order. Why are you so angry? Are you angry that Inga came to me directly instead of reporting to you? Yeah, Pasha, don't talk nonsense. Where is she? She doesn't report to me. She went out somewhere. Did you lose her or something? Had a rough night with your ex. I'll put you on a naughty chair someday. Come on. Anyway, look, and you shall find. What? You didn't sleep at all, did you, princess? Why are you asking me if you know everything already? You're so feisty after a sleepless night. I'll remember that. At least, you don't know something about me. Don't get cheeky, princess. You need to listen to me very closely now. And obey me. Oh, this is something new. Obey you, right. What instructions are you going to give me this time? You don't have to work on the pharmacy murder. Great. Did I understand you right? 
You're asking me to stop doing my job. I'm not asking you. I prohibit you from working on this case. Fine. Explain why. Because it's very dangerous. That subject is a psycho in a reactive state. I don't want you to get hurt. You're warning me about danger. You're warning me about a psycho. You're a psycho yourself. Got it. Demidov, is it here? It's the fifth yard already. I'm getting sick and tired. Here? I often see that guy here. I just don't know whether he lives here or just comes to get high. Is he a junkie? Were you dealing to him? Couldn't you say so at night? Was it hard? No. What? No. I didn't deal to anybody. I offered him some stuff once, but he refused. However, he's using something. For sure. I can see that. Of course, you can. Use yourself and help others. Watch him so he doesn't take off. Captain, we need to call for backup. He's violent and dangerous. Listen, Lieutenant. Do you remember Inga mentioning the mental clinic? And tonight, it was broken into. Do you think it was our guy? Any victims? There were none. The guard was out for some reason. What a lucky bastard. In any case, we need to go there and check it out. I think it was him. So come on. One moment. Yeah, yes. Stop and then, I got it. On my way. Start without me. Are you avoiding me? What do you mean? Literally. You said you'd be at Pavlix. I asked you to wait for me. I came, and you weren't there. Something happened. Sorry, I had to wait for you, but I had to make an urgent call. To whom? Don't you think that calls can be personal? You of all people must understand that. Did I insult you in any way? You didn't insult me. I'm the one who needs to apologize for barging into your office. So richly, without a knock, at night. And then I continued calling you for some time. I see. What do you see? That our relations moved to another level. It smells of jealousy. Does it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that. Lack of sleep influences your brain activity. Are you serious? I am. I don't give a damn about your personal life. At all. Lisa Arminko is not connected with my personal life for a long time. Let's go and see what Pasha has found. Did you warn him or something? No. Ivan Ilyan, 39. 
Well, colleagues, it's ready. Inga, am I awesome? You are. What do you have there? Come on. Reporting. Ivan Ilyan, 39, suffers from a severe paranoidal disorder, has been registered since 16, went to a loony bin for a couple of times. In recent years, he was receiving treatment at home, he was given all there is, he tried almost everything on your list. Anyway, two months ago, they stopped prescribing medicines to him. There it is. Two months ago, they stopped prescribing him these medicines, and it led to a breakdown. But why was he off the pills? Can we check whether Ilian's doctor changed? You know your stuff, Inga. Indeed, he got a new doctor three months ago. He has the same surname as the singer. There it is. Leschenko, Yuri Leschenko. The previous doctor, Volodymyr Spyakov, who had been treating Ilyan for over 10 years. Retired. We need that clinic, quick. Pasho, please check that Leschenko and Spyakov, just in case. It's as easy as one, two, three, and for you as one, two. Where did you bring us, you bastard? Where is that piece of shit? Ha! Huh? Did you warn him? Get back. Fine, fine. Chief, can I stand up? Captain, what are you doing? Chief, calm down. Episode 12. You said that you went out for five minutes. Maybe not for five. My child's godfather works nearby. He is a guard too. I spent some time with him when I came back and the door was wide open. Who would break in here? There's no money here, no drugs too. You must have hung the entire night with your buddy. I got it. Hello. Hello. One of the offices is upside down. It's unclear what they were looking for. Tell me, are the medical histories of the patients kept in their doctor's offices, and which office got turned upside down? The one belonging to one of the doctors did, but he's on vacation abroad now. I have no idea what they were looking for. What is the doctor's name, Leschenko? Yes, ma'am. Leschenko. Thanks for helping the investigation and all that. Now get out of here. What are you gonna do, Captain, sir? Well, Lieutenant, I won't file a report against your Captain. But, maybe he'll have to cover your back one day. And he won't do that. Not because he's an asshole, but because he has problems. I understand. Well, you won't have any problems with me, but I talked to the brass about him. Thank you. Later. The experts will come in and examine everything here now. Here you go. You came here fast. You feel it in your heart, don't you? Troubles in the law enforcement bodies.
Only Alien's medical file was stolen from the clinic. I have a question. Who might need his medical file except for Ilian himself? You know, you're probably right. Nobody needs it. But him. I can't imagine Ilian being violent. I just can't. So for 10 years that you have known him, you haven't seen any precursors to an outbreak like this. Listen to me, my dear. Ilian has a serious mental disorder. But he never, hear me, he never shown any aggressive behavior. Moreover, in such extreme form, I would never even think of getting him off this perennial neuroleptic usage and go on vacation. But Dr. Leshchenko got him off the drugs. What do you think? Why? Inga! I get it. I'm asking you as an experienced specialist. Your opinion is important for me. In recent years, Ilian talked to me once or twice about the possibility of completely abandoning the drugs. He doesn't remember anything about his childhood. Therefore, he was asking whether it was possible to restore his memories. How can I say this professionally, if they won't be suppressed by the drugs? I see. What did you answer? I wasn't ready to risk Ivan's health. Inga, you're a specialist. Completely abandoning the drugs with his difficult case history? That's too much. So it means that Dr. Leshchenko made a gamble. Again with Leshchenko. Your Leshchenko doesn't care much about the patients, by the way. And in Ilian's case, I'm sure that your was interested in the experiment alone. Leshchenko? Honey, your Leshchenko is one of those young experts that are considered to be very progressive, but in reality... He's meddling, I told him. You're a... You're meddling with the patient's brain like a first-year student with a broad clip. I beg your pardon, Inga. It's all right. It's all right. And what did your progressive colleague say to you? Really? Do you think he was insulted? Like how he did? He started laughing like... And then he said... It might be so, but I'll train this way. Do you realize what he said? Do you? For him, mentally ill are nothing more than lab samples. Hello? Hello. Hello. What? I minded my own business. Vanya's a quiet guy. Even if he was unfortunate, he was thrown out of the dormitory just as he was fired. And it's hard for me to sweep the yard on my own, especially when there's a lot of snow or leaves. So, I made a deal with him. He never refused. He swept and cleaned snow. He helped with repairs. He helped people carry things, like a longshoreman. Okay, Vanya's a good guy. I got that. Did he have relatives, a family, a roommate? Did anybody ever visit him? No, I didn't see anybody. I think he's as lonely as a thumb. I asked him once, do you have any relatives, Vanya? He got upset, waved his head, and said, I don't know, maybe somebody is alive, but I have no idea where to look for them. If somebody told me yesterday that Vanya did such a massacre, I never believed that. He always avoided fights. However, when the husband of Lucia from the third entrance began pulling her by the hair in the yard, Ian got into his face. See, you said he never fought. Well, helped a woman. When they got separated, Vanya was shaking and his eyes were weird. What do you mean by weird? Angry. Not, not angry. Sick. Bullied, scared or something. It's as he knew that he would get hurt, but he couldn't avoid standing up for her. Shall we go inside? Thank you. The district police officer won't file a report, and I won't tell Major anything about this incident. You want to be noble, don't you? Well, well. Look, stop behaving like... Fine. 
Yeah. I didn't tell Major anything only because you need to report him about it personally. All right, I'll wait for Major at the firm. There were neither documents nor money. The phone was lying discharged here and the road bag was empty. It doesn't look like he lived here at all. Not a single personal belonging. Usually people have some memorabilia, photos, trinkets, children's toys, I don't know. And this person is like a clean slate. I understand that you have a new theory. For some reason, I believe that he asked to take him off the drugs himself. I mean, it takes five minutes to go from home, to the pharmacy, but he didn't come back here, not even to wash off the blood. Why did he risk everything? I don't understand. Do you see how these people are living? It's a nightmare. Pasha, we're listening, you're on the loudspeaker. No need to ask, Herr Major. I'm not sensitive, but the story is very sad indeed. Okay. In 86, the truckers picked up a boy. From the testimony, he was walking along the highway alone, dirty and ragged. What did the boy say? Where were his parents? Or someone? Was he lost? The thing is, he didn't say anything at all. Literally nothing. He was as silent as a fish. The drivers brought him to the cops, and they sent him to the orphanage. Were his parents or relatives found? Nope. I checked. He wasn't in the missing children reports. Where did Ivan Ilyin come from? Then, he was registered in the orphanage under that name. They had to come up with some name for him. So, they gave him that name and determined his approximate age. Eight years. The boy didn't say anything in the end. No. He was silent for almost a year. And when he started talking, he couldn't remember anything. As for the state of the child, Numerous healed scars on his body, memory loss, psychic trauma. Looks like he was a victim of constant abuse. Tried to find anything, phone calls, friends from the previous job, or from the orphanage. Don't try to teach me, Herr Major. It has already been done. Inga, what will you say? Did I do well? Spider, you're great. You did well, you're the best. Did you have a chat? We did. Well done. You know what? Knock it off, you don't care, and Pasha thinks that you're sincere. What do you mean? I mean the flirt. Major, sir, who can I flirt with? You know your subordinates better than I do. Can you avoid that at work? Ha. Huh. Or is it customary to flirt with everybody? At the FBI Academy, you're so funny when you're jealous. What jealousy? Right. Come on. Okay, look up again, please. Okay, don't raise your head. Okay. Well, Sergi, your prognosis is great. I'll prescribe you a couple of medicines. Now. Doc, can we skip the pills? Because I saw people going nuts from them. Do you mean? Your current case, yes. Yes. 
You shouldn't worry about that. Your case is completely different. Yours is a classic example of a recurrent post-traumatic disorder. Unfortunately, it happens after serious mental traumas. I think we've already discussed it. Yes, we have. Okay. Here's the first medicine. Take one pill for three days. And take the second one for a month. I'll make a scheme for you. Does it mean a month without work, right? Aha. Uh -huh. You'll be without work for three days while you're taking strong medicines. And then work as much as you want. But don't forget to take the second medicine. It's a light antidepressant that will help you manage the change of emotions and normalize your sleep. And stay away from alcohol. I'm not a fan. Very well then. Get the prescription from Artem. Diazepam. Doc, how does it work? Take a seat here. I'll prescribe another medicine for you now. Sergi's not picking up. He left before we did. Did he tell you anything? No. He wanted to see you when you got back. Fine. And what's with? I can't remember your terms. The profile of the subject. I'm absolutely sure that Ilian had a serious psychological trauma in his childhood. It's connected with violence towards his close ones. I would say it was a woman, his granny, sister, or mother. Again with the very far-fetched conclusions. The conclusions are based on facts. The pharmacy, the first victim, a man covered in blood. He runs up to a pharmacist, a female, and Ilian wasn't taking his drugs for a month at the time. That scene became a trigger for him. If he saw a similar situation in his childhood, why didn't he talk about it to the police or the teachers at the orphanage? Why? It was a very serious shock. A little boy consciously blocked himself from terrible recollections, set a barrier, so to speak. That's why he doesn't remember the past. Perhaps. But what now? Did he suddenly start to remember? Not suddenly. That's the thing. Elian decided to try and remember his past because that black hole was interfering with his life. He thought that if he could remember something, it would help him in future. He might feel better. Listen, the pharmacist said that when asking her for a medicine, he was saying something like, they had to go. Maybe he was already hearing voices. Ilian's second doctor took him off the drugs. Ilian held on for about a month. Then he got worse. Your suggestions. He wants to remember everything about past. He's getting there. I'm sure that he'll go to the place where it all started. We need to find out where that place is. Okay, I'm going to Spider. We're looking for killings, murder attempts, accidents, and missing people in the area where Ilian was found. In 86, right? Yes. First of all, we're interested in young women. Summer of 86. What a time period. People were being moved out of Kornobl. You could kill not just a person but an elephant there, and nobody would notice that. Havlik. Michaelo, you can get somebody a heart attack like that. Excuse me, kid. You're getting too comfortable here. Did you dig up anything on Ilian? I've sent everything to Major's email. Well? Well, it's the deadest of all the dead ends that I've dug up. Fine. Maybe you'll remember something later. Okay, listen here. I've got mail from Pasha. Nothing interesting. No credit cards, no driving license. He last used his phone a month ago, and he called his doctor. Ilian didn't have any friends. He didn't have who to go to. I found out something interesting. And... 
Let's go to our office. I'll tell it to everybody. Something happened. Well, no. Major, sir, may I address you? Fine. I'll go have a coffee outside and then come back to the office. Of course. You may address me, Sergi. Let's go. Well, I need to take a sick leave for three days, and then I'll be able to work. There. Oleg. I thought that I'd manage on my own. It's fine, Serioga. Get well soon. And talk to the district officer. Of course. I understand. I'll apologize to him. For his understanding. I get it. Anyway. Sergi. Yeah. Didn't you forget something? Oh. Okay, go and buy pills in the pharmacy. I'm waiting for you in three days. Inga, she's asking for Major Mischenko, and he's not picking up. Major Mischenko is having a serious conversation. Inga will take me there, won't you, Inga? Of course, Lisa, I'll take you to Oleg's office. Come in. So what happened? Well, here's the backstory. My dear colleagues, you'll have to do without me for the next three days. There. Well, because I need to. Calm my nerves down a bit. You're all smart. You must have noticed that I began to lose it a little bit. So, the good doctor prescribed me some medicines so that I'll become calm at once. There, I need to take them only for three days. Because if I take them for half a year I'll become raving mad. It reminds me of our friend Ilyen, so... Right? Well, it's my turn then. I found out an interesting story about Vedi Mikashev, his wife Tamara and son Anatoly from the town of Kornobyl. They were getting evacuated after Kornobyl went boom. Why are you sitting there? We're leaving in the morning, and you still haven't packed. And... Why are you looking at me, you drunk? Shut your... mouth. Father of the family, Vedi Mikashev, earlier convicted for a murder in a drunken fight, was the first to leave for the new place of residence. From his words, he did that to see the new place and then to call his wife and child there. Cut the long story short, did they come there or not? Wait. When his wife and child didn't come at the scheduled time, Yakushev began to call his neighbors and friends. But it turned out that nobody saw either his wife or the child. Of course, he filed a statement to the police. However, neither his wife nor child were ever found. And our boy, who later became known as Vanya Ilyan, was found close to a Lindsay ten days later. How do you like the story? I don't understand one thing, why did? Nobody connect the found boy with the missing one? Didn't they even try to check it? Why? They very much did. How did they miss it? Was it because of the mess during the evacuation? Yes. Investigation drew a conclusion that Tamara simply ran away. She used the evacuation and the ongoing mess. Took her child with her and escaped from the violent husband. The boy was found by a highway that's quite far from Kornobyl. The police were looking for Talia and his mother in Kornobyl proper or somewhere close, or at the new place of residence. That's why nobody found anything. So it means that Mr. Yakshev killed his wife while wasted and staged it as his family's disappearance, right? 
Yakushev not just killed his wife in his son's presence, maybe would kill his son too, but he managed to escape. It makes the story with Ilyan's mental trauma and his blocked memories very logical. Again, Ilyan never got into fights, but he defended a woman that was being beaten by a drunk husband. So Ilyan's looking for Yakushev now, right? Yes, he started to remember. I think he will go to the end. It means that we need to find Yakshiv before Ilyan finds him to avoid another dead body, right? Oleg, I'm sorry that I didn't listen to you and came here. I just wanted to know the news and was worried. Inga took me to your office. I was waiting for you, but you weren't coming, so I went looking for you. I thought that maybe Inga was too busy and forgot about me. Lisa, excuse me, I forgot to warn Comrade Major that you were waiting for her, but you've met, and that's the most important thing, right? Yup, thank you. You're welcome. Oleg. We need to talk. Didn't I explain it enough? Oh, already. Are you serious? Amazing. You've surpassed yourself, Spider. Come again. At the same address? Fine. I'll check the mail now. Thanks a lot. Did I tell you already that you're the best? Bye-bye. Thanks for not giving me up to Major. You're welcome. Let's consider it my rehabilitation for the report against Stephanie. That's right. See you in three days. Good luck. Lieutenant, it's just a part of the rehabilitation, just so we're clear. Where are we heading? I want to check an idea. Okay. I'll go with you. Oh. I don't know you too well, Inga. But I think that your idea is dangerous. That's one. Plus, I'm sure that Major doesn't know about it. That's two. So, where are we going? To the Yakushev's old address, Yakushev Sr. returned there in a year after his family had gone missing. He still lives there. If Ilyan began to remember, it means he'll be there soon. I'm investigating your brother's murder. If we find something out, you'll be right away, as the closest relative. There. Oh, your beard has turned gray. Tranquility is the old man's milk and all that. We can't have anything between us. Are you sure? Absolutely sure. Yup. And I think we used to be so good together. Let bygones be bygones. You have somebody. Her? Are you serious? I'll be damned. I just can't believe it. Lisa, it's none of your business whether I have somebody or not. 
Lord, Miss Jinko, you have a talent to fall for wrong women? That's right. Fine, I agree. I'm a bitch that cheated on you. However, maybe I wouldn't if you were home more often. But her? She will chew you and spit you out? How long do you think she will last our exotic parts? Six months? I think less. And then bye? She will wave her hand and leave to her FBI. I'm sure that she has a boyfriend that's waiting for her there. Cool. You know about that too. So, are you fine with the fact that you're a substitute here? Well, Oleg, I'm impressed. Older age made you more tolerant to female weaknesses. It's a pity we've met so early. Aren't you hot? I'm not. Where are you going? Calm down. Everything is under control. You shouldn't be angry with Major. I'm not blind. I can see that. After that poor Lisa appeared, you're hissing at her like a cat. You know what, Captain Spock? This idea could have appeared only in your head. That I'm jealous of Miss Genko and Lisa. I didn't say that you were jealous or worried. I just asked you to cool down, to breathe, not to hiss, to stop being mad. Everything will be all right. Let's just be silent. <laughs> the subscriber can't be reached at the moment. What kind of nonsense is that? She couldn't switch her phone off. Or maybe she could. And where the hell are you? How did you dare to let her go alone? Where is she? What did you do to her? Princess and Shpak are close to Chernobyl now. The Yakashevs used to live at 12 Lagova Street. Move it. You just don't get it, Lieutenant. Lisa is courting Major. And Inga gets mad because of it. I didn't notice Inga being mad. You didn't notice it because Inga's smart. She can express her dissatisfaction to the Major without drama. Hello? Spider. Let's go. God damn it. Yeah, they are in the zone already, Major, a couple of minutes from the address. Call her. Why are you calling me? There is no connection with her. Listen, Major, she is not alone there, right? Cap will watch her back, right? With what? With a finger? He gave his piece in. I need to ask you one question, Dad. Ask away. If you need to. Are you sure this is the right place? It doesn't look like somebody lives here. We'll check it out now. How far am I from that place? 20 minutes at this speed. Only if there are no delays. Make sure there are none. 
you'll have a green corridor to the place in, you've got it. Hit it, Major. Terran and Stepanik will follow you. Come on guys, move it. Twelve Lagoa Street. Damn. Stay here, don't go anywhere. You! You killed her! I remember! I remembered everything! Who did I kill, Sonny? Mom! You stabbed her with a knife! She screamed and you! You stabbed her again! I was waiting for you. I was thinking all the time about when you'll come back. Answer him. Your son need to hear the answers to his questions. Then everybody will get better. And you, you don't have to kill him. Why did you come here? We came here to help you. Because you need to talk and figure everything out. He'll go to jail for killing his wife. And you'll get better. But with time. I will kill him. I am an adult now. I, I can do it. I'll adventure. That's right. But you need answers. Ask him. Ask him why he did it. Why did you kill her? Who? Mom. You were beating her. You were beating her constantly. And then... Son, you're just sick. 
Why did you come back here? This is my home. No, you like being here. Here, you remember abusing your son and beating your wife. You couldn't satisfy her anymore, but you only felt like a male when beating her up, right? Shut up, bitch. All women are bitches. And Tamara was a cunt too. She got what she deserved. No, no, no. Here you go. Hands. That's it. Thank you, Lieutenant. How are you? I don't need that blanket. You're the third person bringing it to me. How's Sergi? Fine. He would get a concussion if he had brains. It's all my fault. I brought him here. If you didn't bring him here, then... Ilian would kill Yakushev. Ilian is a deeply unfortunate and sick person. That's why he'll go to a loony bin and not to jail. Why didn't you tell me where you were going? Because it's my personal business. Besides, you were busy. Listen to me carefully, please. There is nothing and there can be nothing between me and Lisa. Fine. Right now, I am interested in another woman. Good for you. So we Episode Thirteen. What a day. Klavdia. What is going on in the international arena? Klavdia?
You're talking to yourself, Semenovic. This is bad. It means you lack communication. You need to go out more often. I didn't mean that. Maybe something happened. Clava is not at her post. Don't worry. What could have happened? Clava, she'll outlive both of us. She is the Highlander in a skirt. No, maybe something happened to her? Don't make things up. Unknown caller. Coming. Yeah? It's a fine day, princess. Not anymore. A punishment awaits you. I prohibited you from going after the psycho from the pharmacy and you didn't listen. For that, I will punish you. Look out of the window. It's a riddle. What is missing from the yard? And what shouldn't be there? What did you do to Auntie Clava? Me? Nothing. You did all of it. What does that mean? You took it out on an innocent old lady for my crime. Looks like you have problems with logic, don't you think? I don't think so. It's obvious. You want to punish me, but you hurt a person who doesn't like me, to put it mildly. Well, I should have taught her a lesson just for that. But this time, my intention was different. Yes, the old lady didn't do anything bad to you. But today, she'll die. Because of you. Anti Clava. Anti Clava. What happened? Hello? Good afternoon. Are you a friend or a relative? I'm her neighbor, Inga Stefan. I'll go with her. Stefan? Why are you so surprised about what her state then? You were the one to call us. You said that the old lady felt unwell. It's probably the heart. We were surprised. The door was open. She was lying here alone. There was nobody here. Was the door open? It's weird. Why? So you didn't call us? No, it wasn't me. Can you explain what happened to her? Looks like a hypertonic crisis. The heart rate is too high. In her age, it might lead to a heart attack, you know? In any case, we will hospitalize her. So, does she have any relatives? Yes, she has a son, but as far as I know, they are estranged. She needs to be checked for toxins. It might be poisoning. You said that you were sure that it wasn't a suicide attempt. I guessed. The lady is old. She doesn't go to the store that often. She could eat something out of date, and that could provoke. Yes, you're right. So, will you go with us? Yes, I will. Fine. We're waiting for you then. What? Let everybody in, let nobody out. Got it? You have to make a good service dog. At least figuratively, right? Although you understand only the eat command for now, right? Right? That's it. It's boring to sit at home. I was thinking, if I can't do detective work right now, 
активной работой сейчас заниматься нельзя, так я... Maybe I can help you somehow. I don't know, keep Spider in check. Put the screws on somebody. You can do general management in the office. Like the flight control center. Yeah, keep shooting the bull, Flyboys. Did Inga come in? What is it? It's only 9.10, and the Major is twitchy already, like a hen over her chicken. It's because caring for the subordinates is our everything. Clavdia Vasilets. A probable heart attack. Yes, Inga, I already remembered. We are talking for the third time this hour. The patient is stable. I'm telling you, it's not a heart attack. I'll tell you about the accurate diagnosis after a full examination. Tell me, maybe she needs anything. Medicines, consumables, or a consultation of an expert in some field. My parents own a private clinic. Maybe I could help. We have everything for now. We will call you if we'll need something. Don't worry. This generation will outlive us. Tell me, when will you know the exact diagnosis? We'll call you. Maybe you'll call her relatives. Yeah, thank you. Yeah? Where are you? I have an emergency. I'm at the hospital. It's dead. Where is my second phone with that thing? Damn it. I left it at home. I beg your pardon. May I use your phone? Yeah, I guess. Thank you. Where to? Let's go. I'll tell you later. Let's go, then. I have troubles with my phone. Come to my place. Urgently. It's Yan again. Inga, you have troubles with your head. What is it? Spy games. Are you checking our qualification? I'd laugh but the situation is not great. A person got hurt because of me. Let's go. Double trespassing. Inga. With a break in. It's a felony. Tell that to Yan when you'll catch him. No break-ins. I have the keys. And the apartment isn't sealed. We need to find out what he has done to Auntie Clava. Do you understand that if he wanted to poison her, he wouldn't go ahead with the ambulance? Right? Auntie Clava settled in well. A great... Comfy sofa for watching the news. And she played her son for a good TV. R. Auntie Clava is quite the gossip. She knows everything about everybody in our neighborhood and our house. And she's interested in local and international news. Aha. Uh -huh. So what are we looking for? I think that he wanted to poison her, so we need to check the freshly opened food. I don't know, sweets, cookies, fruits, maybe some drinks, juice, alcohol, anything. Aha. Uh -huh. 
I don't get it. Why it was anti-Klava. I can get why Radishni. He was saying all that filth about me on his broadcasts. He was punished for that. But Auntie Klava, harmless old lady. Yes, she loved to gossip and said things about me, but I never cared about that, you know. Well, you need to understand why he chose her. Because she is neither your friend nor enemy, just a person that constantly catches your eye. And if something happens to her, you'll feel guilty for sure. Therefore, he is trying to get to me via my inner circle. He knows how important it is for me, and that it might unsettle me. He won't be able to do that. Okay, if we won't find anything here, then let it be so. Wait. I think I found something. Listen, they're not here, neither Inga nor Major. Only his dogs roaming around the office, and that's it. Well, I let Modi out. How? Accidentally, I opened the door and she ran out. I will go and look for her before Major's here, right? Maybe Major and Inga went to the brass or something. No. I've already been to Speeda at the reception. Both won't pick the phones up. Maybe they... They what? Do you think they plan a romantic date at the workplace? Come on. Maybe. They're having a serious talk. What if something happened? Look. Major was looking for Inga in the morning, and now he disappeared himself. What if this thief, Inga's psycho, we didn't hear from him for a long time. Yeah, for a long time. Just for a couple of days. Besides, that's not a fact. I mean that, Inga's secretive, and doesn't want to involve us. Maybe she didn't tell us something. Listen, go to hell, you two. I hope they do have a romantic date. Who's got a date? Well, you and Inga, Sergi. Anyway, that asshole turned up again. Who did? Who did? Yan, that's who. What's up, Herr Major? Hype again? Pavlik, I won't ask you about what hype is. Come on. Put the guitar back in the case and hurry to the detectives. Can you tell me about it on the phone? I'll start faster that way. Good try. Move it. We're waiting. Your guitar will wait. You'll receive a task. Wow. Did he put a camera here or something? You know I'll check it, Herr Major. If I find it, you'll get such a payback. Hello? Hello? Well, we have another call from Yan. To Inga. And my gizmo didn't work again. Damn, how does Yan do it? I'm a genius. But I'd go to his workshop. Don't be upset. I didn't switch the gizmo on, but I recorded the whole conversation. After we finish, I'll send it to you for analysis. Guys, I'd like to continue if you finished exchanging niceties. Okay, de jure. Don't have a case. Except for Yan's calls, we have no proof that Mrs. Clavia Vasilets, born 38, was deliberately poisoned. According to the doctor, she had a hypertonic crisis that led to a heart attack. At her age, it's a usual thing. He's good. He's good. I meant that Yan. He's always good. I wish I could go to his workshop too. But, de facto, we do have a case. Inga and I studied the crime scene. I mean, we examined the apartment of the victim. I don't get it. Did you and Inga go to the victim's apartment without a warrant?
We examined the victim's apartment with her son's permission. Fading Vasilets, whom I called. Right. Everything's clear. You got a permission to examine the apartment from the victim's son. And the keys. Over the phone. Go on, Major, sir. And we found evidence. Yes. Melishko. Since 98. Yes, I see the mail. No, I didn't check those materials yet. Anything you can. It's very important. It concerns one of ours. Yes, a female one. So smart, aren't you? That's it, I'm waiting. Anyway, is the task clear? Major, you're a master of curveballs. How can I trace a box of chocolates? How? You go and trace it. In the box, there is a paper with a stamp of the social security. Go there, take the senior lieutenant with you, and talk to the local aunties and the ladies from the social security, like a fairy tale. They love young and handsome guys. Why me? Because you're young and handsome. Why not? Are you scared of the ladies from the social security? Did you ever do business with them? That's right. If you did, you'd be scared too. Okay, let's go. Sergei, you're responsible for carrying out the task. Didn't I tell you that I'll be in charge here? Just don't overcharge yourself. Why are we in such a hurry? We have things to do. Look, Oleg. Yes. You gave tasks to everybody. Did you ignore me or something? Misha, question the witnesses. It's your favorite. Start with the veterans. What veterans, Major? When did you last see a veteran? I mean a real one. Not a fake one at the parade. Start with the war children. They get some benefits. They are always promised something. Tell them that you're collecting information for a database. Start with the lonely ones who don't somebody to talk with. Maybe they saw our auntie with some stranger. Maybe someone visited her. They must have seen somebody if a stranger came by. I understand that the entire yard knows Andy Klava. And all the neighbors have no doubts, Captain. Andy Klava can even gossip with Grandpa Fima from the third entrance. He is a veteran, and he went deaf back in 44, but she's fine with that. The Grandpa is the luckiest one. Let's go. Oh, Inga, how's the grandma, really? She will live. The doctors said that the ambulance was called right on time. What a creep. I mean that Yen. He was right on the dot. He's very good. Shvak is right. Do you want to go to his workshop? No, I'll try to meet with him without a cue. And maybe we'll give the guy last rites prematurely. Yeah. Why are you laughing? I could eat a horse now. Listen, I don't want to be in charge now. Let's go and have lunch. What? We'll skip work. We already did that. Any objections? I don't have any, Major, sir. Let's go then. Hey, youngsters. Why are you so sour? Stephanie. Are you working on the ladies from the Social Security again? Well, Lieutenant, don't be shy in front of them. Tell them a compliment. They love it. Yeah, her major is doing well. He got everybody to work. Except for Inga and himself, of course. Where are they, by the way? I can't find them. I can't say about the whole directorate, but I think they're on a date. Looks like Sergi needs to moonlight as a fortune teller. A date? But it's working hours. How can it be? He threw us into a crocodile pool and went out with a girl. Stephanie, how do you call that? Kid, that's called Cest la vie. Or Church is la femme. In our case, it makes no difference. So go to your femmes in the social security. Maybe they are not so bad. Let's go and exercise the social services.
Hello, where can we have a seat? Come in, this table is free. Thanks. Shall we go all in? I think we can do without. Without casualties? Yes. Business lunch. Let it be a business lunch. Maybe I'll be able to take you out somewhere on the weekend. We'll see. If nobody gets killed before the weekend. I get scared myself when I say that. Well, you get it. I don't have any objections if everything's going to be fine. You know, I feel like a patient now, who got an unfavorable diagnosis. Two business lunches, please. What will you be drinking? Oh, will we have some compote? Oleg, it's weird. We've worked together for quite some time, and you still don't remember what I drank. Double espresso without milk or sugar, with tall foam. And a double compote. If anything, I'll drink it. And that's it. Amazing. You're good at small details. Yes. You even know that I take it without milk or sugar. I guess that's professional. Very professional, yeah, very professional. One second. Your uncle is just in time. Andre, good afternoon, sir. No, I'm close by. I'll be back at the directorate soon. If you're close by, then be back not soon but right now, Major. I have a meeting at the ministry in an hour, and we need to talk. I'm waiting for you. Yes, sir. On my way. What are you busy with, Oleg? Something urgent. Well, Andrew thinks so. Shame we couldn't have lunch together. I hope it's not the last time. It's not. Thanks for the business lunch. And I'll try to live up to your hopes. And eat both portions. Bon appetite. It's on me. Wow. Mr. Morgan, they're ready for you. Good afternoon, Inga. Good afternoon. You look great. Well, as always. May I? Yes, of course. Anyway, your admirer is weird, Inga. To order a business lunch. My God, next time he'll take you out for burgers. Besides, he left his lady alone. You know, it's not up to you to judge. I beg your pardon, you didn't introduce yourself. Do we know each other? Of course. Who do I think I am? You had so many patients than the FBI. And now you work at the police. Of course, you don't remember me. Solov. Andrei Solov. Last year, before your trip to the States, I came to you for consultations. I had some disagreement with my second wife, you know? Significant age gap. A hick. Yes, I remember you now, Andrei. You came alone without your spouse. No wonder I didn't recognize you. You've changed a lot. For the better, of course. You used to be utterly depressed, but now... Well, only thanks to you, Inga. Only thanks to you. Thanks.
May I entry? Yes. Come in, have a seat. There are two issues. Very important. We badly need to resolve them. Let's start from the first one. It's selfish. In the literal sense. When will you finally give my secretary the list of food for Matilda, as you promised long ago? Because she is eating everything and feels unwell then. I wish you could see your face. What movie it was in? It's ineffable, said the dog looking at a babab. You have the same ineffable expression, Oleg. I'll give the full list to Svetlana in the late afternoon. Will that be all why you called me in so urgently for, Andrei? No, it was a joke. A bad one. Let's get down to business. When will I see the Inga Psycho's case materials? Do you need a special invitation? I have no words to express my gratitude. Inga, after your consultations, I realized that a real high-class psychotherapist really does miracles. Can you remind me the gist of your issue? As far as I remember, you've only been a couple of consultations. Yes, only two. Imagine, I understood everything after just two conversations. Inga, you made me a happy person. I started living a full family life. When I turn to you, my skank, I beg your pardon. My second wife was behaving just like a skank. But now she is just perfect. She does housework, keeps the house in order. A sex with me at my first whim. And what sex it is. She even started talking about kids. She did. Not like before. Right. How would she be cheating with a tummy? But now, everything's different. I explained the party policies to her, using fingers. It's really simple, honey. I have a crapload of evidence about how you were cheating. If you keep showing off, I'll throw you out into your crapload with no panties on. Well, I'm glad for you. It means you solved your family issue on your own. I don't understand how, how I helped you. What are you grateful to me for? You did it all yourself. What do you mean? I'm grateful to you for your most valuable advice. I'm sorry, yeah. It's not the best time to talk. Can I call you back? Yes, Chtifi, I'll be waiting. Mr. Solov, I couldn't recommend any of that to you. Really? It seemed to me that I could see again after your consultations. It's impossible. Any family psychologist could not recommend you this way of solving your family issues. Yes, but it works, right? I don't know. Let it be your own know-how. I'll give you some advice. Change the way you talk to your wife. It won't end well otherwise. I'm serious. And now I need to go. I'm late for work. Yes, I understand. You're a busy person. I'm so glad that we met. Maybe we'll meet again sometime. When you'll have the time. We'll hang out, talk, have a drink. It's so pleasant to have the company of a smart and beautiful woman. Thanks, but I don't lead a private practice now. But we could meet as good friends. I mean, I wanted to say that we may become friends. I have a big flaw. I am very picky while making friends. Goodbye. Have a nice day. So that's how it is. Well, 
Your life is in full swing, with a baseball bat to the head. When were you going to tell me about it? Andri, there is nothing to tell. There are no developments. There was an emergency with her neighbor today, and she only called me once. The first step is the beginning. He is progressing before our own eyes. More and more each time. Do you understand what's going on? If he got to the neighbor already. Yes, his obsession progresses. I think he'll dare to meet with Inga soon. Don't worry, nothing will happen to her. I'll be able to protect her. Fine, go back to work, Major, and report to me about everything. Yes, sir. Where were you, by the way? I'm sorry. Where were you when I called you in? I was having lunch. Inga and I went out to have lunch. Oh, and how often do you have lunches with consultant Stefan, Major? Today it was the first time. But I'm definitely planning to repeat my offer. In the nearest future. Planning, my ass. Yeah, hi. I'm sorry, I couldn't talk. Any news? Why is there no video connection? Because I was at lunch, and now I'm late for work. Talk to me, don't leave me hanging. Do you remember about agreement? It's an exchange. You'll tell me what's going on and I'll tell you what I found. And I really don't like what I found. Yeah, I remember our agreement, but I really don't have the time now. I do, Stiffy. I'm having a coffee break. Call me later if you're busy. Talk. Dan, please tell it to me now. Did something else happen to you? Do you remember praising my intuition? So yeah, my intuition tells me that you're in deep shit. Okay, Stiffy, listen. The Melishko family left for the USA in August of 98. They settled in California, what to be exact, before you asked me. Yes, they could afford it. During your turbulent 90s, is that how you call it over there? Janity Maleshko was able to amass no less than a couple of millions of dollars and managed to smartly move his assets out of the country. What about children? It's a very weird story. This family is full of weird stories. Their elder son Alexander, age 16, died a couple of months before moving stateside. Suicide. He threw himself off the staircase. Younger, Mitro, age 13, went to the States with his parents. That's where another shady story begins. Right on arrival, the boy's parents. How do you say it? Got rid of him. Until he was 21, Dmitro, now Damon Maleshko, stayed in the closed therapeutic boarding school for troubled teens. Do you know what it is, Stifi? Yes, it's a milder counterpart of a juvenile prison. Simply put, an alternative for jail. Exactly. However, Damon must have been an outstanding guy, because after leaving that establishment in 06, he enrolled and brilliantly graduated the IT department of Princeton. Yes, Stifi, that Princeton, your alma mater. Did I count it all correctly? A part of Damon's stay coincides with your studies there, right? Go on. I'm almost done. The only thing left is a loud and shady end of Maleshko family. In June 2011, Damon and his parents went out to sea in their personal yacht. There was no crew on board. Father and son steered the vessel on their own. It's unknown what exactly happened there but the yacht exploded. As you may guess, there were no witnesses left. Were the bodies identified? You see, there wasn't much to identify. It took a long time to find the debris. And not all of it. I am waiting for an explanation, Stiffy. Dan. I'll tell you everything tonight. Okay? I promise. Fine, Stiffy. I'm waiting for your call. Be careful. I love you. Auntie Clava, you're funny, young man. Everybody in the neighborhood knows her. I believe she lived here before the current house was built. The people are joking that the house was built around Auntie Clava's bench. It's funny. So she is a local site, isn't she? Seems like she's held in high regard here. May I ask you why you're interested? 
You see, I, I wanted to know whether she is a reliable person. Can she be trusted in financial matters? I heard that she was selling her apartment, so I'm looking around. It can't be Auntie Clava selling the apartment. I don't know. Her son Vadim told me about it. You shouldn't listen to him. He dreams of selling his mother's crib. But Auntie Clava is very principled and very independent despite her advanced age. No, she won't move in with Fadek. What a nasty day. This is what happened. Tell me. Do you know I thought that people respect her here? I came to her yard yesterday, and I was told that she was sent a box of chocolates from the social security, like to an honorary resident. So funny. Who told you that? People in the yard. We, to Auntie Clava, a box of chocolates. No, it must be a joke. The girls will die of laughter when I tell them about it. We'd rather send her some arsenic. Come on. Yep. She caused us so much trouble. But it looks like you're in vice. The stamp is from the Social Security, but it's not ours. It's from a different district. Where did you get it? It was in the box. Thanks, Ereda, for the tea and the useful conversation. Looks like Vadim lied to me about the apartment. Or maybe he wanted to talk his mother into it. Thanks anyway. I wanted to repay you. Maybe it is our stamp. Let me have a closer look at it. You really are incredible. I left you in a nice place just for an hour, and somebody already tried to pick you up. How? You know, I think I got mad not because of him. Well, I feel sorry for his wife. He's a sleazy guy, but... These news from the States... Look. When you decide... To wreck your nerves next time, remember that you have a real reason for that. You have a great way of supporting people. It works though. Yeah, mom. Hello? Is everything all right? Mom and dad are fine, princess. I'm watching over them. But we need to have a serious conversation about you, princess. Talk to me then. There's too much garbage around you. Like that pig in the restaurant. However, that's not a problem. Will you solve this problem like the one with my neighbor? Will you be killing all people I know? People you know? No, only those who stand in your way, and I. Can you send me a list, just for me to understand who interferes with my life? Except for you, of course. So much character. That's why I love you, and I. You promised me a date. I'm getting tired of waiting. You're right, and I. Let's talk when we meet. I'll choose the time and place that you like, of course. I love you and kiss you, my princess. See you soon. Come in, come in. All the data from the social security is at Spiders. He has already started to work. Well done. Yes. Sure, we're on our way. Well, people, we have a body. It's a businessman, Andrei Solov. They say it's suicide.
Episode 14. Do you have something interesting? You can see that the deceased wasn't denying anything to himself. The guy was quite wealthy, that means he was respected. I don't understand one thing. Why did you call us to a suicide case? And the whole crowd at that. Not the whole. Where's Sergi? He's still on a sick leave. Oh, I see. He is on a sick leave when we're at the directorate. And when we need to go to a call with a dead body, he's... Let's go already. Well, is it a suicide? As far as I can say before the autopsy, it is. Aha. Uh -huh. Not a single note. What is the approximate time of death? 5.45 p.m. How can you be so precise? There was a gunshot. Deceased's widow is in the kitchen. She ran in here on hearing the shot. I see. <laughs> Laelia, get it together. We have police in the house. Hello. 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 Major Mischenko, Directorate General of the Police, our consultant on grave crimes, Inga Stefan. I. Tina. Mr. Solov's secretary. Okay. This is Lyalia, Andri's wife. I'm sorry. His widow. Lyalia, can you testify? Can you hear us? We're from the police. I understand that she won't be able to testify. She's in shock. Yes, I'll go and call the doctor. Mr. Major. Just Major. Excuse me, Major. I can testify. I was with Lyalia when... When Andre fired a shot. Lyalia was opening the door for me at the time. Well, Dasha, is something wrong? I have no idea, Michaelo, but something is definitely wrong. Do you have doubts that it was a suicide? I don't to waste my breath now. The autopsy will tell. Okay. What is it? Was something broken? Where? It was found there, under the deceased's armchair. If something was broken, it could be done only there. There is a stain there as if something was wiped. The floor is a bit shiny. 
Smells like whiskey. Who wiped it? And why? I have no idea. Something is definitely amiss there. It's too clean, Misha. Too clean. There. Andre needed some papers from the office. And I brought them. And you're sure that you entered the house and heard a gunshot right away. And it was exactly at 5.45. Absolutely. Andre. Highly values being on time. Valued. Yeah. I had to be here at 5.30, but got into traffic. Well, I was waiting for Lyalia to open the door. I was constantly looking at my watch, and Lyalia opened the door at 5.44 sharp. We just entered the hall and... And something went bang in the office. And what did you do? We got scared at first. Lyalia froze even. Then we rushed to the office. Andri was lying in an armchair there. Did you realize that he was dead right away? No. Lyalia froze. She couldn't move at all. Then, I approached and saw a wound on his temple, blood on his shirt, and a gun on the floor. What did you do then? Did you call the police or the ambulance? Are you from the police? How did I? You came here, and I didn't meet you. Andre wouldn't like that. Do you want some tea? No, no, thanks. Stay with the doctor. He'll help you. You need to calm down. Don't worry. Come on. I beg your pardon. Can I go with Lyalia? She is definitely not the smartest woman in the world, but she loved him to pieces. Did Andre love her as much? Of course. For her, he was like a prince for a Cinderella. We'll continue later. Very weird. When I was talking to Mr. Solov, I get the impression that their story was the one of a prince and a Cinderella. I wonder why this prince called in the secretary with papers first and then shot himself to provide his wife with an alibi. Or the contrary, the secretary provided an alibi for his widow. Well, let's go. Did you forget? I am driving. I'd like to accompany you. You'll go, with guards and the escort car like a real princess. It's not the best joke. Q. Well, it's not a suicide. There's no need for an autopsy. I did Mr. Solov's autopsy on the first day we've met. Our individual had a huge number of complexes. He found a victim in his wife and was compensating his suppressed wishes on her. So, I think that she killed him. Lyalia. Can we hand the case over to the court? Wait. Solov overdid it somewhere. He said something rude or overreacted. It became the last straw. But the secretary turned out to be faster, smarter, and slyer. I think we need to wait until morning and think it over. I'll go to the pool in the meantime. I deserve it. Sure. And... Good evening. Good evening, a night swim, as usual. Yes, Lyosha. It's a cure for my insomnia. Will you leave it in the safe again? Yes, there's no reception in the pool anyway. Thanks.
We're closed. It's 22.20. Come tomorrow at 8. Damn it! It is indeed late. Year, your timing sucks, man. I am saying, your timing is bad. Lyosha. Is something wrong with the electricity? Fine, fine, I got it. I am coming out. You can swim some more, princess. Yeah. I will wait. Thanks for arranging our date so fast. Do you still think that it was a suicide? One year ago. Yes. I see. <clears throat> you know, I was always sure that good cops have intuition. But you don't have it. It happens. It does. You worry about the wrong things again, princess. And I, your guard will just sleep for a bit. We have a more important topic to discuss. Isn't it common to tell each other about ourselves on the first date? Is it our first date? What about the Snow White at the Lyceum? Yes. It was an important moment. That was when I realized that you were my princess. However, it wouldn't call our first meeting a date. Fine, if it's our first date. Tell me about yourself. Don't fake it, princess. Didn't your cowboy from the FBI tell you enough about me? You're overestimating him. Agent Morgan is not a genius, of course, but he's quite good. Otherwise, I wouldn't let him be close to you for so long. And sleep with me. And sleep with you, among other things. But the main thing is to be with you. To be in your life, in your thoughts. And that's strictly my prerogative. There won't be competitors here. And you know about it well. Do you remember what happened to your friend, the swimmer? Urgently. Send an operative group to the sports club at the 12 Stasenko Street, and an ambulance too. I'm already on my way. Why did you kill your brother? I didn't even know him. Because he dared to laugh at my love. Shit, bro. So, you're in love. 15 years ago. With whom? Give it back. Yeah, the girl is first class. I can't say otherwise. Dude, you have to grow up a lot to get her. You're two heads shorter than her. Tomorrow, I'll tell everybody at school about it. They will die of laughter. Better yet, I'll tell Stefan right away. That girl lives. Without knowing that she has such a knight by her side. Fine, ain't I? 
You can come out. I can see that you're quite cold. Wait. Is your new name really Yam? Don't disappoint me, princess. Ying. I'm Yan only for you. Ying and Yang are one, don't you get it? Like light and darkness. They are inseparable. One can't exist without the other. You're a romantic too, right? Explain how you'll use it all for real. Just like that. When you're ready, the entire world will be by our feet. I'll never be ready for that. You're almost ready right now. By the way, I wanted to tell you long ago, your psychology lectures at Princeton were very good. I listened to all of them until the end. I admired them. Yes, of course. We'll do everything we can. Goodbye. Good luck. How are you? I've been better. It's a shame that I won't recognize him. How is Lyosha, the guard? He's fine. Came to his senses. Called himself an ambulance. And then fell asleep again. Hefty dude. Let's go, I'll take you home. Listen, is he doing all that just to show off before you? Something like that. Yeah. Actually, he's a genius manipulator. He believes that we're an ideal couple. I mean, we can be an ideal couple if he finishes my training. Okay, ying and ying. Yeah, two is one. We can't live without each other. Kind of. Yes. I'm still waiting for your call, Stiefi. Did something happen? I'm not home yet. I'll be there in half an hour. I'll call you. And I beg you, please stop calling me, shh. Give me that, give me the phone. Hello, Dan. We haven't met yet, but Inga is fine. I'm seeing to that. Shtifi, please call me when you're alone. Love you, kiss you. I'm waiting. That's it. Why are you doing this? What am I doing? Why are you being so informal? That's it. Now I am all yours for sure. All mine. Why is your boss taking you home in the middle of the night? A competitor. I won't tolerate it. Dan, cool down, please. Jealousy doesn't suit you. It's not your strong suit. You wanted me to tell you everything. I can tell you everything right now. I'm listening, Shtifi. Yeah. Come in. Auntie Clava. Oh. Inga. Hello. Hello. Hello, honey. This is for you. Vitamins. Oh, thanks. Sit down. Sit down. Girls, this is the Inga that I told you about. She saved my life. Stop it, Auntie Clava. Anybody would do the same. If a person is unwell, anyone will help, right? Right? Yes. 
Well, not everybody, not everybody would do that. It wasn't me, it was the doctors. You practically pulled me up from the grave. Nope. The doctors told me everything they said. If your neighbor wasn't so fast, we'd be giving you last rites, Granny. Thank God everything turned out fine. How are you feeling? Fine. The doctor said they might discharge me today. Great. I'm only talking about myself. Tell me, oh, are you? Come on. Well. Hello, Sergi. Hi, how are you? Well, I can't do detective work. Listen, if there's something to do there, I'm always ready. Look, Sergi, we got recordings from the CCTV at the sports club. Check them out. Okay, what am I looking for? Yan's shown up again. I don't believe in miracles, but he might surface somewhere. Yes, sir. He's normal. They're bullshitting us. It definitely wasn't a suicide. The shot was point blank. There are burn marks, but fewer than there should be. And there are no traces of gunpowder on his hands. Something else? Something else? Well, there's the angle of the bullet that entered the skull. To fire in this way, Salav would have to twist his hand in a very unnatural manner. I got it. Thanks. We'll go now. Thanks. By the way, the criminalists are at a loss too. Well, my head's off again. Well done. You were right about the murder. Widow's motive is obvious. But what about Lyalia's alibi? It's still there. I'm thinking of criminal conspiracy. With the secretary. I don't think that the motive is that unambiguous, but the conspiracy. One moment. How can I help the most beautiful employee of the police? I need a biography of an Olga Solova, age 27. Are we looking for something in particular? When and how that Cinderella met Prince Solov? It's three clicks worth of work. I'll call you in five minutes. Specifically you, Inga. Thank you. He will call you. I see, Tina. I see. You're so young, but you know people so well. What relations did he have with his wife? Did they fight often? Tell me as a woman. Was Lily a drama queen? A bitch. They didn't fight at all. Lyalia is a ninny, but she knew who is earning the butter on her bread. On the contrary, she was always trying to please Andrei. She even fired the housekeeper to look after her beloved on her own. Besides, to tell you the truth, Andrei wouldn't tolerate drama. Uh -huh. Was he very strict to his young wife? Not that strict. But Lelia knew her place. Well, they were fine. Don't you think that Yan could have fed Solov? I thought about that. But no, there are at least two reasons. First, we were called to examine Solov's body right after Yan's call. Secondly, he'd boast of that to me at the pool. There is nothing on the cameras from the sport club. Oh, I forgot to tell you. They installed those cameras just for show. One doesn't work at all. The one above the reception is looking at the ceiling. And the third one is fake. It's funny. Yup. Yes. Thanks, Grigori. We're on our way. Yes. Sergi, go to the criminalists. They have something. We'll do, Major, sir. And, and Michaela is talking with Solov's housekeeper now, right? Yes. Kristina is mistaken. Nobody fired me, especially Lialia. I mean Olga. She is a nice woman and was looking well after Andri. But she wouldn't be able to clean such a huge house on her own. So, we were doing general cleaning with her once a week. They were married for a year and a half. Was it always like this? No. 
A year ago, Endry decided that, and Lyalia. Olga supported him. Before that, I used to come in every three days. And was buying the food, too. And a year ago, Master decided that his wife could manage on her own. He must have been angry with his young wife to tighten the screws. He pinned a household like that on her. Master always was strict but fair. He paid generous bonuses. He always remembered about my birthday or New Year. Good man. Was Lyalia not a very good housewife? What can I say? Lyalia is a good woman, but she wasn't the one for Andri. He brought her from the boondocks. But Master never offended her. I think he even loved her and tolerated all her tricks. Tricks? Was she allowing herself something? No. He wouldn't tolerate that. When she came to the capital, she was like a puppy on a walk. Happy and jumpy. She wanted to see everything. Ah, clubs and restaurants, I bet. No, cinema and theater, because she loved it all. But Andre quickly explained to her that cinema will always be there. But a good wife should look after the house and care for her husband. Were they thinking about kids? What I don't know, I don't know. But if Andre wanted to... Well, the story of your Cinderella, as one of my friends used to say, is full of shit and sorrow. She was born and grew up in a family of hereditary drunkard proletarians. After the ninth grade, she went to study at the trade school and then ran off from them to a dormitory. Then she got a job at a factory and got married at 18. Very unsuccessful. Yeah. She found the same deadbeat alcoholic, just 30 years younger. Her husband was beating her. For sure. Regularly, as her medical file states. But, by the way, she never filed a complaint against her husband. Right? A classical syndrome of a beaten woman. Yes. How did she manage to meet Solov? And this is the start of a real Cinderella story. There. I'll send you the photos now. Have a look. Solov saw Lyali on a business trip and brought her with him to the capital like a real hussar. And not on some ragged horse. But on a real Mercedes. And... Nobody has ever seen Lyalia in her hometown after that. Solov's lawyers filed for a divorce with her first husband remotely. She never saw her first husband too. This is the end of the story. Thank you for listening. Oh no, wait. I'll send you a couple photos now, fresh from the press. What do you mean by fresh? from Solov's 50th birthday. They had bears, gypsies, strawberries and chocolate, black and red caviar. Everything as it should be. So it's not a suicide, right, Doc? It's not, Captain. Come on. They tried to place Solov's fingers on the gun, but they did a bad job. He couldn't hold the gun that way. And what about those small shards? They come from a broken glass. We found it in a bin in the hall. Looks like somebody tried to collect the shards but missed some of them. They didn't have enough time. What was in the glass? Expensive whiskey. There was a wipe stain by the table too. By the way, we also found a sponge that was used to wipe whiskey off the floor. Yes, yes, there it is. His business was doing fine. He was even planning to open a new office. It means we may forget about the version of a suicide. Sasha, what do you have from the cameras around the house? Yeah, at noon, Solov's wife went out. She was out for two hours. At 1700, Solov arrived himself. The secretary came in the evening. She came to find a dead body. Okay, excuse me, I need to make a call.
Spider, yeah, please check Lyelia's medical file again. I'm interested in everything. Pregnancies, abortions, miscarriages, and the last visit to the gynecologist. Yeah, I'm on it. Aha, uh -huh. thanks, I'm waiting. Anyway, we have two suspects. It's the widow and the secretary. Inga thinks that the widow shot him. I think that there was a criminal conspiracy between the widow and the secretary. I get the widow. She will inherit all the money. But what will secretary get? The secretary could come to early and see Lyalia standing over the body. And then either Lyalia could strike a deal with Tina or Tina could strike a deal with Lyalia. Yeah? Inga, you're definitely an oracle. It's a sad story. Two miscarriages with the first husband. Due to beatings, as I understand. And an abortion for the same reason. And with Solov. Everything is clean with Solov. No pregnancies. But, yesterday, Lyalia went to the ultrasound. Pregnancy of eight weeks was confirmed. Thanks, Spider. You're the best. Well, Inga, do you have something to tell us? Now, yes. The puzzle is complete now. Solov was definitely killed by Lyalia. The motive here isn't the money, but domestic violence. A person can be violated not only physically. Moral tortures are no less painful. And you can't document them. Then why didn't she just pack her things and leave him? She just had nowhere to go. That's it. Lyalia lived under severe psychological violence from Solov. She is three months pregnant now. Yesterday, her pregnancy was confirmed. She came to her husband, told him about it. He must have reacted to it in such a disgusting way that she lost it. Insults, fear, maybe hormonal failure provoked this terrible tragedy. Look what happened to her in a year and a half with Solov. So, it meant that Doe has nothing to do with it. I believe she wasn't thinking about money at that moment. But you can't say the same about Tina. That was in the right place in the right time. She thought that she could gain a lot from the shocked widow. Yeah, that's great. Send her right to the interrogation room and bring him to my office. I know that she won't talk without him. Don't worry. Okay, that's it. Solov's widow came to testify, with a lawyer. I bet that it was Tina who sent her a lawyer. They were together yesterday, and Tina had a lot of time to talk Lyalia into it. That's great. Then I'll talk to him first, and you'll talk to the widow if you can. It's a deal. I don't quite understand why you separated me from my client, Major. I wanted to know the conditions of Mr. Solov's will. He had one, didn't he? A month ago, I drafted a testament for Andrei. He didn't have one before. Why did he decide to do it? Arguments with his wife. They were planning a baby. I even thought that Lily might be pregnant already if Andrei decided to. He called it. Having an insurance. To cut the long story short, all his fortune goes to the child after coming of age. There are constant target payments for the baby. And the money is managed by an executor. The widow has a right to live in the house and raise the child. Under the condition that she never marries again. It means he left her without a penny. Why are the conditions so strict? I don't want to slander Andrei's name. We were friends for many years. But he got burned with his first wife, and with Lilia, he was twice shy. He was insanely jealous of her. Were there any reasons? Absolutely none. Ollie is a decent girl. And Andrei... He, six months after the wedding, he went off the rails. She even went shopping only with the driver. 
He didn't let her go anywhere in a year. She was going out only with him. Sergei, it wasn't Olga who turned to you. Mr. Solov's secretary turned to you. I can see that you want to help your client. Let me tell you how we see this case and you'll decide what's best for her. Where's Sergi? He'll be here in a moment. Olga, don't worry. And we can talk in the meanwhile. Yeah. I won't talk without a lawyer. It's not on the record. Did you love your husband, Lyalia? Very much. Andre was. He was so kind. He did so much for me. He gave me everything. He saved me. Saved you from what? From your first husband's abuse. I really wasn't worthy of Andre. Who he is? And who am I? But he tolerated it all. Tolerated what? Well, who I am, a gray mouse. I don't know how to behave myself. It was a shame for him to go out with me. I was always doing everything wrong around the house. And even in bed, I was a plank. Calm down. You can't worry. You get it. You wanted to have a child so bad. Yesterday, your pregnancy was confirmed. Of course, you were happy. How did you tell your husband about it when he came back home? I... I brought him whiskey. As intended. He goes to the office. And I follow him with a tray. And I told him there. How did he react? He said that he wanted a DNA test. That I was a whore and that he wasn't sure that the baby was his. I can't believe that Andrew was behaving with her that way. Looks he wasn't that sincere with you. I need to talk to my client. She will sign a full confession, of course. But defense will insist on a crime of passion. Of course. Certainly. I also recommend talking to our psychologist. She insisted that your client was under psychological abuse from her husband from the very beginning and that she committed the crime of passion. Major, sir. Yeah. I beg your pardon. I watched the cameras from Solid's house again. Tina came 10 minutes after the emergency call from the address. Well, there's your main trump card. She called the ambulance and the police. That means that she was going to confess right away. How can we nail Kristina, though? I think I know how. If my friend Andrew didn't lie to me, of course. Miss Tereshkinko, you're suspected of participating in a murder of Mr. Solov and also in giving false testimony and blackmailing his widow. Did Lyalia tell you that? She's deranged? Who are you listening to? That, as you said, deranged girl confessed in the murder of her husband. And you were covering up for her. Why? Or do you two have problems with seeing reality? Don't be rude to me, Major. You'll get me for false testimony. But, I did it out of mercy. One fool helped another. I covered her up as a fellow female. And, her husband was quite an asshole. Dozens of witnesses will confirm it. He was your lover, wasn't he, Tina? 
Why do you think so? Is every secretary her boss's lover? Not right away and not obligatory, but in your case, it's evident. Besides, you even look like her. She looks like me. Secondly, Solov wasn't a very picky man. He courted every skirt he could reach. Thirdly, even now it's hard for you to hide your dislike for Lyalia. So what? Well, oh. There we go. We got it. Dumb bitch. Why do they call her Lyalia? Yeah. We found it, Major, sir. Just as the lawyer said. At least, Solov didn't play him here. This paranoiac installed a surveillance camera and bugs in his bedroom and in his wife's bedroom. We've checked them out already. Christina gave a real performance for the widow. Don't be scared, girlfriend. I'll cover for you. Nobody will suspect nothing. I'm your alibi. Just don't open your mouth, Lyalia. Yes. Thanks. Great job. Come back here. You knew that Solov was abusing her. Didn't you feel sorry for her? Sorry. For that? Dumb sheep. I almost burst out laughing when I saw her crawling around the body and wiping whiskey from the floor. Because Andre won't like it. Lailia, open the door. Did something happen? Open up, I tell you. Is Andre in his office? Did you swallow your tongue? Or did Andre shorten it for you? Damn it, you retard. What have you done? Listen to me. We won't tell anybody that you killed him. I'll cover up for you. We need to clean up. Because people will come here now. The house is a mess. You're such a bad housewife. Calm down. We have to clean it up. We have to clean it up, everything. You think you've got me? Courts feel sorry for pretty girls now, especially if you cry convincingly. Tell about my hard fate. I can do it. But dumb Lyalia cannot. Do you know what's interesting? Lyalia doesn't have a penny. According to your lover's will, his wife gets nothing in case of his death. I don't understand at all why you went through these motions. Tina. Most likely she'll get a suspended sentence because she's pregnant, plus the heat of passion, plus her full confession, and you'll go to jail. Besides, Lyalia has got a very good lawyer that you found for her, by the way, and I think Olga is not just a client for him. Therefore, he'll tell her sad story very convincingly in court. In living color, I'd say. She doesn't eat salami. She eats fresh cucumbers. Does she like carrots? Well, shall we get some coffee? Sure. Do we have business? Why do you think that we need to have business? We can just talk about animals, and not only animals. Oh, it's good that I've found you. You have a visitor. Who? Well, the officer on duty couldn't reach you and said, please tell Inga that a gentleman came to see her. He says that she's expecting him. Nonsense. 
I'm not expecting anybody, but I was going to leave anyway. Thanks, Captain. Have a nice day. Bye. Listen, Oleg, he is with flowers, I mean. That guy is with a bouquet. I'm so glad to see you, Stiefy. I've missed you so much. Hello? How did you end up here? What a surprise. Well, it's not a surprise. How could I leave my beloved girlfriend in trouble? I took the first flight from Richmond to get to you. Episode 15 Yes, good morning. Something happened. Did something have to happen? I'm just calling you to say, good morning. Good morning, Special Agent Morgan. May I continue getting ready? You may, but hurry up. Why? I'm not being late. By the way, I can have some coffee. You'll do without coffee. Don't get cocky, Agent Morgan. Morning coffee is sacred. Exactly. That's why you will hurry. Come to the hotel to pick me up, and we'll have it together. Like I have nothing better to do, see you at the directorate, got it? I'll be there in 40 minutes. Will we get there in 15 minutes? We will. Another boss dropped in on me. Pick me up, drive me back. And they say there's no male chauvinism in the States. Simpletons. Oh. Looks like the guy really tried to create a new appearance for him. No, he would have spent a lot of money. Serious plastic surgery, a complete package of documents, huge financial transfers, complete secrecy, and so on and so forth. Too bad. His assets are totally fine. Maleshko Sr. had serious money on his offshore accounts. As you see, we're working. Maleshko is guilty of federal crimes. He did three murders stateside. The parents and the John Doe that he left behind of himself. We will find him. It's a question of time. By the way, about the time. I think you need to get back to the USA before we find him or determine his new identity. It's out of the question. It's out of the question, Dan. Maleshko is going to finish his job here. One way or another. That's right. One way or another. This option doesn't suit us. We'll finish this game on our own terms. And the states are better suited for this. And if you want to catch him, how do you say it here? With live bait. With live bait, then do it there. Let's be objective. The Bureau is a much better racket than the local police. You came here as a private person, didn't you? Not as a part of an investigation, right? Why did you come then? Not to play bodyguard. I understand everything. You came here to make me get back to the States. I'm worried about you. I came to make sure that you were fine. And I'm fine. Be sure, Inga, you'll leave this place with me. Have a great day, Inga. Somebody's waiting for you. Thanks. Have a nice day. Hello? Hello. 
You see, you shouldn't have been in a hurry. We'll have time for everything. Why stage this circus then? Pick me up, we'll have coffee. We could have met at the directorate. Why, Stifi? To have our morning coffee without your grumpy colleagues? They are not grumpy. They are good people. Yeah, I've noticed that. I was thinking of what will happen first. Will they make a hole in me with their gazes? Or will your boss do it with his piece? Let's go already. I'm so glad for you, Inga. Oh, Lord. You go, girl. You found such a guy? Polite and well-mannered. And he looks pleasant. Is he a foreigner or something? Tell me as a woman, Motia. What do you want in your life? What do you want to have? I'm just interested. How could I leave my beloved girlfriend in trouble? I took the first flight from Richmond to get to you. You're under my protection now, lady. Will you introduce us? Guys, please meet Morgan. Dan Morgan, special agent of the FBI. And the instructor of the academy, my good friend. This is Miss Jenko. This is Captain. I know who he is, the head of the Grave Crimes Unit, Major Miss Jenko. Captain Spock. Senior Lieutenant Terran. And one of the team's members is missing, right? Um, Captain Tarantiv. I mean Stepanik. Is it how you call him? I see you came well prepared, Mr. Special Agent. Just agent, or just Morgan, I won't object. Of course, I know who Steffi's working with. It's against my rules to leave my beloved girl without any supervision. Listen, you're overdoing it. Our relationship is not a military secret. Besides, I'm sure that your higher UPS also made inquiries about their new employee. Am I right, Mr. Major? Of course. I can't hire a person I know nothing about. Did you come here for long? We'll decide. Tell me about it. Let's go. Go, just go. Oleg, I beg your pardon. Shall we have dinner? Just don't take me to a tourist dive. Something intimate and tasty. Okay. Shtifi, what kind of a dumb nickname is it? What was that? It's all right. Spider will check that slick out tomorrow. Let me repeat myself if you didn't get me yesterday. I am not back to the States now, and yes, I don't agree that I'll be safer there. These are your emotions talking, and I want you to switch your head on. According to your logic, it's easier to catch Maleshko here. Thanks. Because he's more active here. Thanks. Coffee, please. One moment. But think, how do we know about it? You got it, yeah. I can see it. We know about his heroic deeds here from him and him alone. And frankly speaking, Maleshko keeps quiet about his stateside adventures. However, it doesn't mean that he is less active there. Really, if you go to the States now, he will follow you. He went too far to stop now. But in the States, we'll have a lot more resources to catch him. Dan, you won't change my mind. I told you everything. The story started here 20 years ago, and it needs to end here too. Maybe I'll have more luck with your uncle. If you have troubles with a self-preservation instinct, then he, while not having his own kids, has no problems with the basic parental instinct. I beg your pardon. Hello? Good morning, Inga. I want to remind you that the workday at the Directorate General of the Police starts at 9 a.m. Regardless of where and how the employees spent their evening. 
Major, sir, good morning. Um, excuse me. One second. The clock shows 8.53. I'll be there in five minutes. Copy that. The question is off then. I'm sorry, Oleg, are you outside now? The noise is very familiar. I just didn't see your car at the parking lot and thought that something has happened to you. I'm fine, thanks. I'm having coffee with Morgan. We're having breakfast. We'll be there soon. Fine, I got it. We're waiting. She is having breakfast. With Agent Morgan. Why did I call her such a retard? Why did he call? Stiffy, you're something. What? Genius insights at work while being completely blind in your personal life. Do I need to consider this as a compliment or an insult? I don't know yet. Explain it, then. That's unlikely. It's not in my best interests. Oh. Come here. Come here. Don't be afraid. This is Pasha. This is Pasha. You scared my dog. Let her get used to that. Salute, Herr Major. Hello. Well, look. A task bright and early in the morning. Yesterday, we received new information from the us about Maleshko, aka Yan. I see. He nicely staged his death back in 11. However, he started with another thing. He began with his brother and then he whacked his parents. Later, he withdrew a huge amount of money from his old man's account. Find out how, how much, why, and what for. Does it mean that he committed his first murder when he was 13? Looks like it. Damn. What a creep. Are you talking about Yen? Yup. Yes. You're wrong here. Judging from Inga's words, his brother that he pushed from the stairs wasn't his first. It was Inga's friend, the swimmer that he drowned. He killed him a month before his brother. But yes, that bastard grew up early. Listen, Misha, did you talk to Andy Klava's neighbors? Maybe they noticed something, or saw a stranger with her. Listen, is there a competition for the most beautiful couple among the employees of police? Somebody for the ad, like, join our ranks. I don't know the guy. But I'd vote for him. Herr Major, is that... Yeah, agent call them. Morgan. Good morning. 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 Have you come to us for long? FBI Special Agent Dan Morgan? We didn't expect to see you here. Nice to meet you in person, Spider. Hacking the server of the National Bank at 17 is really impressive. Police did a wise thing by letting a hacker of such level become their consultant. We do the same at the Bureau. I get it that you called for reinforcement from the FBI, Inga. Oh, like that. How about now? Okay. You're good, Yan. Even though you're a damn psycho. Okay, let's try this. Son of a bitch. Okay, okay. You want to compete with me? Don't you? How about this? Was he discharged? He has to come in today. Have a seat over here. Fine. We'll work something out. We'll be there in two hours. Salute. I'm at your workplace at last, Stiffy. It's not your style, of course. But you're right. How do you say it? Why make a nest in a place where you have no plans of staying? Don't project your experience on me, 
Dan, I'm fine with everything here. You didn't expect me to put frills on the curtains, did you? If I saw frills here, I definitely think that you were replaced. All in all, everything's fine, my shtifi. Dan. Sorry for interfering with your work, Major, sir. We'll try to keep quiet. When will you remember this address? Look over here. What damn colleagues, you didn't see their tender meeting yesterday. Colleagues, if you'll be meeting colleagues like that, you may have kids afterwards. L. Lieutenant, confirm it. What? Are you gossiping about Inga and Morgan? Yeah, they did meet like. Good friends. Good friends. You're a master of mild wording. Do you French kiss all your friends? There. I feel we'll have fun times in our unit soon. Hey, come on, Sergi. Cool down. Inga is not the one to wag her tail in front of everybody. If that Morgan is her boyfriend, she'll tell Major about that sincerely. Although, they look great together. Nothing to hide here. They are a beautiful couple. Why are you running like cockroaches? Well, if you finish discussing Miss Stefan's private life, I suggest we work for a bit. Senior Lieutenant, you need to store paperwork like that. Misha, go to the hospital. The sport club's guard is in there. Let him describe the subject and take the artist with you. Maybe he'll get something out of him. By the way, you didn't answer me whether Andy Klava's neighbors had seen anything. They saw a courier. He brought the chocolates. I checked. It's a dead end. The chocolates were brought to the delivery service by a boy that was around 16. He named Klava's address and paid with cash. They can't describe him. Of course. Okay, keep working. Yeah. Our major is definitely down. As if you wouldn't be down. The man was living the good life, and then there you go. A mix of James Bond and George Bush Jr. rolled into one. And you too. A beautiful couple. Yeah. Major, are on a walk somewhere. What do you mean on a walk? Nobody is picking up at your office. Maybe Inga went out too. Or maybe she's just busy. Svetlana, what do you want? Oleg, the general wants to talk to Special Agent Morgan. I get that he's in your office now. Tell him that he's expected. I got it, Svetlana. If Agent Morgan is still at my place, I'll tell him that. Perhaps he's not in your place, but at Inga's. But in your office. Fine, I'll tell him. No, a bit like that. Or like that. It's not bad either, but... My friends, I'm very sorry to disturb you. But Dan, the general is waiting for you. What do you mean, waiting? I warned you that I wanted to talk to your uncle. And you know that I always do what I promise. Dan, I beg you. Yeah. I'll walk you there. No, I will. I am going to Pavlik anyway. You're not against it. Not at all. Stay seated. Please. After you. No. Stop right there, you incredible. Why are you talking in rhymes? 
Did you take too many pills? Relax, genius, you're not my type. Have you seen that FBI agent? Well, well, come on, talk to me. Just don't tell me that you haven't checked him already. What should I tell you? Dan Morgan, 34, martial arts instructor at the FBI Academy. That track record, awards, merits. All in all, he is a cool dude. Very cool dude. What's between him and Inga? They were dating when she studied there. At that academy. Then, she moved here. That was it. Why are you looking at me like that? How do I know what's between them now? I sent all info on Morgan to Major as soon as Inga came to work here. Wait, wait, wait. Do you want to say that Major knew about that Morgan from the very beginning? This is what I'm talking about. Can you imagine, Cap? Morgan knows everything about my heroics. I mean as a hacker. He is an unbelievably cool guy. He's from the FBI but he respects Spider. The FBI. Just think about it. You need to carry me in your arms. Fine. Why use the silly pseudonym if you've decided to sign your name? Why not Damon, for example? Or what is your name now? Because for you, I am Yan. And you're an eye for me. Yin and Yang. As one, you remember. Yes, of course. One can't exist without the other. Not a very good concept in my opinion. But let's get down to business. Yes, you're right. Let's get to it. I want to ask for your advice. Wow. Are you asking for my advice? Why, all of a sudden, before, you used to make all decisions without me, and now, did you get interested in what I think about all of this? It's time to work on your knights, princess, because there are too many of them now. And they are starting to get in our way. Check the email. Did you have a look? Great. What about making Captain Spack the first to get out of the game? He is neither very valuable nor very pleasant. The Department of Internal Affairs will work on his case and will clean up your social circle a bit. You know, I'm not against it. You offered a decent option. No, I do feel sorry for Spack as a person. But on the other hand, he couldn't even protect me from Iliam. I had to sort everything out myself, and sit there with a gun aimed at me until the police arrived. Are you playing the reverse psychology? Not bad. You're allegedly not against it. And that's why I won't touch that lousy cop. But you forgot that I studied the same techniques, some of them at your lectures. Well, there are many options. Do you know that Captain Tarantiv's daughter doesn't study in city's best school? Petty dealers are constantly loitering there, and the girl could have gotten addicted after what she'd been through. Don't interfere. Do you hear me? This is our game. Got it? You involve them yourself, princess. The more you tell them, the more actively they participate. Well, I've heard your opinion. Wait, what are you going to do? You have a lot of interesting subjects around you. Real heroes. I even admire some of them. Partially, of course. I'll tell you about my choice, my target soon. Don't worry. Wait. Who is that target? Tell me. Please. Stiffy, incoming call, your ex. My present. Why did you come here at all? Isn't that obvious? A 
Oh, hair major, how convenient. Cool jacket. It's about Melishko's money. In a nutshell, the money was transferred to an offshore account, then invested into a hedge fund that went bankrupt soon after. That's it. Bankrupt. Money is gone. A dead end. Yeah. I don't think that it's that simple. It looks more like a long con than a dead end. But there is no time to explain now. The general is waiting, later. Yeah, Inga's got good taste. The FBI. This is such a high level. Unlike. Okay, fine. I'll go work on Grandma Clava's sweets. I have to do a lot of work. Go. General, sir, a special agent of the FBI Dan Morgan is here to see you. Invite him in, Svitlana. Come in, please. Very nice to meet you. Special Agent Morgan. I heard a lot of good things about you from your higher UPS. The director highly values the employees of the academy. He does the same with the graduates. Let's finish with niceties at this high point and get down to business. I agree, Major General, sir. This is how the situation looks right now from my point of view. Isn't Morgan with you? Morgan? With me? It's none of my business. He's at Strizix. Do you miss him already? No, everything's fine. I'm good. Did something happen? Everything's fine. Hi. Everything stays on the table. Who is it? Where is he? Got it. How was your talk, Special Agent Morgan? It was fine. Please tell Miss Stefan that I have to leave. I'll call her later. Stefan, Stefan. Am I her secretary now? City Clinic. Yes, Misha. Hello, Oleg. Well, I talked to that guard. And? A guy aged 30, 35. Tall and thin. Regular build, well-dressed. He noticed the watch when the guy hit him. Did you take the artist with you? I did. And? If we look for him using the portrait, then every second man of his age will be a suspect. Or every fourth one, if we exclude fatsos, short ones, and hobos. Well, I got it. Okay, later. Go back to the firm. Listen, Oleg. I'll come back a bit later. Marina called me. Lara has problems at school. I'm nearby. Can I go there? Lara? Okay, go. Great. Did something happen to Lara? Nothing, something at school. He doesn't know yet. Reception. Ask if Morgan's still there. Yes, Svetlina. Fine, on my way. Bye. I asked you to ask whether Morgan was still there or not. I didn't hear that. I have bad ears. Please find out. Yeah. 
I'm telling you, I'll call later. That's it. I wanted to discuss one topic with you. Agent Morgan came up with an interesting idea. I need to hear your opinion. Andre, Pasha found something about the sweets that were used to poison the neighbor. Go, go. It can wait. The topic is under investigation, so it's not very urgent. Great. Pasha, what do you want? I was at the General's. Oh, I've traced your chocolates. And, here, the sweets turned out to be not so simple. They are golden. Exclusive. How do you say that? Very expensive. It means they are sold only by five shops of our city. This particular batch got only to three of them. Anything about the buyer? Nothing much. In the first shop, the terminals stopped working at the time we're interested in. In the second one, those Luddites don't accept cards. Can you imagine? Such a fancy shop, but they only accept cash. In the third, I didn't find a single suspicious transaction. Give me the printouts of all transactions. That's all right, right? Thanks, Pasha. Anytime. Sure. Brass. Yes, I'm here. To the right from the entrance. Wait. You're spoiling me with your attention today, Damon. You're always the center of my attention, princess. But I called you now because I promised. You promise a lot. What now? You know what I mean. I promised to inform you about my decision. Well, I made my choice. The target is chosen. It's gonna be the one who irritates me the most. Don't get upset, princess. Listen, let's keep it between us. I won't tell them anything else. It's too late, princess. Maybe next time if you behave. Say hello to Special Agent Morgan. Did I say something wrong? Well, what's up? How's Lara? Did you go to her school? I did. She almost got into a fight with her friend, and they won't tell why. Stephanie, you're like a small child. Why may girls usually fight? They couldn't share a boy. Fine, I'll talk to her later. What is it? I'm interested. Did you see the general? Is Morgan still there? How do I know? I'm not his nanny. He may get offended if we babysit him too much. What's going on? Shtifi, incoming call. Uh, so. What just happened? What happened to Morgan? I am asking you, what happened? It's a good question. Let me go. 
When did that Morgan go outside? Morgan? Let's go. Do you know where? To the hotel at first. Driver of a motorcycle AK-3616, stopped by the side of the road. Driver of a motorcycle AK-3616, stop immediately. Step aside from the bike fast. Guys, what's wrong? Is it some kind of joke? I wasn't even speeding. Is the Major joking with me? Where is he? Hands. Major, it's just like in a movie. Cool. Well done. Cool actors. Very good. Hold hands so that I could see them. Everything is fine. My hands are here. Everything is alright. And now I have to show you my documents, right? Here are my doku. Hold the hands so that I could see them. I just wanted to show you my papers. Here they are. Oh, it hurts. What are you doing? Are you out of your mind? Guys, I'm one of you. Look at my papers. Look in my inside pocket. Be careful. Officer, look, I have the papers. I'm one of you. Dan. Is everything all right? What happened, Stiffy? I have a hundred missed calls from you. Are you okay? I was worried for you. Dan, why weren't you picking up? Are you a baby or something? I was at the meeting. I couldn't talk. Explain it to her now. And I didn't expect that from you at all. Inga, you could have explained it right away to at least one of us. Then, you wouldn't have to shiver over that phone. I wasn't shivering over my phone. Look, your boss is right. Well, you've hit it off, didn't you? You two are against me now, right? Where did this come from? Stiffy, looks like you're basically a consolidating factor for me and Major. Okay, that's it. Let's stop the debrief for today. It's clear that the bastard will try to kill us. Who is going to be the first? The most irritating thing is that it could be anyone from Inga's closest circle. Enough, I am here too. Don't talk about me in the third person, please. I'm not embarrassed. Are you? Come here. The tomatoes are. I am listening. Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? Who are you calling, mister? Don't hang up. He will confirm it. Herr Major, this is Spider. Tell them that it's you. Yes, this is me, Major Mischenko, head of the Grave Crimes Unit. Who am I talking to? Officer on duty of the Abdesnyansky District's Precinct. Lieutenant Kvilyuk, Major, sir, do you have a Pavel Yeramenko working for you? Yes, he works with us. What happened? He was arrested for hijacking a vehicle and inflicting bodily harm to its owner. There was an APB out. That's bullshit. It's impossible. I'm on my way. Later. Looks like we found out who is the most irritating. Let's go. And some red cayenne pepper. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for the interesting conversation, Klavdia. 
It was very interesting, and I received a lot of useful information. You gave a good day, honey, and be vigilant. Sure. Have a nice day. Inga! Inga! Don't lose him! He is such a great guy, and he loves you so much. You're very lucky. Am I? Yeah. Thanks for the advice. I'll keep that in mind. Your boss who brought you here yesterday, you don't need him. I lived for a long time. I saw a lot. So I am telling you like it is. Major is not the one for you. And Morgan is the one. You're an ideal couple. Great. Thank you. You didn't have to be so charming with Antiklava. What will I do with it? When you leave, she will torture me with her questions. You have a great way out. We leave together and everybody will be happy, including Antiklava. Don't talk nonsense. What nonsense? Marry me, Inga. Dan, this is just... It's just not the right time. Let's go. Please take my laptop, will you? Sure. Did the Major come in? He went to get Spider out of the slammer. Spider was arrested in his neighborhood for stealing a bike and beating the owner up. And that idiot doesn't carry a passport or a driver's license or any other papers with him, except our ID. The local police decided that he counterfeited that ID. Major was told only in the morning. They'll be back soon. Yeah, thanks, I got it. Well, officers, I believe something is being kept secret from us. We'll ask for explanations when Major comes. I don't want to poke my nose into other people's affairs, Major, but still. Judging from the trick with a false APB, your unit is under fire from someone very serious. Do you know who he is? I do. We're working on it. Good luck, Major. My gut tells me that you'll need it in the nearest future. Oh, it's like that, Herr Major. For all my merits, you left me chilling in the slammer for the entire night. Great. Pasha, why are you so nervous? You know well what are cool. How do you call each other? It guys. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. You're in a serious game, Major. I wouldn't want to be in your shoes. Episode 16 They say that your entire life flashes before your eyes when you're dying. I'm 36. Maybe I'm too young. Maybe everything would turn out different if I didn't meet her. But I have no regrets. It was my choice. I understand that now we're all playing a survival game. 24 hours earlier. Pasha was a test case. He got off relatively easy. Yeah, sure. Spend a night in a cell first. I'll listen to you then, okay? Quiet, kid. Major's right. A night in the cell is child's play. The question is, what does Yan consider to be serious? That's it. Nobody will get hurt anymore. I shouldn't have involved you in all this from the very beginning. It's my problem and I should have solved it myself. And that's it. When Yen calls, I'll tell him that I'm going back to the States. I'll go back, and you'll be safe. We need to talk. You are going to finish it all here. I did. 
but Yan started a survival game, so I can't bear for any of you to suffer. You're right. All of it has to end here. I even know how to speed up the process. Have you gone crazy? Well, that bastard told you to behave. It means that you have to break bad. So today we're definitely leaving work together. And you're definitely spending the night at my place. Something else, sudden boyfriend, sir? Nothing. We need to inform Strizik and Morgan about our plan. About your plan? It's an idiotic plan. I don't think this will work. We don't need to provoke that psycho. He will do everything himself. Andre, he keeps imposing his rules on us. This way, he'll play according to ours. It's very dangerous. First of all, dangerous for her. Plus, it's unknown how long will we wait for his reaction. The reaction will come very fast, because we're dealing with a person with a god complex. He sees himself as a master of fates, and he sees me as his creation. He wasted too much time to infiltrate my life. Now he wants to establish himself in it. He wants to dominate and to control me. His imagination is running so wild that he simply won't be able to calm down now. Disobedience coupled with unfaithfulness can enrage Yan, and then he'll lose his usual cool and common sense. The plan is shitty, of course, but I will approve it because we don't have another one. Consult the team, and you can prepare a draft for me, what to tell your parents in your and if something happens, God forbid. Uncle, I think we'll pull it off. We have to. We have to. Yesterday, I proposed to Inga. Oh. And what did she say? Nothing for now. But you understand that nothing means the proposal is being considered. I told you just to be clear. We're clear. Thanks. It's a gloomy story. I warned you that you won't have a nice conversation with me. Wrong anamnesis. I'm interested to know not only your fun stories, but the sad ones too. I want to know everything about you. If you haven't understood it yet, I think now is not the best time to talk about it. Now is exactly the best time for this. At least now I'm sure that you won't be able to run away from me. That's true. I definitely won't run away. Shall we go to sleep? May I ask you one question? Sure. What will you tell Morgan? I'll tell him I'm in trouble. Big trouble.
Sparks book. I remembered the girl in the capital. Funny sparks in her eyes. I fell in love due to spring and April. With her, for the second time, we drove around the house. Everything's calm, nothing and nobody suspicious. Copy that, continue the surveillance. Don't forget to go around the block. Copy that. Yeah, Major got lucky. To play love with a beautiful woman. Are you an idiot, Captain? He's not playing. It's bad to be alone in the winter cold. It's disgustingly boring in the melting heat. But it turned out that it's much worse. To be alone in the spring. It's Spalakov. Okay, good night. Why are you so sleepy? Have you been talking until the morning? Or did you both have insomnia? Well? What? Well, how did it go? What do you mean? Come on, Cap, stop playing dumb. You were on duty all night by Major's house. Well, how did it go with Inga? Did they have a good sleep? I don't know. I wasn't holding the candle. Go and ask Major yourself if you're interested. But I don't think Morgan was so happy to spend the whole night under their windows. You're right, Captain. It wasn't the best night of my life. But that's okay, I'll have others. It's good that you're here. About the money from the accounts of Maleshko Sr. Can I come in? So he didn't call. It means he's still our subject. I think he's getting ready for something. Tell me, Major, what is your interest in this case? I love Inga. And I want to get her rid of the creep that's interfering with her life. Did you talk to her about this? She knows about my feelings. But she asked to postpone this conversation until the case is solved. Clever girl. Well, Major, go and solve this case. Yes, sir. Maybe there will be nothing to talk about after. De jure, the money went bust with the bankrupt hedge fund. But de facto, Maleshko Jr., our subject, simply withdrew everything in cash using private agreements. Yeah, cool scheme. Yup. And it is next to impossible to trace the cash, right? And that means that this thread won't lead us to Yan's new identity. This provocation is our only hope, then. I'm sorry.
Looks like Morgan is very good. Yeah, Major got unlucky with the competitor. Solid guy, no doubt about it. I wonder what Inga thinks of it. She thinks about polygamy. <laughs> Listen, let's make a bet. Why not? Just between us, to relieve some stress. Why did you go quiet? Don't be shy, gentlemen. Make a bet. And think where you work while you're at it. Why did he come here? Stop it, Sergi. Everybody forgets why they're going somewhere when you run your mouth. Over a day has passed. Maybe we read his reaction in a wrong way. Are you tired of playing my girlfriend? Don't talk nonsense. You won't get rid of me. It's gonna be fine. He'll turn up soon, in the nearest future. I'll go home then. I need to get my stuff. I'll go with you. No, let's do it like this. I'll drive my car, and the guys will follow me. I'll pack fast and come to your place after. You mean, move? Yeah. Right? Fine. Hello? I'm extremely disappointed. But this time... This time you'll learn your lesson. You're a spoiled girl, and I... You jumped into Morgan's bed at Quantico, and then found that cop here. Did you completely forget your poor fiancé? Jerry, of course, was a loser. But still, he loved you. And I... He put his life on the line for you. Do you want to know how much he loved you? I'll tell you. Were you surprised when you found out that Jerry had insured his life in your favor? Of course. A typical American pragmatic guy and suddenly such a soap opera. Well, it was my idea. You're lying. You're a good manipulator but Jerry was too smart to fall for your tricks. Got it? You're underestimating me, princess. And the abilities of social networks too. We became good friends with Jerry before your trip. And he couldn't come up with an idea of how to impress her. Straight to the heart. You know. So I pitched an idea to him. You're right. He said. Such a melodramatic gesture. She'll get mad. You got mad, right, princess? Tell me, did you get mad? And now, let's get down to business. Do you still want to know how Jerry died? You do? You have a last present from Jerry. Look at it closely. I'll call you back in 30 minutes. If you don't call your cavalry like you did last time. The last present from Jerry. They found it in the catacombs. This is... Jerry's. American writer died in the catacombs. He showed it to us. He said that he had bought it for you before the trip. But didn't have the time to give it to you.
arrived May 14th. It's a week after Jerry gone missing. Don't be so upset, Jerry. Don't look at me like this. God forbid if the princess thinks that you came to hate her in the end. Or maybe you do hate her. You wouldn't be here if not for her. Jerry, tell her. Tell her that you're dying here because of her. Besides, it's true. Go to hell, psycho. It's time to bid farewell. We spent seven eventful days here. Your last words, Jerry. Keep on living, Inga. You're strong. You can do it. Jerry. So, this was my school. Uh -huh. I studied here, and the theater club was there. I was going there too. In spring, we had PE lessons here. And in that building, there is a pool where I was swimming. Nothing changed at all. So your friend, drowned there? Your classmate? Yes. I decided to go into psychology because of it. I was a wild child until high school. My parents wanted me to go into medicine, but I didn't care. I was only interested in theater and swimming. Igor had it all figured out. He knew what he wanted and a promising swimmer. I don't get it. A swimmer drowned. Yeah, everybody was thinking how it could have happened. He was healthy and talented. But in the end, they said that it was an accident. He was training at night, overdid it, had cramps. Then, they proposed a version about possible suicide. A suicide. It's weird. From what I heard, he was a successful and healthy guy. Yes. Then they had a version that I drove him to it. Unhappy love. It wasn't true. What happened next? Then, my parents started to hear rumors. They were worried for me, so they sent me to our relatives in another city for the summer. I thought about it a lot over there, of course. Even if, even if it wasn't because of me. If this is a suicide, then why did he do it? Why didn't I notice anything? Why didn't I stop him? So, I was blaming myself for that. At some point I decided that it wouldn't happen in my life again, and I went into psychology. To help people but don't let anybody close not to get hurt yeah i graduated from school and i secretly chose a university abroad before that and i left you can say that i fled from my relatives you're very strong inga but you won't be alone anymore you have me now jerry your parents are with you too It's all you. You made me return to my family. You made me see this situation from a different angle. I'm very grateful to you. <laughs> I'll kill you. Do you hear me? There. At last. My dark any. Do you want to kill me? I'll give you the opportunity. But maybe you want to know where his body is first. Do you remember? As soon as the body is found, you'll become a rich woman. Jerry and I took care of that. If no, you at least know where to bring flowers. Where? I'll show you. But now, listen to me very carefully. 
Inga's late. She said she would be back in 30 minutes max, and it has over an hour. She's a woman. She lost something and can't find it. She needs to change. Or maybe her girlfriend or mother called. There's your 30 minutes. There. Took her long enough. Inga is in a hurry to get to Major. She didn't even buckle up, and that's her thing. She's getting used to our reality. Yes, Sergi. Reporting in, Major, sir. The object left her place of residence, and she's going to your place right now. Okay. Call me as soon as you find something out. Later. Mom, I don't get why you like them. She's not in a hurry. Slow down even. She must be having girlish doubts. Shall she let him do it or not? And if yes, then what to do next? Is she always such an exemplary driver? Are you joking? She was really punching it when we were going to Chernobyl. I thought we won't get there in one piece. And now she's collecting all the traffic lights. Listen, Palak, let's stop her now. On it. Police, show us your papers, please. What happened? I just did a favor to a person. Where is the car's owner? I have no idea. I guess she's at her lover's. Just as planned. Stephanie, call the Major fast. Tell him to go to Inga's home. You talk to me. Yeah? Be careful, princess, don't go so fast. I won't disappear. I just can't wait. Slow down and buckle up, or I reschedule the meeting. Wait. I've buckled up. At a girl. See you. See you.
The girl received $300 for taking Inga's car and driving it to confuse a detective whom her jealous husband had allegedly hired to tail her. Did she see Inga? Inga opened the door for her, gave her the car keys, a trench, and her bag. She showed her our car from the window. I don't understand why Shtifi escaped. Sasha, how did he get her? And here's the answer to our question. Keep on living, Inga. You're strong. You can do it. Talk. I found her. She is going over 100 towards the water reservoir. Lead me. I am doing it already. Both you and the guys. Her major looks like she stopped. How long? Seven minutes. She is moving now. Where? To the far mooring. You can't drive there. You need to walk through the forest. Where did you bury Jerry? Hello. I'm glad that we could finally meet properly. Show me your face. Fine. No more masks. Lyosha. I knew that you'd appreciate the idea, princess. Lyosha, the guard from your favorite pool. Not an exciting role, very primitive. But you and him even became friends. You're just a psycho, and all your ideas are complete shit, but I don't care about all that. Where did you bury Jerry? Somewhere here. You will have to forget about Jerry, princess. The same goes for the insurance. Unfortunately, I really didn't have the time to bury that loser. Where's his body? I have no idea. Maybe it rotted somewhere if the rats didn't devour it.
They say that your entire life flashes before your eyes when you're dying. I'm 36. Maybe I'm too young. Oleg, maybe everything would turn out different if I didn't meet her. But I have no regrets. It was my choice. We stopped the search. We were poking there for five days. The divers stopped working today. They checked two kilometers downriver. The waves were so high that the body could have been carried away further. You understand it yourself, General, sir. Captain, you understand that the body could have been carried away. And at the same time, the bastard could have climbed out on the bank. He's good at that. Taryn and Morgan are sure that the Major wounded him. The blood splattered from under his left collarbone, and they rushed to Mischenko's rescue first. Thank God that they found him fast. He lost half the bucket of blood. How is Mischenko doing? No changes. The doctor said that the surgery went well, but he is still unconscious. General, sir. What do we tell him? About Inga when the Major comes too? Tell him that she is fine too. Inga's fine. She's coming back to her senses too. We'll share the rest later. Yes, sir. Can I go? Hello. Hello, hello? We were passing by and decided to come in and see how you're doing. No need to justify yourselves, Sergi. You and your guys pass by us every day. It's all like always. Lyudmila? Yeah? When your son comes to his senses, please tell him that we won't wait for him for long. We'll find a new boss. Really? Really. We won't even look for one. I'll make a great boss. Plus, the Apollots. You're too young to wear Major's Apollots, Sergei. It's too early. Well, how did it all go? Did you screw up? Just a little bit, Major. Inga. It's fine too. Everything's fine. Honestly, not a scratch. She's resting too now. I mean, emotionally. Get out, immediately. You're not letting him breathe. Sorry, sorry. Everybody, get out of here. Thanks for coming. Did you come back to your senses? Great. The main task is to stand up, but you need to sleep for now. Everything is fine, don't worry. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Please. What? Do I have to sleep again? Yes. You have to sleep. It's an order. Did Inga come? I don't know. Maybe she did. Okay. Mom, I'm hungry. Great. Sleep. And I'll bring you something. Do you see what I have? That's it. Please. Hello. Hello. I won't ask about your health. 
Good. I'm fine. Kawazinga. She's going to the States with me. For her own safety. Because Yan's body wasn't found in the end. It means she. Fine, I see. No, we simply hit her while we were looking for his body. She's refusing to leave. Because of you. I came to beg you to talk her into changing her mind. Why should I talk her into changing her mind? Do you love her? I do. I love her too. But her life is the most important thing. Listen. If Inga's choice depended on me, I'd do anything for her safety. Fine. You're right. Her life and safety are the most important. Get well, Major. I am sorry, I really am. Despite the circumstances, I'm... I'm glad we met. You're a great cop. Likewise, Come here. Modia, Matilda, come to me, quick. Come on. What's up, Stephanie? Are you waiting for the Major? No, I'm waiting for Darina. She promised to bake a cake by Major's return. While you were being silly, I arranged it all. The sergeant will warn us as soon as Major will be at the door. Guys, he's coming already. He's looking for Inga's car. Looks like Inga kept her promise. I think she did the right thing. Major and the general understood it the right way, like they had a choice. Time will tell whether it was right or not. You. I am on time. Herr Major, I was looking forward to seeing you. Without you, the unit may die of boredom. This is for you. Look at him. We've been here for an hour, and that punk jumped him as soon as he came. Major, sir. Maybe you'll arrange a party with me and officers outside too. Hello, everybody. Major, sir, I even baked a cake for you. I called your mom to consult with her, just the way you like it. We'll go and cut the cake in the meanwhile. Have some coffee in the fresh air. Kid, come here. Come on, I'll show you boredom. Come here. Hello? Hello. How do you like the firm after your long absence? 
By the way, the coffee shop was renovated. I can show it to you. I'm happy that everything is fine. And everybody is at their places. You could warn me that you will come here earlier. Did you see how happy everybody was? By the way, I still didn't forgive you, Major, sir, for your solo performance at the hospital. You should have gotten into acting. I did. Yeah? Yeah. I'm serious. Your monologue, Madame, you only cause problems. Go back to your states. Was disgustingly convincing. I almost believed you, by the way. But you didn't believe me. You forgot that I'm a great psychologist. Besides, your eyes betrayed you. What's wrong with my eyes? Your look didn't match your words. But I talked you into staying. Nobody talked me into it. It was my decision. I wanted you to stay. And if Yan shows up again, I... I'll be able to protect you. I know it too. By the way, I love you. I love you too. I think. You think? Something like that. I'll take my words back now. Let's go. Before Pavlik eats the whole cake. Are you in a hurry?